I ain't your little monster. See you later. You'll be a good girl for you, ma'am. Are you yeah? going already? Already? Should have been there ten minutes ago. Well, Joe will be here in a minute with Jonathan. So? So, don't you want to have a word with him? A word? Yeah, you know, to say thank you. Well, I did that last night, didn't I? Well, yeah, but... Uh, There's more than can be said for you. I'll see you later. Oh, hang on. What? Bread. I knew there was something. Bread? We're right out of it. I won't be a couple of minutes. Well, can't you get it when I've gone? I'll be right back. Sally! Two minutes! Here we go. Aye, it makes a change to see a smile round here this morning. What with funeral and that. What time is it? Funeral? Uh, about 12 o'clock, I think. I was surprised to see the shop open today. Yeah, so was I. But it seems Mrs Scott reckons that a couple of hours would be enough for people to pay their respects. And I suppose it's what Brendan would have wanted. I mean, he'd have hated the idea of losing a whole day's profit. Mm. Oh, it's Deirdre I feel sorry for now. Deirdre? Mm. I mean, she doesn't know where the heck she stands, you know, how quick it's going to be to sell the shop, whether the new owners will want to keep her on. Yeah, I suppose. Still, it's not worth worrying about, is it? Not that she has to. And anyway, if the worst does come to the worst, there's a big wide world out there. No, oh, doubt if Deirdre will see it that way. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So you're not working today then? Well, we'll be soon as Sally gets back. Come on in. She's out then. Uh, she's nipped to the shop. There you go. Back to the grind, eh? Uh, with a vengeance. I tell you, last few weeks have seemed another age. Thanks again for sorting that out for us. Oh, my pleasure. So, how's things? Eh? The court case. Oh. You told Sally? Yeah, I've told her. And what an idiot it was, eh? All that grief I put myself through at the cottage. <laughs> if only I told her what was bothering me from the start. You know, I don't know what I've done to deserve her, you know. Sometimes wonder. You're a very lucky man, Kevin. Yeah, I am. Right, well, I best be going. I'll uh, see you later. I'll pick him up at the usual time. Yeah, see you now. Beck got off all right to take it. What do you think he'd be sat there if she hadn't? Uh, We're entitled to a tea break, aren't you? You've not been in the place five minutes. So, uh, what time's she getting back? I don't know, she just said tonight. Well, she had to go traipsing all the way down to London. I'll never know. <laughs> what to meet Vicky? If Vicky can find her way back from Hong Kong, she can find her way back here. Ah, but then Bet wouldn't have an excuse for a day out in London, then, would she? That is very true. London? What's the flame is special about London? Well, it's the capital, isn't it? Where it all happens, down south like. London. Croydon. Croydon? Well, it's not far from London, is it? Well, you can keep it all for me. What have they got in London that we haven't got up here? I've just told you it's the capital. It's got style. Fashion houses. Fashion houses, eh? <laughs> I think you're wasting your breath, love. Now, if it was public houses... You can keep them and all better. Do you know, sometimes I think he were born on a different planet. I'll tell you what they've got in London. Six teams in the Premier League and still can't win the title. <laughs> Are you going to be all day with that tea cake? Oh, just sweat it. It's on its way. <laughs> I don't want you swimming in butter, neither. You'll be swimming in butter in a minute. Oh, Philly! It's enough to drive a saint to drink. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have to come in here more often. Didn't realise you'd be cabaret as well. <laughs> don't encourage him. Drive me up the wall sometimes. <laughs> uh, right, two meat and potatoes, that it? Yeah, great, thanks. Thank you. So, uh, Jonathan's back. Hey? With Sally? Oh, yeah, yeah. So, it's business as usual. Uh, back to the treadmill. Already seems just a distant memory now, still. Nice while it lasted. See you now. See you, Kev. Now then. About time and all. Here, have you had your thumb in that? Of course I have. It's good for me arthritis. <laughs> cheap these days, is it? No matter how you go. What isn't? Well, burials and cremations and that. Brenda didn't know now how much this little lot were going to cost before he went. He'd never have gone. He could have been a lot happier if they'd have brought him on his delivery bike. <laughs> Reg, please. Hmm? Try and show a bit of respect, shall we? Oh, I'm only saying that. I'm sure it's right as that. Oh. Hey, I didn't know he had a daughter. Daughter? There, look, getting out of the car. That's not his daughter. That's his wife. His widow. What? 
That is. Mm, a delectable Debbie, that. Miss Betty by 1977. So, um, Brendan and her were, um... Mm, the, the first uh, year he was on the judgment panel. I don't have to elaborate, do I? Well versed with uh, Brendan's modus operandi, aren't you? Mm. <laughs> the randy old devil. Mr <laughs> Watts, please. A little respect, if you don't mind. <clears throat> Hey, what's it all about, Donny? Now, what are you on about? Well, you get up, you go to work, you go home, you go to bed. Is that it? Live for promised land. Yeah, listen, mate. When you've come as near as I have to cashing in your chips, you're grateful to be still breathing. Yeah, but where did we go wrong? I mean, look at Baldwin, swans about here, there and everywhere. Flash car, flash flaming holidays. Yeah, well, at least I've got a clear conscience sleep nights. Any room? Who's brought all this on? Fair to stop your comics again? No, no, I was just saying. Yeah, well, uh... don't bother. By heck, Jack, you certainly know how to cheer a fella up. I come in here for a quiet drink, pleasant chat. It's like having a ringside seat at an execution. Look, there. Take for yourself. You see? Life's not all bad. You could be right. Not very much. There we are, love. One hot pot. Oh, cheers, Betsy. OK, Doc. Thank you. <laughs> Oi. You are still working here, I take it. Hey. Customer waiting. It's all right, I'll get that. You're all right? Oh, now, would you know? You've both been shooting the mouth off us. Don't flatter yourself. She'd have you for breakfast. No, Chen, she's not my turn. Oh, well, what is your type? 50 pence, please. Go on, you've twisted me arm. I can be very persuasive. So, when should you back? Who? Girlfriend. Well, if you mean Vicky tonight. Oh. Where is it she's been? Uh, Hong Kong, no, um, let's just forget about it. Mm, gets around a bit, doesn't she? Look, I uh, didn't come in here to talk about Vicky, all right? No, of course you didn't. I know what you came here for. Is that right? Mm. And it's getting cold. Brief but touching. Hey. The service. All oh, right, right, right. You felt like that minister really knew Brendan. Knew him. I doubt whether Brendan ever went near a church in his life, unless it were to try and get the bread and wine order. I still can't believe that, you know. Mm. I mean, Brendan. I know. Oh, the sly old fox. Mm. Well, it wasn't all one-sided, Norman, I can assure you. She knew exactly what she was getting out of it. Meal ticket for life. A lifestyle she could have only dreamed about if she hadn't been blessed with her. <laughs> well, I don't have to spell it out to you, do I? <laughs> Oh, just hang about, Norman. I'll be back in a minute. Hey, hang on, hang on. Debbie, Mrs Scott, have you a minute? Um, I can't let you go without saying, well, expressing my deep personal loss at the passing of Brendan, because it, it was an inspiration to all of us who were fortunate enough to have crossed his path, you know. Mr... Oh, sorry, Holsworth. Uh, Reggie Holsworth, Better Buys Regional Management Team, oh, you remember? I'm sorry. Uh, I've got a memory like a sieve when it comes to names. Oh, have you? Well, I just wanted to assure you that if there's anything I can do, and I really do mean anything. Thank you. All right. Oh, for example, I, uh, I believe you're thinking of selling the business, I heard. <laughs> Not thinking. I am. All right, right. Well, it's a very tricky market at the moment, and uh, who better to advise you than yours truly, who knows the market inside out, and who would like nothing better than a chance to repay your uh, dear late husband in some small way, for everything he's done for me over the past few years, you know. That's very kind of you. Well, it's the least I can do for a very dear and, uh, well, a very dear friend, really. <laughs> Sorry. I'll remember that. Now, uh, um, if you'll excuse me. All right, of course, yeah. Bye. Uh, uh Reggie. Reggie. Bye, Debbie. Uh. What was all that about? The word Norman is diplomacy, huh? The word Reginald is hypocrisy. Freeman, I suppose you must find it a very big temptation. Must I? Living above this place, it's so easy for you to pop in whenever the mood takes you. One of the perks of being your own boss. Oh, well, it's nice work if you can get it. Hmm? 
When I was your age, anybody that did less than 12 hours in a day, they were part-timers. When he was your age, it took best part of two days to get to London, and they had to change the horses at Northampton. <laughs> I'm being serious. They don't know the meaning of the word work today, half these youngsters. They get grants for this, grants for that. They've been halfway around the world by the time they're in their twenties. I mean, how can they appreciate that if they've never worked for it? Quite right, Mr Sugden. These people who just pack it all in and take off to the other side of the world, don't know what they're thinking of. Well, it's nice to know at least one of you still has a sense of responsibility. Right, I'm off. Eh? I'm finishing there, so I'm off home. Right. Hey, cheer up, it doesn't suit you. What don't? Having a face on you like the back of a 49 bus. Now, on our here, it would be an improvement. Or on you. Ta da. Look, what's the matter with you? Well, it's not your problem. Oh, yes, it is, lady. Working with you behind that bar today, it's been about as much fun as toothache. Come on, let's be having it. Well, look at me. Who am I? I mean, what am I doing with my life? A big fat nothing. I'm just drifting along from one day to the next, going nowhere. I mean, where have I got going from there? Oh, love, you've got a lot more than most, I can tell you. I mean, you've got your home, you've got a roof over your head, you've got a job. I mean, in my book, that's not bad for starters. So, come on, get that down, you, and stop making your life a misery. Man and all. So, everything went all right, did it? Oh, as well as a funeral can go, I suppose. The minister said some nice things about it. Ah, oh, well, it wasn't all bad, I suppose. At least, he looked after us pensioners. I don't think Alf would be too pleased to hear that. <laughs> I don't think he would. Um, has he mentioned anything to you about this do next week? Next week? Mm, he mentioned it to Martin. His mates on the council are giving him a bit of a send-off. It's the Queen's Wednesday night. Mm. It's news to me. Mm, wish Martin had found out a bit more about it. I mean, do I go as I am and get my hair done or... Put me lap rags on. Can't see the problem. You've only got to ask Alf. <laughs> yes, I did. He gave me an ear bashing on how two faced a folk can be. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, I can't help you. Alf said nothing to me. And if it's going to turn out as bad as he expects, perhaps you'd be as well stopping at home anyway. Well, I miss those speeches. No. Crawl over hot coals to get there. <laughs> Present. Present? A few tapes, CDs. For me? By way of a thank you for opening my eyes. Oh, now, come on. All I did was talk to an old mate. Well, listen, more like. Suit yourself. But if you don't have them, they'll just end up in the bin. Cos I'll not be wanting them. Not where I'm going. Going? Mexico, here I come. You're serious? Never more serious in my life. By heck. You don't do things by half measures, girl, do you? It's a flaming long way, you know. I know. But why Mexico? Because it excites me, Des. The whole concept of Aztec civilization excites me. It's got me fired up like nothing's got me fired up before. Yeah, whatever turns you on, I suppose. The Aztecs created a culture whose influence is still around today. And to get into all that, to relate it to modern design, it's inspirational. It's really got to you, this, hasn't it? Yeah, it has. And it's all down to a letter from a mate on the other side of the world. Well, if that's what you want. It is. So I'm off. This time Monday. Monday? Well, that's when my flight is. I'll leave here tomorrow. Don't hang around, do you? Not much point, is there? I've made my mind up. I just want to get on with the rest of my life. Now, are you going to make me a coffee, or do I have to make me own? No, I'll... Hi, love. <laughs> that was Bet. Eh? On the phone from London. She's still there? Yeah, stop in there. They've had a great day. They're booked into a hotel for the night cos they're going to a show later on. She'll be back here by dinner time tomorrow. It's all right for some, isn't it? 
You have no idea how expensive it is. What? To kit him out for school. Well, why didn't you say that's where you were going? I could have had my half day as well, couldn't I? You're trekking around all them shops. Oh, we'd have had a laugh, thank you. And it'd have been a lot better than stacking shelves. So, is he still going on about the safari park then, or what? Oh, he hasn't stopped. Yeah. I think he's told everyone he's seen today. <laughs> From the time he got on the bus, he thought the driver was going to take us round again. Oh. <laughs> it was a lovely surprise, Andy. For both of us. Yeah. I enjoyed myself, too. So, where are we off tonight, then? Don't mind. You choose. Hmm. Monte Carlo, night at the casino. Or maybe you prefer something a little bit quieter. Candlelit dinner for two. Paris or Rome. Video and takeaway pizza at our place. Mum's out for the night. Done. That's a good boy. So, you decided to have him after all? Sorry? Johnson? Oh, yes. Yeah, I did. I was very grateful to you for listening to me the other day. I had to talk to someone. It didn't make a scrap of difference. Well, it's not been easy. In fact, I don't reckon I had very much choice. I'm not with you. Well, not without taking it out on Jonathan. When he first came to me, he was a little terror. I could have throttled him. But he settled down. And he's a smashing little lad. And he looks forward to coming round here. I mean, what would it do to him if I suddenly turf him out? There are other childminders. Oh, I know there are, Gail, but it'd take him a heck of a while to adjust if he ever did. <clears throat> I've worked hard to get him to settle down. I don't want to throw it all away. I mean, it wouldn't be fair on him, would it? Well, there's nothing more to be said, then, is there? Come on, you. Let's go and find your sister. Bring it with you. Come on, time to go home. Look, I know you think I'm a fool, but I can handle it, Gail. I know I can. I know exactly what I'm getting myself into. You do. Maybe. What about Joe? Come on. Go. You can't just go without a word to anyone. I've told you. I know, but... Well, people want to say goodbye properly, want to give you a bit of a send-off. Well, they're going to be disappointed, aren't they? And if you say a word... That's what you want. It is. Free as a bird, right? Go where the spirit takes me. And as far as I know, birds do not go around throwing farewell parties. So, this time tomorrow? Be on my way. Well, near enough, anyway. London overnight, then on to Canterbury. Give my folks the pleasure of my company before I take off into the wild blue yonder. Then it's goodbye, real world. Are you getting to London? Coach. Oh, I'll take you to the station. I get a taxi. I'd like to. Want to make sure I don't change my mind at the last minute, right? Yeah, dead right. If you think I'm out of my mind, you can say, you know. Won't make a scrap of difference. No, I don't. I'll be back in six months, wishing you'd never heard of Mexico. Might change your life, who knows? If you don't do it now, you never will. Spend the rest of your life wondering what might have been. Now, good luck to you, I say. We missed round here, though, I can tell you that. But it's your life. Thanks, Des. For everything. And I'll see you tomorrow night, about 7.30. I'll be there. Bye. Bye. Sally. Right, come on, Jonathan. It's time to go home. Put your coat on. Is everything all right? Yeah. He's been fine. I'm sorry that I missed you this morning. Oh, nothing Kevin couldn't handle, I'm sure. He didn't stop talking about you all the way here. Oh, we're going to have to watch it then, aren't we? Kevin. Watch it. Yeah, what we say? In front of the little one here. <laughs> Otherwise, we're never going to have any secrets, are we, eh? If he's going blabbing to his dad every time your back's turned. Right, come on then, Jonathan. Well, I don't know where we'd be without you. Not now. Either of us. Well, let's just hope it doesn't come to that, shall we? Hello? Oh, hang on. Raquel? What? It's for you. What is? The phone. Who is it? 
I don't know, do I? And I've got enough on my plate without acting as your social secretary at all. I couldn't believe it. I was only away for a couple of hours. They managed to get a lorry jammed in the loading bay. A freezer went down in pies and puddings, and a fridge packed up in cooked meats. Not one of your better days. Mm. You ever ask yourself why? Why? Yeah, why we, we come to be doing what we're doing, eh? What power decreed that one day I'll become the manager of Better Buys and you will become a designer? Oh, come on, Curly. Well, it just makes me wonder. What was it you told me about settling for what I'd got or doing something about it? Doesn't just apply to me, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know. It's just that I wanted to talk to someone. Someone who'd understand. You know how I felt. And we've always understood one another, haven't we, me and you? Not always, Curly. Yeah, but nearly always. And we're still old pals, aren't we? Yeah, of course, we're still old pals. <laughs> and we can still have a drink together. Looks like it. Mm. <clears throat> this, um, this friendship of ours, it doesn't uh, stretch to weddings by any chance, does it? Weddings? Well, you know I'm going to be Reggie's best man. So? Well, I said I'd do it. I had no choice, really. So where do I come in? Well, it's just that I'd be more bearable if I didn't have to go on my own. Ah. Um, well, that might be a bit difficult. Difficult? I'm not sure where I'll be, what I'll be doing. But if you can make it... Yeah, if I can, I'll be there. Mm. Look, I really have to go. I'll see you, Curly. Yeah, yeah, I'll see you, all right. Oh, yeah, whatever it is, it's done you a power of good luck. Back with the Mayfair Academy. Mayfair oh. Academy? What's the Mayfair Academy? Oh, it's just one I wrote off to for a course. You know the one I told you about? Well, guess what? It's out Monday. Monday? Yeah, that's right. They were that impressed with my application form that they managed to squeeze me in. Otherwise, I might have had to wait a couple of months or more. Hang on. If you expect us to sort our days off round your course, Tommy. Well, you won't have to, will you? Because I won't be here. I'll be in Croydon. You're starting a modelling course in Croydon on Monday. That's right. And it's exciting. Yeah, it will be. Especially when Bet finds out. <laughs> It'll be news to her, I'll take it. Mm. Well, morning, Sally. I'm sorry we're a bit late. Oh, Angie! Hi. Have you, um... Got a minute? Uh, well, no, actually, I'm on the way. Um, well, what is it? Just talk to me. What? About anything. Um, oh, don't forget that it was us that inspired you. I mean, if it wasn't for us, you wouldn't have done your designs, would you? I mean, you'd be making a fortune now. Wouldn't you, Rosie? And that's our help, isn't it? <coughs> talk to me. Um, oh, um, well, he huffed and he puffed mm -hmm. and um, the bungalow completely collapsed. <gasps> and then on Thursday, he came round with his mother oh. and, um... Hello, Joe. Um, so, is it uh, still the same for you? Almost. Uh, just leave him, Joe. He'll be fine. I wanted a quick word, actually. He uh, seemed to be snuffling a bit this morning. Oh, right. Well, I'll keep an eye on him and um, I'll give you a ring if there's a problem. Go on, Angie. Uh, where was I? Um, oh, hi, Gail. Hi. Well, maybe if I call back at lunchtime just to see how he is. No, um, I've got to go. Um, I'll see you soon. Oh, I'll um, it. well, it was, it was really nice talking to yeah, you, Angie. Bye. Yeah, bye. Look, Sally, there's nothing sinister about this. Yeah, well, let's just keep it that way, shall we? If there's a problem, I'll give you a ring, all right? Oh, look, it's the Phantom of the Opera. Oh, <laughs> Martin made a couple last night. Think he's eaten it. Well, I better get going. I'll leave him with you. I'll see you later, Jonathan. Bye. 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 Getting a bit heavy, was he? Didn't give him a chance to. Angie must have thought I'd gone mad. Did knock you up, did I? You did, actually, yeah. Don't tell me you've slept on the idea and changed your mind. No chance. Where's Colin? He's still in Kip. Oh. So Mexico's still on, then, is it? Yeah. Only I need a tourist card before they let me in. So I thought you could drop me off on your way to work. Oh, drop you off where? The consulate! And where's that, Mexico? Manchester. I know it's a bit out of your way, but I thought we could make a detour after we drop the sewing machine off. I'll make my own way back. Oh, God, I'm 
talking like Sally Webster, aren't I? You wouldn't believe the conversation I've just had. Look, um, why don't I go get dressed and then we can start again, yeah? No. Close your dressing gown. I can't concentrate. I take my passport to the consulate and I fill in a form and if it's all OK, then they'll let me have a tourist card there and then. I thought you were going to go and see your folks in Canterbury. Yeah, this weekend, but Monday I could be in Acapulco. Well, Mexico City first. Still haven't told anyone, have you? I couldn't take the hassle, Des. They try and talk me out of it, wouldn't they? Couldn't take much. No, if I don't do it now, I never will. What was all that about the sewing machine? Flogging it to Kim Stearsby. Well, I need the brass, don't I? We'll have to take that out the back way of the calf, you know. Oh, I'm taking you the calf as well, am I? Yeah. Uh, pick up the sewing machine, then on to our Flex and Kim. And uh, the consulate, wherever that is. Yeah. You can have the rest of the day off if you like. Oh, thanks very much. I'll think about it, yeah. But you are going to drop me off at the bus station tonight, aren't you? If Mexico's still on, I am, yeah. Thanks, you're a pal. Do they have tornadoes in Mexico? No idea. Well, I hope they know they've got one coming. Has it got to be this course? I mean, didn't you say that there was going to be another one in a few weeks' time? Well, it's all arranged, Betty. The Modelling Academy have booked me in for Monday. And anyway, Janine's getting the room ready. Janine? Yeah, she's got a flat near the Academy. She says I can stop there till I'm fixed up. Oh. Do you model and all? She was in Kirby's catalogue. At least her ears were and her neck, you know. Oh, yeah. Yeah, she used to do earrings, pendants, that sort of thing. Oh. Well, I've known her for ages. Yeah. They're on smashing. Has, uh, has she been to this place, you know, this uh, Mayfair, whatever it is? Oh, no, no, Janine will never full length. She's married with a baby now. Still, I hate to think what Beth's going to say when she finds you missing. Well, I can't tell her if she's not here, can I? I'm just meeting Vicky, she said. How was I supposed to know they'd stop off in London shopping? Well, you could ring her at the hotel. I mean, the number's on the pad. Oh, no, she let the roof, won't she? Oh, well. Suit yourself, love. bet has been very good to you, you know. You want to remember that when you prowl in the catwalks. How's life in the T-shirt trade? Uh, it's quiet. I uh, prefer it that way, actually. Oh, looking forward to the big arrival, are you? <laughs> no chance. You can stay in Florida for all I'm concerned. <laughs> Didn't mean Mac, you fool. I mean Vicky. Somebody said she was due back. Hey, it was me, I told you. Two months of tea ain't calm, I bet. I believe she's been to China. Hong Kong, Phyllis. Oh, travel broadens the mind, doesn't it? She won't want Weatherfield after seeing what she's seen. Oh, I wouldn't say that. Would you want to come back to Weatherfield if you hadn't got to? Of course you wouldn't. Nothing worth putting your specs on for. Well, I don't know, Phyllis. I mean, uh, Weatherfield does have its attractions. <laughs> Give me one. Percy Sugden? <laughs> Get out of here, with me. You lost that one, Phyllis. <laughs> ah, you can't hi. argue, can you? Hi. ALP is trouble. Hi. Hello, hi. Sally Love. Oh, hi. hi. Yeah, don't worry, Gail. It's just a social call. Is them um, Angie in? Yeah, last seen passing through that way 15 minutes since. Oh, I'll have to apologise for this morning. I bet she thinks I've gone crackers. Oh, and that's why we're here, is it? To apologise to Angie? Nothing to do with you know who, checking up on the snuffler. Well, it is actually. Can we stop for a bit? Yeah, feed him here. If you oh, like. thanks, Gail. I still think you're playing it all wrong, Sally. You should tell him. Find another minder. I keep meaning to. And then I look at him and. He's dead settled, Gail. What's she doing now? Oh, sulking in the back. She only wanted to leave better note. I don't know what gets into the young folks these days. There's no sense of responsibility, you know. Oh, Betty, do you want me to have a word? What can you say that I haven't? Well, I, I, I don't want her to leave, but she, she's my friend. Oh, all right. She's on the phone. Well, hello. Um, could I speak to Mrs. Beck Gilroy, please? Oh, it's, um... It's room 317. What's the betting that I'll end up on that phone? It'll all be my fault, you know. Betty, she's doing exactly as you said, isn't she? She's ringing Bet. Bet will give her a good cherokin. That'll be it. End of story. Um, I just rang like you said. Bet checked out with Vicky this morning. Oh. Mexico! See, I asked her not to mention it, and already she's shouting her mouth off. Will he keep it buttoned, Sam? Well, how long are you going for? Depends how long they let me stay. 
When they chuck me out, I'll go to Peru, Australia, I don't know. You mean you're not coming back? Exactly. Well, what's brought all this on? A mate of mine is studying Aztec design in Mexico, and I just thought, yeah, that's exactly the sort of thing to put the colour back in my cheeks. Well, for starters, anyway. Listen, if there's anything you want from my wardrobe, you can take it, but smuggle it past Gail, won't you? Why are you keeping all this a secret? Because it sounds crazy, and if anybody starts telling me it is, I'll start believing them. Well, you should tell Curly. He's the last person to know, OK, Sal? I'll write him a letter, explain. Oh, that's cruel, Whichever Angie. way he finds out will be cruel, Sally. It's best he knows after the event than before, less painful for both of us. I think you're crazy. There you go, a couple more like you, and I won't go, will I? But I thought she was already trained. You know, where she talks. Well, she is. But she says that this is the bee's knees. Well, according to Raquel, it'll cost her. I know that. Oh. How long she been planning this? Since last night. It rushed, didn't it? Mm. What does Bet say? No. She don't know yet. <laughs> Jack, yeah, hey, tell Rita what it's been like in here this morning. How do you mean, Betty? With Raquel, you know. Betty, we all have <laughs> dreams. Even you must have had dreams when you were younger. She's not dreaming, you fool. She's serious. She's back there painting her toenails, ready for off. Petal kibosh it, love. Well, don't worry, it won't happen. He seems confident. So's Raquel. <laughs> Good afternoon, Lance. Did oh. you miss me? Why? Where have you been? You're in bad company there, Ken. You know that, don't you? <laughs> well, we can see you've been shopping. You remember to meet Vicky? Give over. Half these bags are hers. I lug them in while she swans off with Steve. Uh, can I have a word, please? Uh, Jack, it's not your place. Come on. What's up? What's happened? Hello, Beth. What's up, love? Are you poorly? No, I've, um, I've got something to tell you. In private. It's not a fantasy, Beth. I mean, I know I've got it inside me to make it, and if I don't do it now, then I never will. I mean, come 30, I'll be too old, won't I? You'll be dropping me right in it. You know that, don't you? Leaving me short-staffed. I know, but I was hoping you'd understand. Mayfair Academy of Modelling. But it's not in Mayfair, is it? No. It's in Croydon. But I mean, they guarantee success if you complete. You can't guarantee success, Raquel. Nobody can. You see, I look at people and I think, well, they're in the right place, aren't they? They're suited. And you don't feel suited? Is that it? Well, not like you're suited. I mean, I watch you out there with the customers and I think, well, you see, a light goes on, don't it? No matter how bad things are back here, you just go out there and you light up the bar. Do I? Well, you see, you don't notice because it comes so natural. Not being in the public eye, I mean, enjoying it. And I like it as well, but people looking at me and passing me compliments. But not here. It's not my right place. See yourself in Paris, do you? Catwalking. Well, why not? Then I've got the right shape and. All I need is the training and contacts. Suppose I said I don't want you to go. I want us to part friends, Beth. You could fall flat on your face, Raquel. I know. I know. But at least I'll have tried. And if I don't try now, then I'll never know, will I? I'll just live to regret not trying. Well, I can't let you go right away. 
Now you know that, don't you? I thought you'd say that. Not this minute, I mean. Get a later train after it do. What do? Well, I can't let you swan off without a proper farewell now, can I? I'll tell Betty to cut some butties up. And we'll open a tin of chunks. Come here. Come here. Knock him dead, kid. Break a stiletto. Or whatever it is, this ain't modelling game. Thanks, Bet. Time I served a few customers, I think. I'm not going to say I'm chuffed that you're going, because I'm not. But we don't let it show, do we? So what do we do? Switch the light on. It's what you wanted, Mum. I know, I know, eventually. It's all been so quick. I mean, sell the shop, sell the house. I'm stuck miles away just watching him play bowls. Well, he can think again. You know, you used to complain that Alf couldn't make decisions. Well, now he's making them, isn't he? Despite the obstacles you put in his path. You want me to go, don't you? No, of course I don't. Mind you, be very handy for holidays. Get up! Well, there's not much news, really. Uh, Mum's still in the pub and Dad's got a job working with Kevin. I thought you were living at the pub then. Well, I was, but uh, then I moved back in with me dad. Isn't that like taking sides, though? I mean, if you and Andy are staying with your dad, isolate your mum a bit. Well, I can't live with both of them, though, can I? No, I suppose not. Just as long as you stay close to both of them. <sighs> Parents who need to, mate. Look, I'm, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Labels, you know those big brown ones with bits of string on them? Oh, if you've got any love, I haven't seen them for years. Um, you're invited if you want to come, but I suppose you've got something else on, haven't you? You what? Well, I'm only telling you just in case you think that you've not been invited. Well, I suppose you know I'm leaving tonight for this modelling course, don't you? Oh, right. Yeah, well, no sarky comments because I've not got time. Anyway, um, Bet's given me a bit of a send-off. Oh, she's letting you go then? Well, she gave me a blessing, yeah. Thanks, Rachel. I'll have half a dozen. Oh, give us 10p. You can have the lot. Oh, right. There you go. Thank you. Mm. So you can't say that you've not been asked. And Rita just heard me, didn't you? Uh -huh. Well, I can't come as it happens, Raquel. Oh. But I wish you all the luck in the world. It's a very brave thing you're doing, and I hope you make it. And I really mean that. Bye. 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 Is she being fun now? She seems sincere enough to me. Yeah. He's two on the house. Oh, cheers, Jack. I'm sure that's the best news I've had all day, so does. You think so, do you? Well, we're celebrating. Raquel's leaving. She's going to London on a modelling course. Oh, well, she kept that down, didn't she? When's she going? About an hour. Oh, wait on, me. She's coming back, isn't she? No. Jack doesn't look none too pleased, does he? Eh? Oh, fancies it, doesn't he? Oh, come on, Donald. Who the hell doesn't? Yeah. Good question, yeah. Cheers. Pint, please, Jack, when you're ready. I'm serving. Slip with him? Raquel's leaving. Get yeah, away. You better believe it, Curly son. <laughs> Tell you. I've no alternative, had I? Mm. If Anta said yes, she'd have hated me forever. I don't know what they teach them on these courses. Have you seen them on the telly? <laughs> The walkers at the drive the scratch something that they can't read. They thrust the pelvises out and all the sort of stand leaning oh, back. Well, they're not well, familiar. I've well, told just about everybody. Oh, and I've done some ringing round. I hope you don't mind. Of course, I don't love. Just watch the time for your taxi. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. Oh, thanks a bunch, Raquel. I found out by accident, didn't I? Oh, you've come straight here, haven't you? Yeah. Why? Well, there's a note behind your door. That's why. Hi, yeah. Hi. She did say she'd done some ringing round. Nice one, Raquel. Oh, I didn't think you'd be able to make it. Well, I can't let you sneak off without saying to her, can I? No. Hello, Jim. Where? Uh, uh, listen, can I get you a drink oh, or something? Oh, no. Uh, that's setting them up. What are you having? Uh, g and please. So, how have you been keeping? Alma's rent and a note explaining best I can. I'll drop the keys on the counter on my way out. Hi, then. 
I'll take your case out. Look after yourself. I will, Fred. Take care. Hey, keep in touch. And you keep your wits about you, girl. Oh, Jack. Thanks. And thanks for everything you know. Oh, shut up, the lot of you. We're just good friends, that's all. Fortunately. Right, rip off these modern schools. Put a sock in it, Audrey. No, they see them coming, that's what I'm saying. You're saying what I'm thinking, so put a sock in it. Oh! I reckon a reconciliation is on the cards over there, don't you? Yeah, well, I mean, I think I'm kind of settled now with Kevin, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's funny, though, isn't it? Eh? Baldwin. He owns half the family now, doesn't he? <laughs> well, just keep your temper, Jim, and keep your job. I am pleased you're OK. Yeah. Uh, look, let me get you another drink, eh? Be all set, Mum. Oh, hi, Steve. He's running me back. I said I want to be in there. Nice seeing you, Jim. Yeah. See you, Dad. Raquel, best of luck. Oh, and if you see anything that might fit me, send it. Thanks, Liz, <laughs> I will, and thanks for coming. Pleasure. Ta-ra. Yeah. But you would have helped me out, Raquel, if Angie can't make it. And what's the point of being best man if you haven't got a best woman? Well, I can't come off my course just because Reg Hold was getting married. No, Angie's your best bet. Yeah, I hope so. Ask her again while she's in a good mood. She was all sweetness and light to me earlier on. Well, Angie was. Yeah, well, it, it's either that or she's feeling a bit blue because I'm heading for the big time. It must be a bit upsetting, though, mustn't it? There with all them qualifications and me going there first. Raquel, get us a bottle of wine, will you, to take out? White. Oh. You want to stop anywhere? Knock on anybody's door? What do you think? Forget it, Des. I'll miss my bus. Joe seemed a bit quiet today. Did he say anything? What about? I don't know. Joe seemed a bit quiet. Oh, he's just worried about Jonathan's cold. I didn't know you had one. Anyway, you've still not told me why you went to Angie's. Just visiting. She gave me some of her skirts. Hand me downs. Come on, Sal, we're not that skint, are we? No, just stuff she wanted to get rid of. Anyway, I can't tell you yet. I promised. What? Well, if I tell you, you're going to tell. I just wish you'd told him, that's all. So? Listen, you don't fancy being best woman at a wedding, do you? I got a maybe off Angie, but I've just not, since she's not in. And Raquel, well, she was going to be a possibility, but look, she's barely now, as you can see. And, well, if Angie can't do it, I mean, stuck. Anyway, I'll see you. Kelly. Angie. She can't do it. She's gone. I, I mean, I shouldn't be telling you this. She should have told you herself. 
What are you saying? Angie, she's gone for good. Honestly, I'm not kidding. I, I wish I was, but... Gone? Gone where? Mexico. Today, just gone. Mexico. I'm sorry, Curly. He walks in the Rovers, looking as if he's seen a ghost, yeah. wanders up to the bar and orders a large scotch. Curly, he doesn't drink scotch. <laughs> well, he did last night. And somebody said to him, I thought you were going to fetch Angie. What's up? Yeah. So he said, well, if you must know, Angie's gone. She's gone to Mexico. Mexico? Mm. What's the attraction with Mexico? <laughs> Don't ask me. Yeah, these guys with droopy sashes walking around with big hats on all day, saying things like, uh, yeah, senor, I think I want to kill you. Yeah, well, they're doing the cowboy films, but uh, <laughs> somehow I get the feeling it's not quite like that. No, is it not? Oh, well, she can't bother going, then. <laughs> oh, I feel sorry for poor old Curly, though, because he looked really dropped on. I mean, apart from it. Oh, hey, oh. Oh. All right, Curly, all right, just talking about you. What's all this about Angie? I believe she's gone on holiday. Well, it's not a holiday exactly. She's uh, seeing the world. Oh, is she coming back then? No. And uh, has she been planning this for long? I don't know. Well, you must have talked about it. I mean, you and her were like that, weren't you? I thought we were. Hmm? Must have been wrong, eh? Hmm? Curly, don't you want to buy him? Well, I reckon he's upset, you know. Bye, heck, Martin. There's not much gets past you. Well, he's not the only one, is he? I'm upset and all. I mean, Angie's gone, Raquel's gone. There's no fancy but women left round here. Oh, I'll tell Gail you said that. <laughs> See you now. Ta -da. So, I lost my tenant, did I? Just like that. Opt and off to Mexico, of all places. Hey, what state shall leave my flat in, I wonder? Ah, oh, well, out of sheer nosiness, I went and had a peep this morning. You're all right. No dead bodies, so nice and clean. Well, I suppose that's something. And Raquel's decided to give Maudlin another go, so she's gone to the big city to seek a fortune. Mm, well, in my opinion, she'd be lucky to end up with small change. Ah, oh, well, <laughs> good luck to her. At least she knows what she wants, which is more than I can say for my mother. She's gone off Lytham. She has. Well, actually, I think it's Alf she's gone off. She's got him 24 hours a day, and in my opinion, she thinks that's 16 hours too many. Do you know, I think I've had more excitement here than me and Mike had in Florida. <laughs> hey, hey, so what's she going to do then? She's already done it. You're not going to believe this. She's got herself a job. Audrey, a job? Working? <laughs> I said she wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Wait till the novelty wears off. You're talking to me? Well, you look as if you're going to Buckingham Palace not to work, and I may say you never went to all this trouble you were working in my shop. Well, I wasn't encouraged to, was I? I mean, your outlook was always, if you're selling sacks of potatoes, you might as well look like a sack of potatoes yourself. I never said that. No, you didn't have to. Your face always said it for you. You see, where I'm working now, being well-groomed and stylish is really appreciated. It makes a nice change. Well, I always appreciated the way you looked, Audrey, <laughs> always. Give You've never given a blind bit of notice how I look or what I was wearing. You never have. If I was to walk in here stark naked with a bunch of bananas on my head, you would be counting the bananas. I <laughs> wouldn't, you know. <laughs> Listen, all this thing about being a working woman, it's just a whim, that's all it is. It's like not wanting to go in Lytham. And that was your idea in the first place anyway. Let's live in Lytham, you said. Now, you can't deny that. Now, where are the car keys? What do you want the car keys for? Oh, what does anybody want the car keys for? Oh, here they are. Look, I'm the one that's working, so I'll need the car, won't you? You can't take the car again today. I might want to go out. Well, in that case, you'd be better off walking. Oh. Like the doctor said, it'll keep you fit and you'll get some weight off, huh? Mm. See you tonight. Audrey, we got... <sighs> Look, I haven't got time for reading now. I've got a cafe to run. Well, you can have a quick look, can't you? Oh. Oakhill School. Dead right for Mark, that is. Yeah, well, I mean, a school's a school, isn't it? I mean, classrooms and football pitches. Well, what am I supposed to be well, doing? Well, I mean, with computer it? centre, a science lab, a centre of excellence. Look, it says so there. Best school by a mile, that is. 
private, I suppose. Oh, of course it is. First class school, that is. Yeah, I bet they charge accordingly. Well, you don't get the best on the cheap. All right, how much? I mean, what sort of money are we talking about? Oh, uh, well, uh, talk about that later, eh? Well, why can't we talk about it now? Because, like you said, you're busy, you've got a cafe to run. It'll wait. Oh, hello, Maggie. It's Mike. <laughs> how many Mikes do you know, then? Now, listen, it's important, it's about Mark. Uh, so how about meeting me for lunch? No, today. It's got to be today. You're always telling me it's Mark that matters, I agree. Yeah, OK. Fine, good. Well, look, uh, I'll pick you up about uh, 12.30, all right? Fine. Bye. Oh, oh I've done this for a game of soldiers, Bessie. I don't mind a bit of a lap. This is a flaming pantomime. Look, what are you on about now? Well, you know what she's doing to me and you, don't you, eh? She's having us for mugs. Who are we talking about, Ben? Of course I am. Liz gone, Raquel gone, two of us doing the work of four. Oh, come on, fair dues, bets mucking it. It's as bad for it as for us. Who you tell us, like? I'm getting the same money for the damn sight more work. Oh. And she's putting Liz and Raquel's money in her pocket. I mean, she's quids in, see? Uh. Morning. Morning. Morning, love. Oh, well, we were just wondering, are you thinking of taking any bar staff on? You know? Well, it's getting on better, love. I mean, we could do with a barmaid. No, we certainly could, huh? I was on the phone to Stella Rigby just now to see if she knew anybody. This girl's out there crying for it. Work, that is. I mean, that's what we need, isn't it? A young girl, and, and I could show her the ropes. Give over. We need somebody who knows the job. And more than out, somebody we can get on with. Yeah, well, I can get on with anybody, can't I? Well, I managed to help here, you have to do. Yes, well, I'm a bit more particular than you, Jacko, so I'm not rushing into this. Until I find somebody that's right, we'll all have to pull that little bit harder. OK? Right. Uh, hi. You didn't notice how much these were, did you, love? Uh, the 120, I think, but I'm not sure. I'll have to ask someone, won't be a minute. Mr. Watts, do you know how much these melons are? Uh, 120. Yeah, thought they were. Angie! Oh, I'm sorry. I, uh, I thought you were someone else, I'm sorry. <sighs> I want you to come and have some lunch with me. Well, it's a bit early. And if Baldwin catches me knocking off before 12, he's gonna go off, isn't he? You're not scared of him, surely? No, it's just that the job happens to suit me for the time being. Come and have some lunch in the Rovers. And I'll tell you what, if Baldwin does catch you, I'll order a hundred T-shirts. Brilliant, don't you think? That's great. Thanks a lot. It's down to the agent now. Right. Um, anyway, it's like I was saying, the stock is getting so low, we're actually turning customers away. We really need to be stocking up. Anyway, I know who Mr Scott used to order from, so I can... No, I don't want to get into all of that. Just just keep it ticking over. Right, I'm off. Oh, uh, I was hoping you might be stopping for a bit, only uh, I could do with getting out for some lunch. Couldn't you make yourself a sandwich? Well, I could, but I need to nip home, really. Morning, ladies. Oh, morning! Oh, go on, then. You can have half an hour. Could you make it 20 minutes? Well, I'll do my best. Stuff these days, eh? It's all I want, I want, I want, isn't it? I mean, who will be, be an employer now? Go. The sooner I get this place off my hands, the better I'll be pleased. Oh, yes, mind you, it's not easy these days, is it? This moment in time, with the economy in its present state? <laughs> no, the agent said that. Said it'd take some selling. Did he? Good, good. No, what I mean is this agent, he obviously he obviously knows the score, doesn't he? He's not making any easy promises and building up well, false hopes and that. He certainly isn't. Mm. Now, why Brendan bought this place? Well, it was like a toy for him, really, I suppose. It could be very childish. Still, I shouldn't be grumbling about him. He did have very solid life insurance. <laughs> Just as well. I can't see me standing behind a counter for the rest of my life. Oh, no, 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 my dear. That's no life for you, is that? It's like I said the other day at poor Brendan's funeral. Any assistance and any help I can give you to get this millstone from round your neck. I mean, what's the point of having expert knowledge of the trade if you can't help an old colleague's widow? <laughs> That's very kind. No. Anything you can suggest, well, I'd be more than grateful. Right, right. Well, as it happens, I'm rather pushed today, but uh, let me see. How about tomorrow? Would you be free for lunch, then? 
Yes. Yes, I am. All right, good. That's settled then, Debbie. And in the meantime, I shall set my mind to work, see if I can't find the means, as it were, to uh, lift that burden from those dainty shoulders. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'll see you later. <laughs> what are you stopping for? I thought we were going for some lunch. Oh, we'll grab that later. Here, have a look at that. What's this? Oh, another of your boarding schools. I told you, Mike. No, dear. we're outside now. So there's no need to board. He'd be home with you every night. Mike, you just don't let up, do you? Not until I got my son's education sorted out, no. Damn good school, Maggie. And like I said before, I pay for everything. Oh, but what would he get there that he's not getting already? Well, let's go and see, shall we? We're outside. Won't do any harm. Well, I suppose so. Right, then. Let's go. Percy lad, I'm with you. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. Uh, tomato juice for Mrs. Bishop and half a bit for me, please. Right, we're a bit short-handed at the moment. Yes, of course. You've lost Raquel. Ah, you'll do some oh. No, I'll be bound. I mean, a lot of fellows won't drink in a book unless they're a good-looking woman behind the bar. Thank you very much, Percy. If it's any help, Betty doesn't deliberately set out to give offence. Offence? Oh, don't get me wrong, Mrs. Gilroy. You're not losing me as a customer. I don't come in here just to search a pretty face. No, I'm more than happy to have you serving me. Just as well he doesn't do it deliberate, Emily. I mean, if he was really trying, he could have fend for England, couldn't he? What's up with her? If you don't mind, Mr. Sugden, let's just drop the subject. Oh, you would have loved the food in Hong Kong. It's absolutely out of this world. Well, I've eaten plenty of Chinese round here, like. No, oh, no, it's not the same. Yeah, you keep saying. Vicky, love, if you finish your dinner, do you think you could collect some dead glasses for me? Yeah, sure. Thanks, love. And then if you could just see how Betty's fixed for knives and forks. No uh, so that was it then, was it? That was lunch. No, I'll be back, okay. <sighs> she might as well have stayed in Hong Kong. It's funny. I was just thinking that. Thank you. Delighted to meet you. Thanks a lot. Bye bye. We'll be in touch. Nice bloke. Spoke a lot of sense. Now, you can see it's a damn good school, can't you? Mark, that's a pretty good school already. Oh, come on, Maggie. Where do you think the people that run this country send their kids, eh? <laughs> they send them here, do they? No, not here, but a place like it. That's why I want Mark to come here, to give him a good start, to open a few doors. Don't you want him to get somewhere? Don't you want him to be a somebody? I want him to have a good life. Of course I do. Right, then we've got to get him out the dump he's in and get him here. But the term started now. You know, you went back today. That's no problem. This place doesn't start till Monday, so I won't miss anything. No, no. Now, wait a minute. This is Mark's life we're talking about. If Mark likes the look of the place, and if he wants to come here, then all right, I won't object. Good. But it's up to Mark, OK? OK. Come on, then. I'll buy you that lunch, I promised you. I'm sorry, love. Uh, Patel's on Rosamond Street. They'll have it. Hi, Hi Jim. Jim. I hope you want something we've got. Bag of sugar, uh -huh. please, Bingo, that I can still supply. Mrs Scott won't let me order anything. We're running the business into the ground. Ah, oh, this is the grieving widow, is it? Yeah. I'll tell you what, she strikes me as the sort of woman who'll bear up under her sad loss, that's for sure. Well, I must admit, she doesn't seem devastated, but uh, you never know. Oh, I can make a fair guess, so I can. I was looking at you last night in the Rovers. Oh, yeah. What Raquel's leaving, do. I couldn't help noticing how you look when Liz walked in and... Ah, it's none of my business. Go on, what? Well, you looked hard hit. And I nearly came over to you then and there just to tell you it does get better eventually. Is that right? Well, yeah. I mean, my ex can come in here now for a slice loaf and I can serve him without a twinge. Most days, anyway. Ah, oh, well, drink and work, Deirdre. Them's my two consolations. Only trouble is, occasionally, one does get in the way of the other. See ya. Ta-da, love. You know, education, like everything else, you want the best, it's gonna cost you. Well, I think Weatherfield Comp's all right, myself. 
They seem to care about the kids. Oh, yeah, they care, but in the wrong way. They teach them about caring and sharing and making the world a better place. What's wrong with that? They should be teaching them that life's a jungle. To survive, you've got to move quicker and jump higher. You've got to compete. And you get blokes like Barlow teaching... Oh, the kids do you know, right I loaded. wonder how long it'll be before you mentioned his name. I mean, you are totally prejudiced against anything he's connected with, aren't you? The man is a phony. And that's not prejudice. It's a simple statement of fact. Oh, yeah, sure. He's mm. part of the system and he's all wrong. You won't admit that there are winners and losers and the kids have got to buckle down. He's turning out kids here that can't read and can't write. <laughs> but they can change in that people. <laughs> oh, Mike, come on, give it a break. All right, but I'm just telling you, Mark is going to have the best. Oh, yeah, and how much is that going to cost, eh? As I said before, let me worry about the money, all right? See you later. You don't know anybody who might want to rent the upstairs flat, do you? I've got a feeling I'm going to need the cash. You'd have loved the house. Look, it's got this big glass window, and at night you can see all across the harbour. It's absolutely beautiful. I think you wish you were still there. Oh, no, no. I'm glad to be back and everything, but if you ever get a chance to go to these places, you must grab it. Yeah, well, maybe next summer holidays one of your mates' mums will invite her back to a little pad in Hollywood or Malibu or something. No, I don't think anybody's got a place, huh? Oh, come on, Steve. Don't be jealous. Hey, you'd have gone if you'd have had the chance. Yeah, but I didn't, though, did I? Yeah, well, why do you want to spoil it for me? Me? It's not me that spent half the summer holidays somewhere else, and it's not me that's trekking off back to school in a few days. Hey, I know we don't have a lot of time together, so let's not spoil it by arguing. I mean, I don't know why you want to go back to school anyway. It's not as if you have to. They can't make you stay at school, can they? You could pack it all in if you wanted. And do what? I don't know. What do you want to do? Well, if Bobby wants to throw his money around on private schools, let him get on with it. That's what I say. Yeah, but I have a feeling it might be harmless, Mum. Mm. Here, we're lucky yours, aren't we, eh? Life's a lot simpler when you're poor. Do you make Oh, you know, I'm not after you for your money, don't you? Because you haven't got any. <laughs> then again, couldn't think of it. Neither have I. <laughs> oh, innkeeper, two pints of your finest civil Wait, play. Yes, sweat, Reg. I'll be with you. I don't really want to be in here, Reg. I just want to go home. God, you know, sometimes not when you baffle me, you. I mean, here you are, young, rude in health, single, your own store to lord it over. I mean, you should be as happy as a pig in glove, you. Look, you know how you felt all those years ago when you lost Maureen? Well, that's how I feel about Angie. Oh, come off it, Norman. I mean, there's no comparison, is there? I mean, in my opinion, that young lady shows bad news for you. Unsettling. I mean, I've heard her mock your career, belittle your executive status. That's no good to you, is it? You don't need that. You don't understand. And I understand this. That store of which you are the manager, hmm? Lord of all you survey, so it were. Hey, I can't. Thank you, Dad. Shall we watch? Steaming with young talent, isn't it? Oh. Young, impressionable ladies and you their boss. I mean, Norman, you're halfway there, are you? <laughs> are you suggesting I abuse my power? No, you my are. Norman, that is what power is for. There's no point in having it if you don't abuse it. Come on. Hey. Mm. Well, at least the car's still in one piece anyway. You're not going to get it tomorrow. Well, you don't need it. Yes, I do. Jack, when you've got a minute. Right. I think I'll nip over to Lidl tomorrow, make sure everything's going through as it should. Lip them. You were all for it the other day. Oh, keep your car. I'll get my own little car. It'll run about. Soon save up out of my wages. Not for a deposit, I know where. Save up? You won't be at that shop long enough to save up. It's just a whim, oh. just to annoy me. Jack, are we getting a drink or not? Jack, serve Alf. Oh, aye. Uh, shove my brush under up my belt and I'll sweep the floors. I'm going round. Lady, lady. Uh, it's bedtime because it's bedtime. I'm not tired. Yes, you are, I can tell. No story. Oh, you've had two stories already. Tell you what, you get into bed and I'll read you the story, eh? I'll do it. You don't have to, you know. I like it. <sighs> Wait till the novelty wears off. I'll still like it. Right, come on, Dom. Say goodnight to your mum. Goodnight. Kiss. Mm, hug. Mm. Mm, see you in the morning. Yeah. Right, come on, what story do you want first? Cheers, love. Oh, cheers, Alf. Well, I see she's got the shop up for sale, then. Yeah, she's not interested. She just wants to get shut and get the money. Mm, best thing to do, then, if she's not interested. I don't think she'll get the price I did, though. Well, I know we're losing trade like mad. She, she won't let me get any stock in. Another few weeks and the shelves will be half empty. Oh, I don't like to see it going down, you know. I'm just glad we're moving to Lytham. We are not moving to Lytham. You might be moving to Lytham. See the shops on the market again? Yeah, yeah, I know. Hmm. This time, Norman, strictly between you and me, it shall find the right buyer. You? You're thinking of buying that after what happened to Brendan Scott? Shh, I am, yes. See, I'm finished at Better Buyers, Norman. The knives are out for me at the head office. <laughs> 
No, no, no. You've still got friends there, Rich. No, no, no. I'll reveal my flank, you see, Norman. Largely through pushing your career forward. <clears throat> pushing my career forward? Yes. I've leant over backwards, thrusting you forward, and I'm protecting you. That sort of thing makes enemies. Anyway, I shall take the golden handshake, leave the better by empire, and create, uh, well, not an empire, but a kingdom of my own. It's small. <laughs> well, if you want the corner shop, I hope you get it this time. Oh, I have no fear about that, Norman, and it will be at the right price, a bargain price. What, you've done a deal with the Widow Scott? Not as yet, no. As of this moment in time, I am actually merely Mrs Scott's financial advisor, making sure that she knows the market is dead and that she won't find a buyer at any price. And then, out of the goodness of my heart, I will eventually take it off her hands myself. <laughs> my God, Rich. That could be fairly called diabolically cunning. Thank you, Norman. By the way, no mention of this to Maureen. Women don't understand these little ruses, do they? And I shall start my final approach tomorrow, taking out the widow Scott for a sympathetic lunch. I bet Brendan Scott's spinning in his grave. Mm, no doubt he would be, Norman. It's just as well that she had him cremated. Oh, Ray. Cheers. You know, Vicky had the sort of education that Mark's going to get. And it shows. I tell you, you only get what you pay for. Well, Weatherfield comprehensive seems fair enough to me. I mean, it did a good job with my auntie, you know. Ah, but he had the motivation, auntie. I mean, you have to have that, whatever school it is you go to. Ah, well, auntie's a trier, all right. I mean, I know I've made a mess of my life recently, but there's one thing I'm dead proud of, one thing they can't take away from me, right? That's my wee lad. He went to university, so he did. Asleep? I'm like a lie. Thanks, Andy. He's really good for you, isn't he? <laughs> it's because he likes you. Well, the feeling's mutual. And I'm rather fond of his mother as well. Mm. No, but you're really good at getting him to do things. I thought I was pretty good at that with you. Not complaining. Good. You'll miss you, though, when you go back to university. Right, well, i better tell you this now, then. What? I'm going back to Sheffield. Packing it in. I don't mean that. Yes, I do. I'm not going to spend another two years playing college boy, and then at the end of it, what have I got? <sighs> well, you'll have a degree for a start. So? Doesn't open any doors these days, does it? I'm going to get myself a job, and I'm going to get on with the rest of my life, which means being with you. That's what I want. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Shindig start tonight, then. Half past seven. Oh, yeah. I hope you're not going to be late back. Oh, well, because we're half very busy today, actually. Well, I've got to be there on the dot, you know. I can't just swan in any old time. Guest of honour, you know. Oh, get away. Yeah, I know how long it takes you to get ready. Well, I want to look my best, don't I? Eh? Guest of honour's wife, remember? <laughs> don't want the widow Barford upstairs, you know. It's a sit-down job, then, is it? It's a buffet. Don't you even read the invitation? Hey, listen, I'm too busy working to read out. Hardly wait, all the interesting people that will be there. Harry Potts, Vivian Barford. Well, you shut up about Mrs Barford. She won't even be there. Oh, oh. now, who am I going to talk to, her? Huh? Well, there'll be Gail there, there'll be Martin, there'll be Rita, Deirdre. Oh, nice to see some new faces for a change. Hey, if you're going to start with them cracks tonight, you might as well not come. I wouldn't miss it for the world, mm. sweetheart. And don't worry, I shall be on time, I'll be well behaved, and so pretty I will be the belle of the ball. <laughs> You will wipe that egg off your chin before this evening, won't you, love? Bye! Ooh, nice. What are you trying to do here? Yeah, electrocute we'll yourself. Eh? Yeah. Go any harder on that jar, you'll have sparks flying. Well, it's not one not Vera, anyway, if you won't buy new. Yeah, well, give us more brass if you want more marmalade. I can't afford any more on what you tip up. On what I earn, Vera. Ha! What you earn? Don't say half of what you earn. It goes on offices at ale. Do you want to start digging a bit deeper in them trouser pockets of yours and handing it over? I didn't know you developed a passion for fluff, Vera. Well, there better be more than fluff in it, I tell you. Cos I want something for our Tommy's birthday party tomorrow. What party? He's having a party. I've invited all kids out at street. He's having cake and jelly, crackers... Well, hang, hang on. What do you want to be wasting money like that for? Because all kids have a party on the birthday. I mean, they dep feel deprived in later life if they're not treated, you know. Yeah, but he's not going to remember that far back. You don't start that light till about six or seven. Look, it goes in, even at his age. I read it in a magazine in clinic. Right, right. Well, let's just have a little tea party for him, just, just the three oh. of us. Don't be inviting all the street. 
Look, he's having a proper party and not a crap mug version like you'd give him your skin flint. So come on, cough up. Or else the next marmalade you'll get will be in spinal injuries ward at Weatherfield General. I thought I might see if there's a cricket match on today, Mrs Bishop. Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, you know, before the end of the season, it's a long while since I've been to one, I might give old Trafford a ring. Hmm. I often think I'd like to go and watch cricket. Not so much for the sport as the occasion. It's so English. The men in their whites and the slow, leisurely pace of everything. Well, I never. Something wrong? After all that, Olive Clark's getting married again. Oh. I don't know if she has the cheek to invite us. Well, she was very fond of you. But that's not the point. Her husband's still warm in his grave. Oh, I don't think you can say that. But that's not it. It's an insult to his memory. Weren't you going to ask her to marry you at one point? Yes, but I thought better of it. You can't go remarrying at our age. She said herself nobody could ever replace Nobby. Who is Edwin Turner? I don't know, but whoever he is, he's got no moral fibre. And she goes down in my estimation now. Take it you won't be going, then? You take it exactly right, and I won't be going to a cricket match either. It really has put me off my stroke, as this. Hey, are they those area sales figures? As it happens. Why would you like to peruse them? You know very well I do. I've been asking you for these for ages. I want to see if the Miles Platting branch is having the same problems as us with the... Hey! What are these? figures for the corner shops in the Weatherfield area. Oh, you don't do things by RG, do you? Hey, only she's paranormal, as I've told you. I don't intend to let it escape this time. Is that why you got the dark suit on? Hey, if you like it. I thought it might help to impress the proprietrix over lunch. Right, you'll excuse me. Hey, but what about those figures that I wanted? Later, Norman. Much lower things on my mind now. Well, I just thought I'd try and get a job here first. In a supermarket? Yeah, we're not pushing a trolley. Trainee manager. Oldsworth once said, if I was ever interested, let him know. It's a good career. Yeah, I'm sure it is. I'm just not sure you're doing the right thing. What, leaving? Yeah. Well, I thought you'd be pleased. I'm flattered. But whether it's right for you or not... Wait, you never said anything about this last night. Yeah, well, you took me by surprise last night and I've had a chance to think since then and... And I'm looking ahead, Andy. To three or four years' time when we've broken up and you're blaming me for throwing away your education. Who says we're going to break up? Look, a degree isn't a guarantee of a job these days, is it? So why waste two more years? Why not just start my career now? Two years is a long time, Andy. You're still young. You'll change. You're going to regret doing this. So I'm immature now, is that it? No, but I think on this you need protecting from yourself. Thanks a lot, Amy. That makes me feel really good. I'm serious. In fact, I'm so serious I might have to think about breaking off if you go through with it. What? It's for your sake, Andy. I'm not worth the sacrifice. Morning. Oh, you're very cheerful. Yeah, well, I'm making a birthday party, you know, for our Tom, eh? So I've come in for some stuff. Oh, that's nice. Is he a year old already? I know, love, eh? He doesn't seem five minutes, does he? Really? Anyway, listen, I want some self-raising flour. You oh. know, to make a cake. I don't think we've got any self-raising left. We've got plain. Oh, no, it said self-raising in recipe. Oh, you know. sorry. Never mind. Listen, I wanted some crisps. One of them big economy packs, you know, with 12 packets in different flavours. We've only got individual ones, I'm afraid. Oh, I can't afford that. It's looking a bit bad in here, isn't it? Well, it's Mrs Scott, you see. She's letting everything run down before <sighs> she sells it off. Well, have you any blancmange? I think we've got butterscotch flavour. No, I want a pink. Sold out. Right, uh, icing sugar. No. Marzipan. No. The only thing we've got in the cake line are these decorations here. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Well, it's a birthday party, not Christmas. Well, look on the bright side, Vera. He can't read yet, can he? Oh, what's up? Well, I said I'd meet Bet in town in half an hour. I've got to get some stuff for school. Well, I didn't know you'd be free. I wasn't. A wangled time off specially. I'm sorry. Well, you're going back on Sunday. I know. I don't like it any more than you do. Then do something about it. Oh, come on. I've got to go to school, Steve. Well, can't you go somewhere around here, like a sixth form college or something? No, Grandad wouldn't let me. And besides, who can blame him? You'd be a distraction. Well, there's no reason to worry now. That's for sure. I hardly ever get to see you. We might as well pack it all in for all the time we spend together. Steve! 
You don't expect me to be grateful for that, do you? Well, you know, it's not every cafe you let you sit there with just a cup of tea during the midday rush. I mean, most of them have a minimum charge, you know. Yes, it's disgusting. Oh, this tea stewed. Well, you should have drunk it, shouldn't you, while it was still fresh instead of sitting there complaining? Oh, I'm not staying here listening to this. I'll go somewhere, mate. Custom is appreciated. Not like you? Oh, well, you know, I'm just sick of his constant moaning. I mean, he's not the only one with problems, you know. I mean, most of us have to just get on with it. This wouldn't have anything to do with your darling husband, would it? Check him, Mark, see that school this afternoon. You know he's determined to send him there. Well, I just hope it's what Mark wants. Oh, I'm sorry, Gail. I don't think you understand. It is what Mike wants. <gasps> really oh, matters. silly me, I forgot. Yeah. Yes, Jim, what can we get you? Well, as long as it's not what you gave Percy there, for it didn't seem to agree with him, so it didn't, uh... Tell you what, I'll just stick with a bacon sarnie, all right? Coming up. So, is everybody looking forward to Ralph's binge at the Queen's tonight, then? Yeah, should be quite nice. Give him a good send-up. Well, is it? So, councillors and councillors' families are to go and what? Yeah, it's supposed to be, but I wouldn't be surprised if Arthur Street turns up now the news has got out. Put it this way, I don't think there's going to be bouncers on the door keeping people out. So, how quick do you think it'll sell? Well, I mean, it's hard to say, is it, Debbie? Because the housing market has picked up, but, I mean, the small business sector around here, well, it's very sluggish. Mm. Mm. That's what the estate agent said. That's why he suggested putting it up for auction. Ah, oh, well, they would, wouldn't they? Going for a quick profit, you see. It's much easier than having to work hard to get the right uh, right price for it, value. Hey, it's wicked into the commission. They charge these days. So you'd hold on to it, would you? Um. Well, I mean, he may have his point, you know. I mean, it's not the business that he was, you know, long established when... Uh... <laughs> Alfred oh, Roberts sold it. And then again, of course, there's an unfortunate way that Brendan met his demise. I mean, right on the premises. Uh. What's that got to do with it? Well, shopkeepers are like sailors, you see, Deborah. They're very suspicious. But word's probably got round now that it's an unlucky shop. This could be more difficult than I thought. No, 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 you're all right. Anyway, I shouldn't be dampening down your expectations, should I? No, it's best to be realistic. Oh, uh, yeah. Forewarned is forearmed, eh? And I do have my finger to the window. Absolutely. No, I'm glad that we've spoken. Oh, yeah. Oh. Have you seen Reggie since this morning? Uh, no, no. I think he had a very important business lunch. Well, he never said. Well, I expect he's got a full diary of me. He can't tell you everything. But I'm cooking dinner for him tonight. I mean, he doesn't usually eat in the evenings, you see, if he's had a big lunch. <laughs> did he say who it was with? Oh, no, I don't think he did. Oh, how peculiar. <laughs> I'm not sure what to do now. No, no. Well, it's a chance of business now, he's retailing. Heads roll every week, or better if I ask, or somebody made wrong decision, you know. What would you do? Well, I don't know. I mean, all I know about is supermarkets, Debbie. I mean, it's a different scale from corner shops, isn't it? Oh! Good Lord, look at the time. I'm supposed to be in Bury in 20 minutes, me. Oh, I haven't kept you up, Anne. No, no, I've enjoyed our little talk. I just had no idea how late it was. Anyway, uh, you're much better informed than you were before lunch, aren't you? Well, yes, but uh, makes the decision that much more difficult. Oh, yes. A little learning is a bad thing, eh? Look, I'll tell you what, if you want, we could, uh, well, we could meet up later for a more detailed chat. Oh, would you mind? No, 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 no. It's the least I can do for Brendan's sake, isn't it, really? <laughs> you're very kind. Right, let's have a look, then. Uh, would, um... Uh... Tomorrow will be all right. Yeah, great. Yeah, well, it'll have to be in the evening, cos I'm tied up during the day. Fine. Look, um, why don't you just pop over to my place and we can have a light, uh, well, have a discussion over light supper. You sure it's no trouble? No, no, no. Actually, I'm just opposite your shop, you know, over the newsagents. Oh, I know. All right, shall we say 6.30, then? Mm. <laughs> Think, eh? Do you like it? Yeah, but it's different to where I am now, though. Yeah, what did I tell you? Knock spots off Weatherfield, eh? And what about those facilities? The computer room it was good. Yeah, that's why I want you here. Smaller classes, you see. Teacher can give you more attention. I'm not sure I like that, though. No, of course you don't. Good for you, though. Yeah. Kids just mess about at Weatherfield. You never get anything done. Yeah. So, what do you think, eh? I don't know. I'm just wondering whether I'll make any friends. Of course you will. Give yourself, what, a couple of weeks, you'll be all right? It's a bit, well, posh. Yeah, well, that's the difference between a place like this and a school like Weatherfield, you see. They, here they teach you the lead. I mean, the boys may be a bit different to start with, but you'll be all right. Lead? Yeah. I mean, think where do you want to be in 20 years' time, eh? 
stuck in some yes job, staying in the rain waiting for a bus, or do you want to be the guy in the Jag driving past to some important meeting? Because to get where he is, you've got to think you're the best. And they won't teach you that in some backstreet comprehensive. We'd have to go to a public school just to get a decent job. That's the first thing they're going to ask you when you go to the interview. Which school did you go to? Now, you can keep your A-levels and your degrees. They're nothing there to a penny. What they're looking for is that something extra special that this place a teacher. Anyway, it's up to you. I'm not going to twist your arm anymore. You can come here and take everything that this place a teacher, or stay where you are and make the most of it. Your decision, son. Go to a cricket match then. Well, I said I wouldn't, and I didn't. I'm a man of my word, me, you know. Not like some I could mention. Right. I'll start the tea in a minute then. You think? It was only yesterday I was laying a wreath on Mary's grave. Fifteen years ago since she died, you know. Really? I never stay from memory in that time. No, because I believe in the sanctity of marriage. Yes, well, that's very noble of you. The person you swear vows to can never be replaced. Mr. Sugden, I'm sorry you've been disappointed. It's not me that's disappointed, it's Nobby. But do we have to have all this sanctimony? Sanctimony, Mrs. Bishop? I'm surprised to hear you say that. I'm simply bemoaning the declining standards. You're bemoaning the fact that Mrs. Clark has said yes to someone else after she turned you down. Turned me down? What are you talking about? Well, that's how it looked to me. I'm surprised at you, Mrs. Bishop. Jealous is nothing to be ashamed of, you know. I dare say it isn't, but it's not to do with me. Anyway, if that's the way you're thinking, there's no point in talking, is there? All right. Uh, drinks for two thirsty men, please. Uh, I'll have a tea and a Coke for Master Redmond here. Well, are you going? Yeah. You made a very important decision today, the this young man. Oh? What's it like? Great. Got dead good playing fields, new computer room, but the important thing is to prepare you for life better. Absailing? Tell him about the absailing. Oh, yeah, you can do a course on that as well if you want. Six months' time, he'll be able to teach you. So, when do you start? Monday. Well, at least Mark's not going away, Nicky. You two will still be able to see each other. Oh, yeah, you'll still be friends. No problem there, eh, Mark? No, why should there be? <sighs> Where the heck have you been? Oh, love, I'm so... Do you know what the time is? We had a late delivery just as I was leaving. You promised you'd be back. But I couldn't leave everybody else to her. I don't believe this. You put that so-called job before my do. Oh, please, Alf, I'm not in the mood. No, nor am I. You know how important this is to me. You're doing this deliberately, aren't you? Just give us a break, love, please. I've said I'm sorry. All that sarcasm this morning and now this. You're determined to spoil things for me, aren't you? Oh, sit down, Audrey, love. Take your shoes off. Let me make you a cup of tea while you get ready. I haven't got time to make cups of tea. I'm going out. I've got this do to go to. I wish to. you'd shut up about this flipping do. I've a good mind not to come at all. Yeah, well, that wouldn't surprise me neither. Look, I'll have a shower, I'll get changed, and I'll meet you there at 8 o'clock. You can have a job on it. It's quarter to seven now. Time it takes you to get ready. I've said I'll be there. 8 o'clock on the dot, well, all right? Well, I hope so, Audrey, because I'll find it very difficult to forgive you if you're not. I tell you, if there's such a thing as reincarnation, they can bring me back as the school outfitter. More brass than running a pub any day. That is the last time I'll need anything now. Who designs these gym slips, love? Bruce Oldfield? <laughs> Sorry we're late, Jack. Have you survived without me? Just about. <sighs> Steve! the lucky lady then. Hey, come on, you're not all tarted up and out, are you? <laughs> hey, you were looking a bit friendly with Fiona. Yeah, well, that's what we are, friends. Are you sure it's nothing more than that? Yeah, well, uh, you'd only have yourself to blame if there was. Now then, Jim. Hi, Ben. Now, how shall I put this? You've got the air of a man who believes that the world's his oyster again. Yeah, well, I hope it works out that way, you know. I must say, you've gone about this breakup in a very adult way, both of you. 
I had some couples go on fighting for years afterwards. Where's the good in that? Uh, none at all. You're still a young man, Jim. Put it all behind you. Look to the future, that's what I say. Yeah, I'll bear that in mind. Oh, Johnny. <laughs> so, how long has it been, then? It's 26 years. Apart from that time when Deary took over for a bit. Many a tale to tell along the way, eh? Oof, aye. Hey, do you remember when Len had to resign after your stag night? You know, when you were marrying Remy. Drunk and disorderly, I'll never forget that. Hey, and that was all your fault, telling that young policewoman that you didn't know who he was. Get off. It was your fault for getting him drunk <laughs> in first place. I were only having a giggle. <laughs> Hello, man. All right, Colin. Sad day, Mr Roberts. Hello, oh, mate. You'll be badly missed. Oh, I think you'd chug along without me. Oh, I don't know who else has that incisive remark when others digress, the meaningful insight when others waffle. Ah, good of you to say so. Credit where it's due. Oh, and uh, is it space number four you have? Me? Eh? Your parking space at the town hall. Only where I am, it's quite a walk to the main entrance, and when it's raining... Look, I've not gone yet, you know. This party's about me leaving Weatherfield, not the council. Ah. Well, perhaps when the time comes. Mm. Wanna go? Oh, yeah, fine. Oh. <laughs> Got your sausage roll prediction right, Al. <laughs> well, it'll be turned in the oil for the next three days if I haven't. You've done a terrific job, though, Liz. It looks great. Now, if you want to book us for your silver wedding, I'm sure we can fit you in. <laughs> oh, I'll make a note of it in my diary. Remind me, will you, please, Gail? <laughs> hey, is uh, Audrey coming tonight? As far as I know, yeah. Is she not here yet? I've not seen her. Oh, she's probably late night shopping for something to wear, knowing her. Huh? Hi. Hi. Uh, Didn't expect to see you in here. Well, I just thought I'd call around for a bit, you know. But you're uh, barred from here, aren't you? Oh, that. Oh, don't worry. I just want a quick word with Les and then I'll be on my way. Al? Glad to see you. Hello. Is my man coming? Oh, oh, don't ask me, love. I'm only her husband. You've not had a row, have you? No, no, don't worry. She'll be here soon. Well, she better get a move on. Oh, tell me about it. Mr. Roberts! Oh, thank you. Hello. You did what? Look, I'll have a shower and I'll come straight over. You were saying that an hour and a half since. I would just shatter. Yeah, well, it's funny how this happened when you said you didn't want to come in there. I wouldn't be ringing now if I didn't want to come, would I? I'll get over as soon as I possibly can. Look, forget it, Audrey. It's obvious you don't want to come. And if you did come, you'd only make sarcastic remarks. <laughs> I won't. If you'd have wanted to come, you'd have been here long ago. You'd have been here by now. Look, the fact is that you've got no interest in anything that's of importance to me, so you might as well stop at home. I'll see you tomorrow. Alf? Oh, dear. Oh, well, suit yourself. That's the way you want to play it. Still no sign. She doesn't need to be here, Gail. She makes her presence felt without that. Liz, can I have a wee word, me love? What are you doing here? I need to talk to you. You're not allowed in. Oh, come on, love. Let me put these down. Well? Look, uh, I realise this is probably a bad time. Oh, understatement of the year. But I had to see you, love. People are running around saying we're being so grown up about this whole thing, so calm. I mean, I've just had bad saying how much she admires us. Will you get to the point? The point... The point is, Liz, I don't feel calm and I certainly don't feel grown up inside. I'm, I'm, I'm screaming like a child. For you, love. Oh, please don't look away from me, Liz. 
Jim, it's over. Can you not accept that? But why? Look, I'll be anything you want me to be. I'll do anything, just so long as we can be back together, Liz. You I... change. Oh, I swear, Liz, I'll change. I love you. Look, Jim, I've got a life of my own, and I'm very happy with it. No, no, you... With him, you can't be happy with him. Well, I am. And it's time you started sorting a life out for yourself without me. And the sooner the better. <laughs> room full of people, people I've known all my life. The mayor was there, the president of Warts, all manner of people. But there was just one person not there, just the one. Oh, well, we know who that was. My own wife. That's the one, yes. So there I am by myself. Have you any idea what that felt like, eh? Standing there, a room full of people with the wives, and me, the guest of honour, there by myself. Well, you never talk to me at these do's anyway. That doesn't matter, at least I know you're there, don't I? Oh, you do surprise me. I felt betrayed, that's what I felt. Well, I don't know why, because the only reason I didn't come was because you told me not to bother. Well, there was no point, was there? You were, you, you were coming back by the time you got there. You'd left it that bloody late. Not on purpose, Alf, but because I fell asleep. Uh, so you say. I do say. Look, can we leave it for pity sake? Oh. Do you know, there were even a couple of people asking me if you were poorly. Oh, dear. Well, what could I say to that, eh? Not a lot. I didn't say... I just said no, and I left them to draw their own conclusions. Which, of course, they will be doing today. There'll be a lot of people wondering what's happened between Alf Roberts and his wife. Oh, well, if they do manage to work anything out, would you please try and get someone to explain it to me? <laughs> to that, love. Audrey, we got... Oh. That's 2.30, please, love. Thank you. Enjoy yourself last night. Well, I didn't go there to enjoy myself. I went there to have a word with my wife. Morning. 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 Well, I must say, I hardly even got a chance to say hello to her. She were that busy. Oh, no, dearie, fair play to her. She found time to have a word with me, to her credit. Yes, uh, not only did she tell me to stay out of her boozer, she also told me to stay out of her life altogether, eh? Not nice. Ah, uh, uh, Nicky, happy to be back. Ah, uh, yes, I think so. Mark leaving's been a bit of a blight. Mark? What Redman? Hmm, they've got right pally now he's off to a private school. No. <laughs> Well, so I've been told. No, 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 no. I'm his form tutor, for goodness sake. I'll be the first to know. Oh, I thought Mike had arranged it oh, all. Oh, well, I know he's been talking about it, but I think you find Baldwin talks about all sorts of things that never happen. No, no, no. Mark's back at Weatherfield High. And I think I can promise you that's where he'll be staying. Oh, Nicky will be delighted. Me too. Thanks, Deirdre. Thanks, love. Oh, you didn't get this in here. No, I've just been across to the cabin. One, eh? Anybody we know? <laughs> ah, look, look, look. It says. Hip, 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 hooray, be God, I want today. Never mind that. <laughs> Who's it from? Who's reading it to him? Oh, give us it here. Ah, oh, love, Dad. It's from our Terry. See, I told you you won't forget. Look, it's from your daddy. Yeah, but the only thing you're getting off him, son. Ah, I wish it could be here, you know. I mean, look at him, kids growing up and he's not even here to see it. Yeah, I just hope his father's growing up. Hey, Tommy, look at this. It's a belter here. Are you going to be here? Hey. It's dinner time for his party. Uh, no, no, I'll, I'll be at work. Unfortunate, Vera, but there we are, oh. you see. Who's this from? Oh, I see. Right, so what are you going to do? Jump up and down on it, tear it, burn it? No, I can stay there with others. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, Vera. Happened this hope for us all, then. Look, I didn't say I could send him a card. Anybody that wants, I can do that. Even Des. Look, come on, shift out at we have this table to lay before they start arriving. Right, that one is coming. Well, not a lot, just Sally Webster and them kiddies that she looks after. Oh. Hey, and don't you start moaning about how much it's going to cost, cos I don't care. I don't want today to go by without making an occasion of Vera, it. Vera, I am going to say, now about out. Only cos you know it won't get you anywhere, but you'd like to. Mind shift. I'm off out for an hour or two. Well, before you go, what do you want me to do with this? You can do what you like with it. Don't bother me. Right. Look, if Nobby Clark's widow wants to give herself to another man, she can do it without me standing watching. You'd prefer it if she'd thrown herself on his funeral pyre. It's not like you to be sarcastic, Mrs Bishop. It isn't, no. But just occasionally, I feel that circumstances demand it. You still think I proposed to her? Yes. And she turned me down? Yes. Well, I'm doubly disappointed. 
First in her and then in you. Thank you. What? Well, do you want anything while I'm out? No, unless you happen to find anywhere where the truth is on offer. All right, I won't leave university. I'll go back, just like you want me to. So does that mean we can still see each other then or what? Oh, don't get smart, Andy. What? You think you can just say that and it makes everything all right? Well, no, actually. I think it makes everything all wrong as far as I'm concerned, but, well, no choice, have I? Look, I don't want you throwing away your future because of me. You are my future. Oh. Oh, sorry. I'm not allowed to say things like that, am I? In case I make you feel guilty about destroying this glittering career I've got in front of me. Well, aren't I? <sighs> Mr. McDonald, I don't want to crack the whip. No, it's all right. I was just asking Miss Nelson here if she was going to see me tonight, that's all. Oh, I see. And the whole of Better Buys awaits her answer. So, Miss Nelson, what's it to be? I suppose so. Ah, oh, whoopee dee. Mm -hmm. I don't suppose you're going to get some trolleys for me now, could you? Certainly, Mr. Watts. <clears throat> Listen, I know sometimes I might seem like the manager, <laughs> the man in authority, the man in a suit, but I have been through the uh, emotional minefield. Really? <clears throat> what I'm saying is, if you need any advice, uh, my door, it's always open. Thanks. Does anybody want any more of this? Oh, I think they've got enough jelly, Vera. <laughs> I think they have. Do you know, I'm that used to feeding our Jack, that's my trouble. Oh. <laughs> hey, he's gonna be a big lad, isn't he, your Tommy? Yeah. Like his dad. Oh. How is he, Terry, if you don't mind me asking? No, I don't mind at all, love. I wish a few more would. He's all right, keeping his nose clean. <laughs> In fact, I think he's open to be no, out for Christmas. Oh, that would be nice. Oh, it? the best Christmas present anybody ever oh, had. Oh, it would. Right, anyone want some more orange juice? I want some more. Hello, Vera. I hope you don't mind, but we thought we might call since it's Tommy's birthday. No, no, it's nice to see you. Well, we are his granny and granddad after all. Yeah, yeah of course you are. Come in. Well, actually, just come at the middle of his car, so... Oh, well, that's nice. Oh, look at him, Jeff. Grand, yeah. Well, I didn't want the occasion to go by without doing something. Of course you didn't. Uh, this is Sally, a neighbour of mine. <coughs> Hello. Hi, hi. This is Jeff and Doreen. You know, Tommy's grandparents on his mother's side. Oh. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, love. Very nice to meet you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> They've come all the way from Blackpool. Oh, have you? Well, it's not that far, really, love. Just a quick dash down motorway, you know. Oh. Anyway, come on, sit down. You have a cup of tea, won't you? Oh, love one, thanks. Now, Tommy, love. <laughs> is it all right, Vera, for giving this? Yeah, of course it is. Oh. Here we are, Tommy. Here Look. Are this is from me and your granddad. So, where's your Jack got to then? He is definitely going to retire to Lytham, you know. Which is going to leave me, well, I don't know, living in a cardboard box, I suppose. You wanted him to retire? Yes, I did, I do. I didn't expect to have to spend every minute of every day with him, which is what I'm going to have to do if we move. Because for one thing, we hardly know anybody else, so we're going to be stuck together. She's still mourning? She is. Would you like to spend every minute of every day with your husband? Yes. Oh, oh my, that's a downright lie, and you know it. Yes, but you wouldn't be spending every minute of every day with him, would you? I mean, you'd find your own interests. I mean, he'd do the same. No, he's determined. We are going to be walking up and down that prom, chained together. We won't be able to get away from one another. What are you not eating? No, no, I'm not hungry, but I knew you would be after working all morning, so I set you up a little table all for yourself in here. Oh, you needn't have bothered. Oh, you are gracious, Steve. Oh, you needn't. I mean, I could have gone in there. I know you could have, but I wanted you in here where I can have you all to myself. Excuse me, love. Oh, I can't stand going back to school with you mad at me. I just can't. I'm not mad at you. Yeah, well, you're not exactly pleased I'm going back to school instead of moving somewhere around well, here. Well, you might as well be pen pals for all we see of each other. I know it's not as much as you'd like, and it's not as much as I'd like, but, hey, it's only for, what, another two years? Only? Only two years? Excuse me again, loves. Well, it won't seem long, and for now we've got to make best of the time we do have together, not spend it arguing. Hey. What's going on in there, Betty, love? Did you hear her? I think she's giving him his dinner. Ah, well, just as long as he's not giving her our time back. I've caught him being right off-hand with her, you know. <laughs>
All right. All right. Just popped over for Tommy's birthday. I've left our door in at your house. Beer up the standard, is it? It is, I. I'll have a pint then. Why don't you have one with me? We'll drink to the little fella's health. Do you want another one in there, Percy? No, thank you. I'm going for a walk. You know, what folk don't understand about Mrs Bishop, she can be very unsympathetic at times. Very hard. Hard with herself and hard with others. Beth, can I have another couple in here, please? Of course you can, but I you... shouldn't, Rita. Now, you said you weren't going to bother anyone. Well, I'm trying not to. I mean, she doesn't, does she? The widow Scott. Uh, shelves are half empty. There's nobody to cover me for my dinner. Uh... Do you reckon I have a wee word? Read on the payments. OK. Right. Uh, listen, love, about uh, with what I was saying this morning about Liz giving me the elbow. Oh. I was just banging on, you know. Uh, I'm not surprised she didn't want to talk to me. There was a pub full of people then in ice team, you know, when I sit down and have a chat with her. I think we probably all would have reacted the same way, you know what I mean? Here's to him, then. Yeah. Let's hope his years ahead are better than the one he's had so far. Eh? Talking about that. We were wondering if we might not arrange a few days for him over in Blackpool. A bit of an holiday, like. Oh, you know how Vera's like, Jeff. Won't let him out of sight. No, no, I'm not explaining myself very well, Jack. Not just him. You and Vera and all. All three of you come over together. Make it a family holiday. <laughs> <laughs> I know that sometimes you might see me as the man in authority, the man in a suit. Sometimes, yeah. Well, I've been through that emotional minefield. In fact, more than once. See, what I'm saying to you is you have to feel the need to have a chat about... Carry on, Mr. Watt. Ignore me. Reg. I'm here in a private capacity. My fiance is one of your employees, so don't let me interrupt. <laughs> oh, thanks. Very nice. Um, Maureen, Mrs. Naylor. Sorry. Cooey! It's Naylor. Good. Mr. Holsworth. I'm both of these and so much more. <laughs> uh, but listen. Yes, sir. Uh, you know tonight when you're going to come round with the beef burgundy on? Shall I not, then? Um, well, I've got a regional seminar in Manchester, see, and I'll probably... Well, I'll be lucky to be home by half past ten. Oh. Is that all right? I mean, I do apologise, my sweet, but I do think it's better if we postpone the old B&B, well, to a more suitable evening. All right. All right. Are you sure I can't help you clear up? You've got enough to see to... No, <laughs> yeah. all right, then. Yeah. But thanks for coming. Oh, it's been smashing. Say bye-bye. Have you enjoyed Come it? You Have you enjoyed your party? Well, thank you. Bye. Yeah, you got your blue. Yeah, you Come on, then. Can you get... Oh, oh, oh. Thanks, Vera. Bye. 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 Oh, 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 is it yeah, finished? Has it all finished? Here we are, kids. Damn that well, didn't they, but it's all over. Hey, Dory, nice to see you, love. Nice to see you, Jack. <laughs> so, where's the birthday boy got to then, eh? Uh, it's flat out, that's where he is. So, keep your voice down, please. Oh, sorry, love. Right, uh, have you got any grub, V? Yeah, we've got roast, we've got blancmange, we've got stewed apple. <laughs> no, 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 and I mean real grub. No, we haven't. We've no drinking either. Mind you, you look as if you've had enough. I think they both have. I think we've been got at here, Jeff. Where's our Tommy? I wanted to witness this, see what I'll have to put up with. He's fast asleep upstairs, so keep it quiet. <sighs> have you uh, said out about Blackpool? I will wait until you've got back. No, no, I, I'll, I'll tell her. You see, Doreen and Jeff would like us to take Tommy to, to Blackpool for a couple of days. That means all three of you to come. What it is? My sister has this boarding house. It's really nice. Just round the corner from us. And we thought you could stay there. And it wouldn't cost you a penny, love. <laughs> Not one penny piece. And it would give you a break. And it would give us a chance to see a bit more of Tommy than we've been able to. Yeah, well, that's... Uh, what have you said? Well, uh, I was going to leave it to you, love. I mean, I think it's nice. I think it's very nice, uh. Yeah, well, it sounds nice to me and all. I was wrong. Wrong? What I said about Mark Redmond staying with us and not going to a private school. He starts there on Monday, only nobody got round to telling him. I mean, just what does that husband of yours think he's doing? He takes this lad out of a perfectly good school, nothing special, perfectly good local school, where he's settled in, he has all his friends, and he sticks him in this establishment that he knows nothing about. I mean, it could be a den of vice for all he knows. 
it probably isn't. What it probably is is a rather shoddy, second-rate outfit trading on people's snobbery. Why? I don't know. No. Forget it. It's not your fault anyway. Well, I'm sorry I did it wrong. And I'm sorry that Nicky's lost a pal. Yeah, so am I. Bye. Do you know, the awful thing is, Gail, I agree with everything he just said. <sighs> I was beginning to wonder where you'd got to. Well, I got as far as the reservoir. They're having some sort of a regatta or something like that up there, you know, yachts and all sorts of things. Oh, you'd be ready for your tea, then. You know, it hurt me what you said, Mrs Bishop, about me only being opposed to always ready because she turned me down. It wasn't my intention. No, but she did turn me down. Yes, you were right about that. I thought I was. And I'll tell you something, I'm glad she did. Glad? Yes, because I was proposing to her for the wrong reasons, and she could see that. Oh. See, Nobby and me were mates. If we'd have gone on a day's march in the desert, and he'd have fallen under the weight of his pack, then I'd have felt it my duty to take up that pack and carry it on his behalf. And Nobby had fallen, and Olive was his pack? Hit the nail on the head. I was afraid I had. And the proposal was just misplaced loyalty. It's a good thing the pack turned you down then, wasn't it? Yes, it is, yeah. So now how do you feel about her marrying this Edwin Turner? Well, I'm against it. Of course I am. So you still won't be wanting to go to the wedding? No, no, I think we should go. Somebody's got to try and make a see sense. Is this what happened last night then? What? You sat in that chair and fell asleep. Yes, yes it was. Yeah, well that's all right for you, you see, because you're working, but I'm not. I've retired now, so now if I want to go out for a drink at night, I can't go, can I? Because my wife's falling asleep. Right, right. No, I am not going to sleep. We are going out. But why couldn't you have had this attitude last night? Because <sighs> I didn't have you here tormenting me last night, did I? Right, now, I'm awake, so I'm going to have a bath. And then we'll be able to go out together. Ooh. Right. Come in, and uh, make yourself comfortable. This your bachelor pad, is it? It is indeed, yes, but fear not. Tonight is my night off. I could have told you that. <clears throat> right, um, would you care for a drink at all, Danny? Oh, uh, I'll have a lager. Lager, right. Listen, what about the estate agent's advice? Hmm? That I put it up for auction. No, it's ridiculous advice, is that, Debbie? Why? They said it was that simple. Yes, well, it might be, but, <clears throat> I mean, it just isn't what I have to say, because I think I might have the uh, perfect solution. Oh, and what's that? Well, just let me organise the refreshments, Debbie. I think I can promise you the uh, wait will be well worthwhile. Thanks, love. It's a free round. Yeah? I mean, they can't do what if we're there with them, Fair can enough. they? Fair enough. They're not going to try. They're not terrorists. They're just two ordinary folk that want to see a bit more of their grandson. I could understand that. And we're not actually staying with them, are we? No, we're stopping in a boarding house. Yeah, with her sister. Luke, Vera, we're getting holiday. When was the last time we had one of them? When do you reckon we'll be able to afford another one? Eh? We are getting holiday and it's costing us nout. Great. Yeah, but we'll still have to be careful, though. Good. Ah. Hi. Uh, welcome, Tony. Lovely. Right, Laurie. Well, we don't see much of you in here nowadays, Vera. Well, I'm always looking after Tommy, aren't I? Anyway, Ivy's got him for an hour. Isn't it his birthday today? Yeah. Hey, fancy you remembering that? Oh, well, I uh, haven't bought him anything, so let me get you another one of them instead. Oh, Tom. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Oh. How's things with you, Cop? All right, yeah. No, it just occurred to me. You know, when you said it was Tommy's birthday, same day that Ted died, was it? Yeah. Only I've shed enough tears for today, so right now I'd just like us all to call it Tommy's birthday. Let's all have a good drink. Yeah, of course we will. Ah, oh, cheers, love. I didn't know actually. Hey, 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 hey. Oh, look, just tell Jack what you want, because I'm getting him in, because we're celebrating Tommy's birthday. Oh, oh 
wish that having birthed us all, right. Oh, Here's right. that, love, yeah? Oh, all right, thank you. Well, a pint of bitch and a gin and tonic, then. Right. So, how's retirement suiting, then? Well, I prefer it if my wife is retired alongside me. Oh, dear. Have I said the wrong thing? No, I was just telling her. When you get to our age, you've got a duty to retire, because otherwise, what is there for young ones coming up? Like little Tommy. Well, I was thinking older than him, right? Well, there, Tommy's never going to want to work in a dress shop. Hey, better not. <laughs> no, no, I'm talking general principles. I mean, if those old beggars don't get out of the way, the young ones will have no chance. But that's their look out. Let them go and walk up and down Lytham Promenade all day. See how they like it. <laughs> <laughs> so what will your parents say? Well, I don't even think they'd notice right now. Oh, I'm sorry, but I think they would. The son not going back to university, and why? Because <laughs> of this woman he's met. Come on. I don't care. I don't care what they say. But I do, because I'm going to come out the villa and all this. So? Oh, thanks. Look, I can't force you to live with me. Or marry me. I could just keep telling you that that's what I want. Marry you? Is that a proposal? Yeah. <sighs> you might have given me a bit of warning it was coming. Well, I didn't actually know myself. Hey. Hi. What? What do you mean, what? I mean, what do you want? Well, just passing by. I thought I'd offer my brother and his girlfriend a drink. There's no crime in that, is it? No, it's... Uh, we don't want one at the moment, Steve. By myself, wonder. But don't worry, you can still have the pleasure of my company. Uh, pipe, please, Beck. It's probably none of my business, but I thought you were supposed to be going out with Vicky tonight. Yeah, so did I. Uh, yeah, sure. Well, um, I wasn't expecting you to be ready yet, you see. She looks ready enough to me, son. Right, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll come through. Um, sorry, folks, I'll have to be another time. Yeah, well, just don't make it too soon, eh? See, for me, all this is dead easy. Yeah. It's not about what people think or my future or trying to do what's best. So what is it about? It's just... I love you. And all I want to do is be with you. Yes. I have got to close the boot, you see, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Smells good. Oh, it's my beef bourguignon. <laughs> I make it for Reg, you see. Oh, lucky Reg. No, no, well, I mean, we were supposed to eat it together, but she had to cancel because of work, you know, and getting home late. So I thought, listen, I thought, how nice to surprise him. You know, put it on the kitchen table, a little note. <laughs> but you think I'm really silly, don't you? No, no, I think it's wonderful that you're going to all this trouble. Well, it's worth it, you know, Curly, really. <laughs> yeah, one casserole. <laughs> Ooh, the ducks will be all right today. <laughs> I mean, it's a terrible time to sell a business, isn't it? Mm. Everything's against you. Yeah, so you said. Yeah, I mean, I know you want a quick sale. Of course mm. you do. Can't even grieve properly when that shop's got Brennan's name splashed across it. So what I thought was, I thought, well, I could buy it. You? Yeah. I mean, I do have a certain experience in the uh, grocery trade. <laughs> <laughs> How much are you offering? Well, I mean, I could quibble and try and beat you down, couldn't I? But no. No, I am prepared to offer you a full 48,000. 48? Yeah. When Brendan paid 68. <laughs> Didn't think I knew that, did you? No, no, what Brendan bought was a long-established business. Yeah, you've given me all that. And, I mean, who's to say he didn't pay more than he should? I don't well, care. 48's not enough. <sighs> you think I'm trying to take advantage of you? Is that it? <laughs> I think you're trying to. No, no, no. Nobody's trying to take advantage of anybody. It's what we both want. And afterwards, I think I can promise you, you'll have no regrets. Hmm? <laughs> she won't. Well, but yeah. I have. Well, I, 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 you couldn't see me tonight because of work? No. Oh, we know not what kind of work, don't we? No, Maureen, listen, it wasn't... No, no. I'll never listen to you again. Because you're a cheat and a liar. And I'm just grateful I found out in time. You... Oh. No, Maureen, yeah, yeah, yeah. now you've got it all wrong, Maureen. Maureen! Oh, dear. You are flooding the engine. Right. 
Well, it beats me, Reg. I mean, it could be the battery. Mm. But on the other hand, it could be your electrics. No, ah, well, it's a wrath of God, that's what it is. If somebody up there doesn't like me, do they? First of all, this, and now the car won't start. Or it could be the fuel pump. <sighs> And then, of course, there was Maureen's sudden and unexpected visit the other night, just as I was concluding intimate negotiations with the widow Scott. Hey, what do you mean, intimate negotiations? As a matter of fact, I was moments away from securing a very, very reasonable purchase price, vis-a-vis -vis one vacant corner shop, feathering the old matrimonial nest. I mean, Mrs Scott's other assets, it couldn't have been further from me, Michael. <laughs> I'll bet. Oh, you do have a mucky mind, you Norman, don't you? Unfortunately, so has Maureen which is why she wrongly assumed that Deborah and I were in for granted delecto, if you catch me drift. Anyway, can you get this going or what? In a word, no. Oh. You'll have to get a mechanic to look at it. And if I don't get a move on, I'll have an army of irate pensioners banging on my door, baying for the custard creams. Well, thank you for nothing again, Norman. Hey. Yes. Does this mean it's all off, then, with you and Maureen? No, it is... No, it does not mean it is all off. Once Maureen has realised how his she has been and sees that she's not only getting her husband to a thriving business, I'll leave you to draw your own conclusions, eh? Hey, Jimmy! Have you got a minute? Well, Jimmy! Come here! How are you doing, Roger? How are you doing, Harry? Just have a look at this, will you? Oh, about time and all. I've called you about five times. Well, I'm up now, so don't go on. It'll be Maggie Redman who's going on when you're late. It won't be late. Oh, where were you last night? It was gone one o'clock when I heard the door go. Out. Where's the cornflakes? You finished them yesterday. Out where? Will you stop treating me like a little kid? Oh, that's rich, that is. If I didn't treat you like a kid, you wouldn't get out of bed in the morning. And don't look at me like that, lady. Now, think of the times I cook for you and clean for well, you. Well, no-one's making you. Oh, so you'd do it all yourself, would you? Well, while you're at it, you might as well pay the phone bill. I might have known you'd bring that up. Well, it wants paying, Tracy. I mean, you might think it's a toy. If it's more money you're after, then why don't you just say so? How much do you want? Thirty pounds? Forty pounds? Why don't I just give you all my wages? Then I won't be able to stop out late. I can just sit at home every night like you. All I want is for you to show a little consideration. I'm going to be out of a job any day now. And I don't know when or if I'm going to get another one. And every day there's more bills coming through that door. Bills that you've run up and I have to pay. And I can't do it, Trace. I just can't do it. Oh, I'm going to work. Nervous? A bit. Well, don't be. You're as good as any of that lot in there. Better, in fact, right? Good lad. Dad. Come on, you look great. Go on, you'll be late. Ma. Here. For the tuck shot. Thanks. Two minutes QED. Right, now, if you could just direct me to whichever section Mrs Nell is working in. She isn't. Hey? Neither is Ivy Brennan or Sandra Downey. Why else do you think I've stood here with a price gun in my hand? Oh, she's not turned in, has she? No, oh, gastric flu. Or was it migraine? Oh, she... No, no, she was gastric flu, because every time I asked her what the symptoms were, she burst into tears. Mm. I'll, um... Oh, bye. I thought I'd finally got through to you, and now you're giving me the cold shoulder again. It's not a question of getting through to me, Andy. Well, what is it a question of? Come on, Amy. What dinner you on? One o'clock. Swap with someone. I'm eating the canteen at 12. Hello. Ah, oh, Maureen. You want shooting, you do. And if I couldn't move out of this chair, I'd come down there and do it myself. Ah, oh, Maud, um, has Maureen told you about our little misunderstanding, has she? You and Blondie, you mean? She told me all right. I bet it's not the first time, either. So God only knows what they see in you. No, I can assure you that Mrs Scott is a business associate, Mum. All the other one. I'll just bring her, uh, Maureen, would you please? Thank you. She doesn't want to speak to you. You've made her poorly. She says she never wants to see you again. Yes, well, I'd sooner hear that from her, if you don't mind. I did... for daft. I said she doesn't want to speak to you. So don't phone again. Me Maud? Ma right. Mother, <laughs> 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 you all right? I think 
so. Look, um, do you want a tablet? I'll be all right. Oh. It's seeing you upset that does it. Look, why don't I pour you a nice cup of tea? And I've brought some chocolate rolls through. Tarpet. Oh. Did I hear the phone go just now? The wrong number. We should have it taken out. It's more trouble than it's worth. I just thought it might be Reg. I mean, he's bound to know I'm not at work by now. You'd think he'd just ring and try and explain himself. He'll be out gallivanting with his fancy piece. I always told you you shouldn't trust him. What if I'm jumping to conclusions? Well, you saw him with your own eyes. I know, but there might be a perfectly simple explanation. Why give you all this away about going to Manchester? Why lie? Oh. You're too gullible, Maureen. That's your problem. It was the same with that husband of yours. And the debt collector, that Spaniard. He led you a right and merry dance. Now, now, now. Haven't we had enough waterworks for one day? Yeah. At least you found out before it's too late. That's the main thing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> he never even mentioned it. Yeah, all right, I'll do that. Mm. Mm, Ta-da. You know, some people are never happy. Mm? That was the solicitor. He reckons the bio is not satisfied with the survey, so I've got to stop in all day till he rings back. I don't know, I think he's just being a bit pedantic. Do you know, I'm not sure about this red geranium. I think it looks a bit tarter. I think I prefer the blushing pink. What do you think? I'll tell you what I think. I think you better get your skates on if you're going. Oh, no, there's no rush. No rush? It's half past ten already. Bye. I wouldn't have lasted 13 years with your attitude, you know. Every morning, 8 o'clock, on the dot, that shop was open. Rain, fine or hail? Yes. Well, this is Camilla Fashions, not a little corner shop. We serve a very select clientele. Ladies of leisure. Most of them aren't even up yet. Oh, I bet they love you, then. No. By the time they've uh, put their face on, had their morning coffee, it's noon before they even think about going shopping. Anyway, the manageress is at a knitwear launch at Preston, so she won't be back till after lunch. She has entrusted moi with the keys. No, do you know, I definitely prefer blushing pink. Come on, come on. <sighs> no joy, then? No, no, as a matter of fact. Oh, well, she'll just have to go wooing after work tonight, won't I? Yeah. Floral bouquet in one hand, methodic champagne wine in the other. It's in the chocolate liqueurs for Wicked Witch at West. Right, I'm off over to Heckman Wine. Heckman Wine? Right. What are you going there for? Er, uh, it's just a routine visit now. Just... Uh, Mr. Watts, hmm? is it all right if I go on an early dinner? Sam said he didn't mind smoking. Yeah, yeah, OK. Hey, Andy, hmm? you didn't by any chance read the company newsletter this month, did you? Er, uh, nope. Oh, must be my imagination. But I'm sure the Heckman White branch was closed down months ago. You should have seen him in his uniform. He looked absolutely terrific. Oh, do you know, I just can't wait. But not right now, Mike, because some of us lesser mortals have a crumb to earn. Gail, is that bait and bottle Two ready? seconds! In good company, too. Judging by the cars, the parents were driving. Not going to be easy for him, Mike. Going to miss his mates. So? He makes new ones. Anyway, it's his education I'm concerned with. About time we had some decent teachers to start. Weatherfield comp is a pretty good job, considering. Oh, come on, you whip your nicky out there like a shot if you had a choice. Maybe, maybe not. Anyway, we don't have a choice. <laughs> not my problem. No tin salmon? Sorry, Percy, we sold the last one yesterday. No corned beef? No. No digestive biscuits? No. What about oxtail soup? Oh, I think there's a small one left in the bottom shelf in the far corner. Right. Get her here to me, Mrs. Barlow. I've got uh, an appointment with Mrs. Scott in a few minutes. Right, I uh, just ought to take a quick inventory of the stock. I beg your pardon. <laughs> oh, hasn't she told you? I'm, uh, I'm the next proprietor. No, she has not. Uh, well, I should say actually prospective proprietor because I still have to uh, dot the I's and cross the T's. This is Mulligatawney. Hmm? Mrs. Bishop can't abide Mulligatawney. I'm sorry, Percy. What we've got is what you see. 
It's like one of these shops in Communist Russia, is this? Yes, but not for much longer, Mr. Sugden, because once the name Holdsworth is emblazoned across the doorway, and my wide and varied experience brought to bear upon this humble establishment. Well, there's certainly room for improvement. Mm. It's a downright disgrace. These little shops are the lifeline to the elderly. Hiya, Deirdre. Coping all right, are you? Oh, yes, it's easy, this. All I have to do is stand here and say, sorry, love, we haven't got any. Yeah, well, it won't be for much longer. Morning, Deborah. I do hope you'll accept my apology for the little fracas the other evening. <laughs> Don't mention it. Right. Now, if we could just bring uh, negotiations to a swift conclusion. I believe we had agreed a figure in the region of um, 40,000. <laughs> we agreed nothing of the sort. Really, Reg, you're even more stupid than Brendan said you were. Trying to take advantage of a widow. Take advantage? I made a very generous offer, though. Uh, yeah, well, my estate agent happens to think otherwise. Oh, well, I've decided to put the place up for auction. I see. Yeah, my solicitor says it's the best way to avoid being ripped off by wily opportunists. I think those are the words he used. Um, uh, uh, 45. I've got to 45. Uh, there'll be somebody along tomorrow to fix the sign up. All right, 50,000. And I'm only doing this out of respect for Brandon. You know? And in the meantime, the place remains my property. So you, out. Hey, this is boarding on breach of contract, is this? You know, we had a tacit understanding. I said out. Right, right. You're making a big mistake here, you know, Debbie. Come on, contents of your mind, please. Empty. When you said we should get married, were you being serious? Yeah, of course I was. Do it tomorrow if you want. Oh, Andy. It's all just completely straightforward to you, isn't it? Yeah. And to hell with the consequences. What consequences? We're two people that love each other. It's hardly going to spark off World War Three, is it? This isn't a fairy story, Andy. It's real life. It's complicated. I've got a child, for one thing. Yeah, I know. I've met him. Lovely little thing. Needs a dad, though. And there's the question of your parents. Well, they're hardly going to jump for joy, are they, when they find out that the wonderful son's chucking in university to shack up with a black checkout girl with a kid? Mm, not when you put it like that, no. But if, on the other hand, they find out that the son's been singled out for a top-flight career in retail management... You are? Well, then they might like the idea that he's found Miss Wright and decided to settle down. <sighs> Andy, what are you talking about? Let's just say I've got a couple of things I need to sort out before I break the news about us to my mum and dad. So you've lost a shilling and found a penny, if you don't mind me saying so, son. <laughs> if only the stakes were that low. Yeah. All right, Reg. Mm -hmm. oh, no. How was Heckman Dwight? What? Heckman Dwight. Oh, very quiet, Mum. Oh, yeah. I thought it might be. Mm. Did uh, head office ring you while you were there? No, why should they have? Well, they were very anxious to get hold of you early on. The personnel director himself rang up. Oh, Phil Badcock? Well, did he say what he wanted? Well, he's not going to divulge the details to me, is he, eh? A medial store manager. That's why he wants you there, ASAP, so he can run it by you, you know, senior executive to senior executive. I mean, look at the state of my suit now. I knew I should have had that dry clean. Right, look, I'll just nip across the road and get ready, all right? I'd get a move on if I were you. It's what? been a while since he rang. Was it? Don't worry about the pint, I'll drink that. Oh, cheers. Right. Uh, I don't know why he's worried about his suit. He needs combat gear where he's going. Oh, I... Well, Phil Badcock, he didn't give anything away, but his secretary did. Apparently, they want Resh to stand in as a manager at one of our branches next week. Is that all? You wouldn't say that if you saw it. It's known throughout the Better Buy Empire as the Beirut branch. Oh, rough, is it? Huh? Rough? They've got bulletproof glass round the cheese counter. And the reason they need a, a stand-in is because the last manager, he was savaged by a Japanese towser off one of the estates. Oh. Yes, love? I'm looking for Mrs Gilroy. Aye. You found her. Tanya Pooley. I've come to make your day. How's that, love? Well, I hear on the grapevine you're looking for an experienced bar person of the highest calibre. Well, might be why. You've just found one. Oh, oh, oh sorry, <laughs> Deirdre. Oh, I just wanted some sugar. Oh, we sold out of that days ago. In fact, there's not much left we have got. Oh, 
Marcy. Which is why I'm closing up for the afternoon. Debbie Scott obviously doesn't give two hoots about the place, so I fail to see why I should. I'm off job hunting. Mrs Scott's definitely closing the place, is she then? It's being auctioned Friday week. Then, who knows what will become of it. It's doubtful whether it'll remain a corner shop. It could end up as a, a kebab shop or a pizza parlour. Oh, dear, I do hope not. Oh, Emily, if I thought the new owners were going to offer me a job, I wouldn't care if they turned it into a massage parlour. Come on, Deirdre. Surely you feel a little more nostalgia for the place than that. Nostalgia is a luxury I can ill afford at the moment, Emily. Deirdre, I'm sorry to hear that. I mean, if there's anything I can do to help... Thanks, love. But I'm a big girl now. Anyway, can't Tracy help out more now she's earning? Somehow, I doubt that. Oh, bye. Bye, love. The party wall's got nothing to do with me. Well, look on the plans. No, I don't think I should drop the price. Oh, well, suit yourself. Isn't it flipping marvellous? They're only pulled out. Who are? The flipping people who are buying this place. Mm. Well, it's their loss. Anyway, what are you doing back at this time? It's only just gone three o'clock. Yeah, well, uh, it was very quiet, so the manager has said I might as well get off home. Well, you're going at 11. You're back at three. No doubt you took an hour off for your lunch. I wonder why you bother going in there at all. That's what she said. Maths. What do you do in maths? It were just sets. Sets of what? You know, sets, bend diagrams, intersections, stuff like that. It were easy. Well, it would be easy first day there. You wait, you settle in. Hey, Mark, have you seen this? Seen what? Well, it's a list of sports gear he has to have. Uh, one rugby strip, brackets home, one rugby strip, brackets away. Yeah, I should have got that for him weeks ago, but with him getting to the school late. Mm. What was your next lesson, then? Computer studies. <laughs> oh, computer studies, eh? I bet you didn't do that at Weatherfield Comp. Yes, we did. And the computer at Weatherfield was better than one we're using today. It had bigger hard drive. Is it all right if I go off with now? Uh, yeah, go on, off with Oh, yeah. One cricket sweater, long sleeve. One cricket sweater, sleeveless. Both embossed with a school coat of arms. All the above are available exclusively from Hatfield and Booth. Hey, isn't that that shop in Mars Street where all the assistants wear tailcoats? Yeah. You know, I bet he enjoyed it more than his letting on. You know how shy he is. Hey, you know, this is going to cost you a small fortune. Well, he's going to have all the gear, isn't he? They'll be saying he has to have a suit of armour next for the inter-school jousting competition. Well, if they did, I'd buy it for him. Now, come on, when are you going to lock up? I can murder a drink. What have you got that out for? I'm just looking at it. That's all I will do now, won't I? Look at it. Well, strangle him with it. Mind you, it'll be a different matter when he comes crawling back. No, we because won't. he will, you know. Just you wait and see. Once he gets bored with his floozy, he'll be on that doorstep, big gormless grin on him, bunch of flowers, and he'll have you wrapped round his little finger. No, won't. Not this time. I hate him. <laughs> I mean, obviously, I can't reveal the precise nature of the mission, Norman. It's all very hush-hush. But suffice to say, comparisons with Red Adair were being uh, abounding in the old executive bar afterwards. Yeah, I'm sure they were. Do you want another one in there? Uh, no, 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 no. Troubleshooting the mission now. The old personal account is on the agenda. Hence the flowers and uh, jelly babies for Maud. Not really what I was planning. You're not exactly spoiled for choice on the M62, are you? Mm. Not really. No, sir. Tracy. I'm in the kitchen. <sighs> Kitchen. I'll be through in a minute. I've just got to keep an eye on the grill. What's all this in, Adolf? Making the tea, that's all. Beef, burger and beans. Then we're going to have a summit meeting. A what? You and me. We're going to sit down and work out how much I should be paying to as the bills and that. And I'm sorry about this morning as well. Oh, it's all right, love. I'm not exactly super mum myself at the moment. Oh, there you go. Tracy, the grill pan. Oh. Here he comes. Look at him, brazen as you like. I've been 
been trying to call you all day, but you wouldn't let me talk to you. Don't let him in, Maureen. No, I, I would have come round earlier, you see, but I was called away to the head office. Another regional seminar? Tell him if he comes here again, he'll have me to answer to. Look, Maureen, there's a perfect, simple explanation what happened the other night, you know. You lied to me, Reg. Yes, but it was a white lie. I was trying to surprise you, that. You did that all right. Look, why don't our dad just come in and we can talk this whole thing through, eh? Look, I've got you some flowers. And these, give them. You, and, you, know, you think that's all that takes? Give them to Blondie. It's, it's her that's done this, isn't it? Eh? She's turned you against me. I don't trust you anymore, Reg. I can't marry a man I don't trust. Oh, Maureen, what are you saying? The wedding's off. Off? Maureen! I can't talk anymore, Reg, but... Oh. Go on, sling your up. Or I'll come out there with a bucket of cold water. On your way, you heard the pool. See you like that. See you, Andy. You know, I worry about you sometimes, I really do. Uh, Curly, I need a straight answer on this one, mate. Is there any chance of any permanent work at Better Boys? Stretching your plans a bit, aren't you? <laughs> You've still got two years left at Sheffield. Mind you, knowing Better Boys head office, it'll take that time before they get the CV. Yeah, well, I mean now. I'm not going back. You must be mad. You've got two years left of being a student. All right, Curly, I wasn't planning on a lecture. I just need an answer, yes or no. Well, I can ask. You must have your reasons. I have. And the good ones. I'm off to work, Alfie. I don't want to be late, so I'll grab a cab at the main road. Don't do that, love. Oh! I'll drop you off. Well, where did you come from? I left you in bed. Ah, well, I got dressed when you were pegging the washing out. Old army trick, that, you know. Uh -huh. <laughs> no, I thought I'd nip in and see Harry Figgis, a man who can. Well, you can't. You've not been up two minutes. Why not? I'm clean and paid for. <laughs> no, I thought I'd ask Harry what he thought about selling this place for us instead of that shower we've got it on the market with at the moment. I don't trust them, you know. No, you've not eaten, love. It's no bother to grab a cab, honestly. No, it's no bother. Anyway, it costs £3.40 for a cab from here. Ah, there you go. I mean, lining's torn. I thought I'd drop that in the car. Anyway, Harry's office is just around the corner from that little Greek cafe. Oh, but I see. You can spend a fiver in a cafe, but I can't get a cab to work. Yeah, well, I'm going in your direction. No, I haven't time to wait off, honestly. Look, I'm ready now. No, you haven't shaved properly, love. Hey? Bye. Never mind me watches. Fast. If you're skiving off school, you're not skiving off round here. Well, Mr. Pack a lie sang around a smelly cafe all day. But you can't blame them, can you? I'd invent an excuse to get out of the Weatherfield comp. Toe rags, a lot of them. You better be joking. And if you think truancy doesn't exist in private schools, you better go down and count the Oak Hill Blazers round the Arndale about now. Rubbish, I've just dropped Mark off. I tell you, four star that place. When they pull in to drop off the kids at car parks like a showroom. Oh, you hung around that long, did you? Yeah, I wanted to see him go in. Yeah, you have to, don't you? You do if you spent that kind of money, yeah? I'd want to take the front gates with me. <laughs> okay, now, the maintenance contract yours. on the equipment expired last month. I mean, this month they wanted a 25% increase. Right, well, I'm going to be all over the place today. If you want me, I'll be on the mobile. Oh, I am sorry, Alma. 25%? Oh, that is extortionate. So? Don't pay it. We well, have to. I mean, what if one of the machines break down? I mean, the call-out fee is 70 quid. You know, I never know if you want serious advice when you're in this mood. You only had to nod sympathetically. Thank you. Right, see you later then. Hello, Alan. Hi, Mum. Hi, Mum. Not working today? Not till this afternoon, no. Is that coffee fresh? I never think about work till I get there. Mm. Mm. Well, it's different for me, Betty, because mine's all driving round and snap decisions. You don't know where you are half the time. Actually, love, mm. you don't look so good. 
Yeah, well, a week from now you'll be making snap decisions in Paris. Paris? On your honeymoon. Whether it'll be sparkling wine or the real thing. Paris, uh, ooh la la. Do you know what? I feel that sick. I could scream. Oh, I'm sorry, Maureen. I didn't know. No, and we're trying to play it now, so I'll keep it to yourself. Maureen feels bad enough as it is. I had a mate who got home early from a hen night to find the groom upstairs with a sister. Amy? I've just said Maureen feels bad enough already. It's all right, Amy. I'm not that upset. I mean, I don't know why I'm pretending to be so surprised. I've had letdowns before. Look, love. If there's all I can do, I mean, you book the church, you book the reception. It's not a pleasant job, you know. My mother wants to do all that. I mean, I'll ring the vicar personally. When I can think how to tell him without swearing. I'll see you downstairs, yeah. Mary. You know what gets me, Ivy? You know what sets me in wonder? I mean, do I, do I attract this kind of man? You know, because the last one, well, he, he was cast in pretty much the same mould. <laughs> No, I don't think you can blame yourself for men's weaknesses, love. Do I just make them into that? You know, subconsciously. Do I just breed pigs? <sighs> Curly said he'd ring head office, see what the score is. I mean, having done a year at Sheffield proves I'm fit for management training, doesn't it? You move fast enough with an idea, don't you? Yeah, well, management or not, he reckon he'll be able to sort me out here. Shop floor line. Well, I found the Housing Association and they said we'd take priority with having a child. But we'd still need at least £200 deposit. What are you laughing at? Having a child. It just sounds weird, that's all. How weird? Oh, nice weird. It's going to sound even weirder when you decide to tell your mum and dad. That to come. Well, that'll keep it warm, whether it'll keep it on the plate to risk. Nice Two eighty, Jim. Why don't you sit down, Jim? You'll give yourself an ulcer and it doesn't cost any extra, you know. Ah, well, it better not, you know. Uh... I put the on the crowd, you know what I mean? Oh, well, that would cost you even more, then, wouldn't it? And he's currently facing major financial outgoings, so I'd uh, check my wage package if I were you. Oh, thanks, Alma, but I always do, Louis. <laughs> Cheerio now, girls. See you. Bye. Bye, Jim. Well, do you know, I wouldn't like to put kids through school these days. What it costs. Costs me, no. I'm happy. No, I mean a proper school. Oh, you mean glossy brooches and BMWs parked outside? Yes. Well, Oak Hill's going to set you back a bit, Alma, isn't it? I don't know. Haven't you asked? You have asked. I haven't been told. You have asked, Alma. I haven't been told. Oh, well, aren't you curious? It's your money as well. Well, of course I am, but I haven't been told. Then give him a ring and find out. Go on. Nay, nay, don't be doing that, love. You'll be spoiling your frock. Hey, hey, hey! And what's this, then? A tent? Oh, give over, Betty. I've only got one pair of hands, you know. Listen, look, you tell me later how many hands you've counted. He's up. OK, look. Oh, right. Ah, love. Well, I've seen better stock car boots. <laughs> Think yourself lucky you found a jar of coffee. I couldn't this morning. Oh, Beardry. Debbie. Rita, this is uh, Mrs. Scott, Brendan's oh, widow. Oh. Uh, Rita runs the news agents across the road. Oh, oh, I've got some mail for you. Well, for Brendan, anyway. Oh, I'm sorry about Mr. Scott. I mean, I hardly got to know him, you know, but... <laughs> yeah, well, I could say the same myself. I mean, between here and Better Buys, he did that many shifts and overtime that, well, I ended up with a tired old man. Hardly seems fair to me. I know. I'm a widow myself, so I do know. There you go. You know, probably old bills. Yeah. Oh, well, the auctioneer wants to come and fix a sign up this aft. I thought I'd better warn you. No problem. It's hardly likely to interfere with customers, <laughs> is it? Have you, have you got some money for oh, me? Oh, yes. I uh, didn't know if you wanted me to take my wages out. Uh, no, I I'll make certain you get your cheque before the shop's emptied. Oh, a mate of Brendan's might be coming to look at the till. He's interested in buying it. Yes. Well, uh, give us a ring if all crops up. Bye. 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 Well, I hope this doesn't sound rude, but she strikes me as somebody who's lost her car keys, not husband. Mm -hmm. What are you planning on doing for a job? Hey, planning don't come into it, Rita. If you offered me a paper round right now, I'd snatch your hand off. Hey, come <laughs> on. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, surely you'll stand a good chance with the new owners. Well, I will if it stays as a shop. Oh, God. I can't believe I've got to this age and that's my only option, shop assistant. Hey, now, come on, dear, you're just beating yourself up. 
Look, you've been a lot more than a shop assistant, and well, you know it. Look, it's working in here that's going you down. Why don't you boot yourself a long lunch, and I'll buy you a drink. Oh, thanks, Rita. I might just do that. You're going to be all right for money? Yeah. Me and Tracy are sorting it out between us. If nothing else, it's made her realise how much stuff costs, other than jeans and trainers and that. Well, don't go show up, will you? No. Honestly, love, we're fine. Look, why don't you shut shop now and come for a coffee? I can't, Rita. Like Percy says, people will still be relying on me for the bits I've got left. Oh, take the notice of Percy. He says that about me when I run out of stamps. <laughs> oh. Oh, they're all right round here, you know, once you get used to them. Ah, but not if you're trying to compare them to the punters round the Queen's. On this side of Weatherfield, you see, we get treated against primates like Jacko at birth. <coughs> it makes us slightly slower, but gives us a brilliant sense of humour, doesn't it, Jacko? Ha, ha. You see? Open them doors, Jack. Let the cattle in. All right, love. Well. Hey, I really like Bet. She's just not what I've been led to expect. Mm, she can't take some getting used to. There we are. Thank you. Your receipt. Maureen. Oh. Um, please, Maureen. Read it when you've got a minute. Please. You read it. Things will mean about as much to her as it does to me. No, Nothing. Uh, excuse me, Master. Thank you. Darling. That's it. Well, did I hear right hey? what she said earlier? Yeah, but I, I think you were just a passing. Uh... Yes, love. Maureen. This is Naylor. Listen, I don't want to get mixed up in all no, this. No, well, neither would I. I think you've just misunderstood. Have I? Have I misunderstood? He's the one that is seeing other women and telling me lies and not a fortnight before we're supposed to be getting married. Can you keep your voice down? No, I won't. And if it were up to me, I'd stick an advert in the newspaper. Rich Holdsworth, area manager of Better Buys Limited, is a pig! And another one. More's a pity Maureen Naylor didn't listen to her mother. Look, just hear him out, eh? Give him a chance to explain. Oh, yes, you stick together like fleas, don't you? You want to keep your nose clean with that creep so you can come and do his dirty work. Well, I'm telling you now, you can save your breath and you can stick your job where he can stick his wedding. Right, Mr Watts? <laughs> Hi, girl. How's it going? Oh, fine. <laughs> Another coffee, Mum. Show business, you. Hey, don't be saying it like that. Them as usual flash it about. Can't sing for toffee, you see. You're a real artist. He, he doesn't tell you his life story, he sings it. Oh, aye. And who said that? There's a Connor. Ellie Gilroy, 1991, Bet Sex, was a theatrical agent. You know, now, he knew a good singer when he heard one. Mm -hmm. uh, Come on, then, Mr. Palladium. Show us your voice. Not in here, you feel a bit daft. Oh, I can't be that experienced then, can you? Fly me to the moon. Jack, help Betty get some glasses in. All right. You know, if you're really into showbiz, you must meet their Vera. A cross between Harpo Marx and Gordon the Gopher. <laughs> Could we have a word before you go? Sure. Hey, do you know what's up with her? It doesn't look good, does it? Hmm. Are you all right, love? Please, Betty. Certainly. Just my luck if she got cold feet. Oh, yeah, you've just sold Ted's house to him, haven't you? Oh, I wouldn't like to go through that twice. Yeah. If anybody's getting cold feet, shouldn't that be Reggie? Hey, she's probably just wondering how the photographs are going to turn out, so she is. Jim. All right, Tanya. What can I get you? You can get me two pints of butter, please, love. Are we supposed to be talking? Look, I just came in here for a quiet drink, lovey, OK? I don't want any gossip if that's your idea of conversation. Look, I'd sooner clear the air. Now, I've been working at the Queen's a long time before you took over. I never asked to get mixed up in the middle of all that stuff with Liz and Colin. What's your point, love? I just get the feeling you don't like me because I'm a bad reminder. And I don't think that's fair. So will you let me pay for these drinks? Go on, then. I'll take your money off you. I'm paying for these, Bet. Scoopies, Ivy. It was the way I felt. Look, Maureen, whatever Reggie's done, why should you keep punishing yourself? 
He's made you show your cell phone. He's made you pack your job in. And he's upset you. Did I shut myself up? Well, you certainly got customers talking. Oh. And I've got a feeling Curly were only smoothing things over to suit you. Oh, what have you was a mess? Hey, you. How many of them have you had? Oh. Well, you can't work in this state. Why don't you go home and have a rest? Oh, God, I know it's worse. My mother's in her element. I can't stand the gloating. <sighs> Listen. Here. Go and have a lay down on my city. You're all right. Don won't be back till after six. And then get yourself freshened up. And if you've still got some screaming to do, do it at Reg. He's still got things of mine in his flat. Oh. I want them back. I want everything back. Including that bull worker I lent him. Where the hell she disappeared to? Sorry, mate. Alma. I'm supposed to be meeting her for lunch. Oh, you're waiting for Alma. Oh, I'm sorry, Mike. I thought you were just passing the time of day till you picked up Mark from school. No, Alma's gone shopping. Shopping? Yeah, she said it was urgent. Oh, brilliant. That's half my lunch hour gone. Thank you very much, Alma. Have you. Good to be here. Cheers. Of course, it's all thanks to Liz MacDonald, isn't it? Is it? She recommended you to me and me to you. Good lasses, Liz. <laughs> she could be up and down, though, couldn't she? Could she? Me and her had some right umdingers. Who oh, did you? <laughs> she never mentioned them to you. Hmm? Just before she left, in fact, one of them. Of course, we made it up before she went to the Queen's, but, yeah, it was a real swing of that one. Mm. You know, it's funny. I can't imagine you and Liz arguing. No? He's not in, or he's not answering. Well, perhaps he's in Rovers. Yeah. Do you want me to go with you? No. Oh, yes! Yes, you could come in after me, and I could pretend I'm waiting for you, because I don't want him to think I'm chasing him. Well, you promised me there'll be no more riots. I know exactly what I want to say. Oh. And I'm determined to say it with dignity. And no more drinking? No. Right, well, you go in, and I'll see you in five minutes. Right. Oh. I think I should apologise to you. Yeah, well. No, look, um, look, I... look, I feel really daft apologising for tantrums at my age. <laughs> Don't stand up there, Molly. Come on, come on. Evening. How does that make you feel then, Deirdre? Skin towel. Yeah, your mum's in here. Oh. Was that Arthur? What are you doing here? Oh, it's staff trailer. I thought you were in work this afternoon. Yes, I was, only... Uh, well, Camilla just wanted me to unpack a few orders and there wasn't anything else to do, actually. When was this? A couple of hours ago. Ma'am, you didn't leave the cafe till half one. Then, according to Rita, you were around there gassing half this afternoon and then here. You've lost your job, haven't you? Uh, I've just gone cash up. Has Camilla fired you? I don't know why she calls herself a manager. She couldn't manage a, a whist drive. Oh, nothing to do with timekeeping, I take it. No. She said I spent more time trying on the merchandise than I did selling it, <laughs> which wasn't true. <laughs> and anyway, if she'd spent more time on her own appearance, we might have sold more. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> Arrested, honestly, in front of all the customers. <laughs> you are no help, Mrs. Roberts. You're a hindrance. <laughs> <laughs> she did. <laughs> Made me feel about ten. <laughs> I behaved disgracefully. 
shouting in front of customers like that. It wasn't meant at you, Kelly. Oh, look, you were just about to put your feet up. You don't want all this. No, 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 look, it's all right, really. Yeah. Oh, I don't normally use. Oh, that tense. Thanks, sir. I, um, I shouldn't have interfered. It was your private business and, well, I apologise. Thank you. Ivy's right, you know. You're a very, very nice man. I know I keep saying this, but are you absolutely sure you know what you're doing? It just grates a bit when you keep saying things like that. As though I'm incapable of making absolutely sure of myself. Look, if it takes the pressure off, I'll tell you a little secret. I reckon I'd have come out of Chef Wheel with pretty lousy results anyway. Seriously? Well, I just hadn't put the work in. And chasing a job with a bad degree is not much better than chasing one without. You're pretending to go to work instead of just admitting it. I mean, it's not as if Alfred do is not. I didn't want you to take the job in the first place. No, he wanted to drag me around Weatherfield like Darby and Joan. <laughs> when he finds out, I... I've given him my notice. <laughs> no, he'll want me in his pocket all day, so I'll thank you to keep the trap shut, please. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is she... Oh, 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 girls, oh, my round. Oh, let me see. Oh, shot to drop, please. She must oh, have made a fortune. Get... <laughs> <laughs> Am I? What exactly is all this about? Oh, just treating myself, looking good, etc. How much money you spent? Well, it's only a fraction of all the money I slave for. And it's only a fraction of 1,800 quid a term. Oh, can I have a box here? Large Oh, right. Well, orange and soda. Yes, lovely. I'll have one be a minute. Hello. Reg, um, I thought Maureen was popping in the cabin this afternoon. Would you give her these, please? They are paid for. Yes, I'll see that she gets them. Thanks. And, and this is our RSVP. Derek and I will be coming to the wedding after all. <laughs> anyway, I, I hope the weather's nice for you because, well, photographs look miserable in, in the drizzle. Yes. Do you know, Kelly? It's true that poster over there. It's true that. Hey. Eh? Right. <laughs> Do you like poetry, Kelly? Oh, that's that's not mine. It was Angie's before she uh, moved out. Oh, Angie. Oh. Well, you like to keep her. Because you know? it really suits you, that. Just honestly. <laughs> So I don't worry about the wine. I get it on discount. Manager's card. No, no, I'm going to the shop. I'm going to go and get another bottle of it. Well, the shop will be short now, won't it? Don't worry about replacing it. I mean, come on, if it made you feel better. No, but we haven't got any left, Curly. Well, I thought you were going down to the Rovers to tackle Reg. No, no, Curly, listen. Look, do you know something? Let me tell you. You have made me feel pleasant and calm and really peaceful. Do you know that? Now, I'm not going to ruin that, am I now? Oh, okay. You wouldn't know this, would you? Do you know why you wouldn't know it? Because you have a very appealing nature. You ought to... You wouldn't know it, you see, you wouldn't know it. Cos you're not a good man. Oh, he used to be like you, you know, when he was young. He did when I first met him and he was trim and young. That's an appealing nature. So... It's... It's really like going back in time, this guy. Really? Yeah. Right, I'm off. You away, son? Yeah. Back to Ivy's. Jerry, will you me? Bye. See you later, Romeo. Well, she must have decided not to come, Reg. And I'll tell you something. If you'd have seen her this afternoon, you'd be glad you'd missed her. Well, it's a big shame, is that? Because I don't want to lose her, Ivy. Well, why don't you stop behaving like a twerp, then? It's your fault. Well, she, she needs me, Ivy. Maureen needs me. I would have thought we could have sorted each other out, you know. <sighs> Reg, mm -hmm. 
Regilov, have you thought of the power of prayer? Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on, my glasses, me, watch my glasses. Oh, Kelly, you don't have to ask. The answer's yes. Oh. And where were you till all hours? I was out. Out? Out? Yes. He were gone three o'clock. Oh, Mother, don't exaggerate. I heard the clock going. Mother! I was at home in bed by two o'clock. Now, just get your breakfast. If you say you were in bed, you were in bed. I'll believe that bit. But you were never home at two o'clock. Mother! Oh, don't you mother me. Oh. Is there no milk? Oh. Here. <sighs> I'm nobody's fool, you know. Nobody say you are now. Will you let it drop? Let that man wrap you around his little finger. What man? Oh. 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 Is there another one now? Look. You were the one that was always saying he's not the only pebble on the beach. I hope I'm not hearing you right. I don't know what to make of it. You don't have to make anything of it. I don't need your help. I am quite capable of making a mess of my own life. Exactly what you are doing. Look, yes, I did go out last night with two things in mind. One was to get drunk. There you are. Are you happy? And what was the other? <sighs> Feeling sorry for myself. That was the other. Are you not having any breakfast? No! But I've got to have a clean shirt, woman. You get a bit of particular all of a sudden, now. you? What about one you were wearing yesterday? I was wearing it yesterday, that's what. Burlington Bertie. Uh, I know it's got you going. A new bar made in Rovers, that's all it takes. I just want a clean shirt for work, that's all. By the deodorant. Oh, here we go. Oiling your hair up, sterilising your teeth. Well, if you think I'm working my fingers to the bone, dolling you up. A shirt! I don't know why you're wasting your time. It's like polishing coal, scuttling or firing grates. Right, 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 right. Don't, don't bother. I've got a shirt. I've got a shirt upstairs in my drawer. It's, it's very nice. It's, it's very fancy. Hey, you're not wearing that. Do you know, it's very flattering, Vera, to think my wife is still jealous of me. If you say so, Alf, if you <sighs> say so. Audrey, love, what does that mean? <sighs> what, what am I supposed to say? Just say what you want. Oh, I've had somebody saying that to me all my life. I don't know, do I? Yeah, but you do. The trouble is, when you get something, you suddenly want something else. I mean, it's murder going in the cafeteria with you. Oh. Well, you know. You, you have a panic attack deciding what pudding you're going to have. Oh. You go the wrong way up the queue saying, excuse me, excuse me, putting things back because you've seen something different. Oh, do you know, you could be really cruel, you. Look, we've made a decision. We sold the shop. That's what you wanted, right? We are going to live them. All you've got to do is to say that is what I've decided and stick to it. Yeah, I know, it's just that... Well, if we could just do it and be done with it. Yeah, well, that's why I said let's auction this house. Oh, Alf, if you want to auction the house, you auction it, nobody else. Will. Yeah, well, I know everybody says it's the wrong time, don't they? But it's all time <laughs> passing, you see. It's all very well saying wait for your price, but while you're waiting, your life's having away. Well, I don't know, maybe you're right. Look at me, laddo. Brendan Scott. He had all sorts of plans. Oh, well, if we're all going to drop dead, it doesn't matter where we go, does no, it? No, no, you've got to decide what you're doing and then do it. You see, when you've had a couple of funny do's like I have, you start to think. I know, love, I know. We did all right with the shop, you know, money-wise. Well, I suppose if you put it like that. Look, we'll see what somebody will give us for this place, then we we'll go to Lytham and we'll start treating ourselves, right? Yes, yes, Alf, yeah. Oh, love. 
What does that mean? Yes, Alf. It means, Alf, I know what you mean, so come on, yes, we'll do what you say. Good, good. We'll be all right in Lytham, you know, and if you want to work in a daft dress shop, there'll be dozens there in Lytham. Uh, you'd sooner I gave that up, though, wouldn't you? <laughs> For the button she pays you. No, but you'd sooner I did. Well, it's just hanging on to things here, really, isn't it? All right, you know, just for you, Alpha. I'll pack it in today. Ah, oh, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> right, let's be sell us straight. I've bottled up a beer, right? If you say so, Jack. Right, I can get changed. Then. No, I've got plenty of change. No, no, I mean, you get changed. I'm not with you. Good morning. Good morning. What do you think? <laughs> Jacko! <laughs> it's Tom Jones. No, no, it's more your angle, bro, this. No, I know what it is. <laughs> You've got another job, haven't you? You're going straight on. Because he moonlights, you know. He gets work as a pelmet. It's seen a bit of lime like this, you know, which is not unusual. Well, it is round here now. Give over, Jack. Oh, now, come on. We're not supposed to be in the entertainment industry, aren't we? We've got past beer and sawdust. All right, all right. Just promise me two things. You won't sing. Not unless you pay me. That was the other thing. And don't you ever come to work wearing a frock at any time, will you? <laughs> oh, no. If there was any doubt about your masculinity, you couldn't wear that. But you can. I'm sorry, Vera, but if we've sold out, we've sold out for good and all. She's not restocking without. Writing's on wall, isn't it? It's finished as a shop, this place, yeah, isn't it? It's in the lap of the gods, really. <sighs> I'll miss it, though, you know. Fancy prices and all. I mean, it was so handy. But it must be spooky, working here, it must be. Oh, it is pretty depressing. I mean, him popping off like that. Mind you, look, you've only got to look around. Place is dying around you, isn't it? It's oh. bad enough without you going on. I know, but it's sad, isn't it? Hey, you're going to buy this shop? You must be joking. Oh, go on. Yeah, go on, you could buy it for good at community. Then you could flog all us poor people, cheap stuff, and we build a monument to you. Do me a favour, dear. Pack it of my cigars, please, then. Hey, do you want to buy the lot? Well, what's this then? Closing down, Sal. Well, it's only you ask these. Yeah, all right, Tara, I'll have the lot. Half price. Oh. Hey, she can't do all that. She'll be out of a job. <laughs> hey, see, I'm putting a word in for you. <laughs> so. Hey, have you seen that new barmaid? You know, it rovers, the new flues. No, that's prejudice, because she's good looking. Oh. She fancies my husband, you know. Oh, come on, Vera. No, she does, she does. Vera, I hope you don't mind me saying it, but only an idiot would think that she fancied your Jack. I know. And the idiot happens to be our Jack. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want to come round. You don't want to be there. Well, I think I ought to be, because I'm going to get the blame for all this. There's nothing to blame anybody for. That's not how they're going to see it. Your mum, was she uh, all right, you know, um, when you got home? Fine, yes, thank you. Good, good. I thought she might have, you know. Anyway, I'd better let you get on. I knew. Knew what? You'd be embarrassed. I'm not embarrassed. You are. I'm not. Hello there, Pixies. What have you done with your puddings? You keep shifting them about, don't you? You want to give over? Now, where's the puddings? Um, I'm sure that um, Mrs Nell will gladly uh, show you, um, won't you, Maureen? Um, sweet. Look, I'm not doing this for you. I'm doing it for me. Well, it's the you? right thing ah. for me. Good morning, young man. Uh, do you know where I can find Mr. Watts at all? Uh, have you tried the office? Well, as a matter of fact, that has occurred to me, yes. Now, do you think you can make a more intelligent contribution? Well, I don't know where he is, then. Well, go and rectify the matter, right? And when you have, tell him Mr. Holdsworth here. I'll do that. Then. Yes, if you would. Go on. It's supposed to be a university lad, that. Where's he going? He's just sort of looking around. Does he look as if he's looking for anything in particular? Oh, aye, he does, yeah. Maureen. He's heading off towards household goods. Oh, I say. Look what the cat's dragged in. That's my like mother you're talking about. Yeah, you'll miss me when I'm gone. Are you not feeling well? When I'm going to live in St. Anne's. I believe that when I see it. No. It's all settled. We're going. 
at the noise I hear, is it wild horses hooves? No, it's the auctioneer's hammer, cause that's what that Debbie Scott is doing with the shop. She wants shut of it. So Alf says, right, that's what we're doing. So he's put the house up. Auction? Mm -hmm. Oh, he has decided then. And are you, are you coming round to it all? Well, he begged and pleaded with Miguel. He begged and pleaded. He even pleaded with me to give up my job at the dress shop. So, just to make him happy and to show that I am really behind him, I've agreed. So, chucking in the job from today. You've not told him, have you? <gasps> you are barefaced, ma'am. Do you know that? You're barefaced. Relationships aren't built on telling the truth, sweetheart. They are built on believing what you're told. Well, Alf must be the right man for you, oh. ma'am. He must be that gullible. Yes, you know, in that respect, I'm very lucky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr Watts, Mr Holt was looking for you. Ah, he said he tried the office. Right, good, good. He's over there by the checkout. Right, you can go now. Thank you. Thank you. Reg, he's, uh... I know. You've not... Not? ...said. Anything? No, you've not told him. Anything? No, you're choking. You're not going to, are you? Good God, no. <sighs> uh, he's over there, actually. Y yes, yes, I know. Just carry on with what you're doing. To be honest, he seemed a bit shirty. Go on. So? I'm sorry to get you involved. I I'm sorry to drag you into this mess. I don't feel like I've been dragged into anything by anybody. Just as long as no one mentions to... You must never. No. 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 Ships in the night. Ships in the night. Right. Oh! What? You dropped this overboard. Oh, thank you. Right. Oi. Oh! You've been avoiding me. You have, haven't you? Look, I've got my work to do. Look, I know what you think. I know what you believe. But you just won't give me a chance, will you? It's nothing like what you Someone think. Someone will come. Well, let them. You've got to believe me, Maureen. Reg, it doesn't matter if I believe you or not. Oh, but it does. It matters more than anything, Maureen. Because we've got to have trust, we've got to have faith. Well, we've got no future together. Don't you understand? It doesn't matter anymore. Maureen? Nothing happened between me and that woman. Nothing. It doesn't matter if you were. Maureen, would Reg, you... I'm sorry, but it's opened my eyes what happened. I... It's just made me realise. Did you realise? What? <gasps> You're not the only man that can make me happy. I used to think you were, but you're not. <sighs> What's it like in this line? You can't describe it. It's all complicated. No wonder it died out. Well, say some then. No. Well, go on. No, it's daft. Well, did anyone speak it? I mean, ever. Ancient Romans did. Then why does it call that then? Why not it called Roman? I don't know, do I? Well, say so. No. Oh. Heard that, did you? Costing all that money on that Latin, and he doesn't even bring it home. <gasps> Back my tongue. Has her ladyship been in? Oh, watch me down the dress shop. No, no, hey, she's kicked all that into touch, but oh. I'm not going down there in case there's any enough feeling. Wise. Yeah, she'll have finished now, anyway, now. Uh, give us a cup of tea while I'm waiting. What, milk, no sugar? Yes, that's right, love. Hey, who do you think I've seen in Coronation Street just now? Yeah. Seen that Scott woman with Mr Patel from Rosamond Street. Oh, do you think he'll be interested in buying it? I don't think it's very likely, love. Do you, uh, do you ever get a little pangs? Oh, I love it. I get lots of little pangs, yeah. I get rheumatism, you know. Bit of sciatica. <laughs> get bursitis in my elbow. No, you know what I mean. When you go down Coronation Street... Listen, love, if you see a gleam in my eye, it won't be tears. It'll be the light at the end of the tunnel just starting to reflect. Hello, Red. We were just talking about you. Oh, don't you make it sound terrible? We weren't talking about you so much. Anyway, you're trading in tittle-tattle again, Mavis. Oh, you are in a mood. Yes, I'm in a mood to join the Foreign Legion, actually. Oh, I'd have thought you'd have been too old. Thank you. Um, I came to say, Rita. Uh, with great regret that circumstances have turned out that such that, uh, with respect to your house, the whole idea is now a non-starter. And I think you know what I'm trying to say, don't you? It's off. It's off, yeah. Just the house or the whole thing? No, the whole thing. I think you could say that. And I'm very, very sorry the way that it's turned out for you, but uh, I thought it was only fair to come and... Um, well, you know, to come and appraise you that... Well, uh, well, it's it, it, it's very good of you to. Uh... Yeah, I don't know. Well, that's it. There's no more to be said on the matter, is there? No. 
Well, there is, of course. There's a lot more to be said. In fact, I could treat you to a discourse on human nature. Uh, right? Best not. I mean, you'd only end up saying something you might regret. Oh, yeah. No doubt about that. What do you suppose has happened? What do I suppose has happened? I'm back to square one. That's what's oh, happened. Oh, not you. Them. I mean, something must have blown up good and proper. Well, I suppose you've seen the light. Not before it turned. Oh, Rita, you are cynical. Me? Yes, they've got a wedding arranged. They've got printed invitations. They were having a cake from Robinson's. Oh, so you think it should go ahead because there's a cake coming from Robinson's? That's where I call cynical. You twist everything. I mean, we know she's as daft as two pennies of chips, but she don't deserve him. You should be happy for her. There's an extra week in there, lieu of notice. So is that it, then? Yeah, finished today. Thanks very much. Well, you knew it were coming. Yeah, but all the same. You know Mr Patel, don't you? Yes, of course. Old friends. Yeah, he's going to give me a price on the stock. What stock? Well, there's the, there's the stock room, for starters. We'll see what this stock's worth. I, I will make you a fair price. Uh, yeah, well, if you don't, there's somebody else will. Right, so uh, if you give Mr Patel a hand until he's done, we'll, we'll call it a day. Yeah, I suppose we will. I suppose we'll call it a job as well. <sighs> Sorry, but there you are. I don't know why Brendan bought this place. I think he must have been out of his mind, but I'm not. And I'm not a shopkeeper either. Shall we make a start? Yeah, go on, uh, I'll do the till. Well, you two can. I reckon I've been paid up to the last half hour. Well, you might stop on an extra couple of minutes. Yeah, I might. I might have been given an extra couple of minutes' notice as well. But you can't have everything you want in this life, can you? Now, you be a good dog. A good dog. Jenny won't be long. And no barking. Oh, hi there! Hiya! Oh, hiya. Just do us a favour, eh? What, so when my dad comes over, I've got to do one, yeah? Yeah, well, I shouldn't find that a problem. Like I say, favour to me. Listen, eh, you're not going to try and get some money off him, are you? No. Good, cos he ain't got anything. So what's his big secret, then? Right, I don't want anybody to hear this off you, all right? No, it's one of them pick-the-right-moment jobs. Oh, you've not got to look the... Don't no, you teach yeah. anything at university? You see what I mean? Hey, do you know what the fatal mistake in life is, Norman? No. Just wanting that little bit too much. Move on with you. That's what brings them all down, you know. Julius Caesar, Alexander the Great, Robert Maxwell. Just had the name of uh, Reggie Halsworth. Just wanting that little bit too much. <laughs> they walk around in a dream folk round here, you know. You'd think somebody had noticed, wouldn't you? Oh, it shows he looks right on you, doesn't it? Now, you're not just saying that, are you? Oh, would I? Hey, have you ever been in for an Elvis competition? I can see you in that and all. Mm. Well, you're a stranger, aren't you? Happen to be passing. So what are you up to these days? Oh, you know, same old stuff. Ah, uh, no improvement then. Nothing's changed much around here then either. Seems like it. Have you had a row or what? Sort of, a bit. You've got a cheat, you know. How do you mean? Walking in here. I don't mean in this book. I know. But I'm not asking to come back and move in or anything. Oh, right. I was a rotten cow, wasn't I? You tried my faith in human nature, I'll say that. I am sorry. Honest, I am. I've always wanted to say that. Well, that's why I came, really. Well, then, in that case, it's very nice to see you, then. And I'm not asking to move in or anything. But can I just stop the night? Jenny. I just want... Sort of one night. Why? Well, just not be there for a night. See if I can think straight, and I can't when I'm there. I was totally out of my mind, crazy about him when I left. I know you were. Well, you know what it's like. And I'd never been able to see what you meant about him, not in a million years. 
Only I might have just had my millionth birthday, you know? So can I? Okay. Oh, by the way, there's two of us. No. I'm sorry, that's not on. <laughs> it's not a fella or anything. Well, at least that's summit. It's my dog. I never go anywhere without my dog. I love her. Your dog? You know, the trouble with these notes is they all look the same nowadays. There was a time you flashed a 20, you got a bit of service. Yeah, well, the colour of your money isn't everyone, Michael, you know. I agree with you entirely. Oh, you do surprise me. Money is not the answer, it's a question. Do you have the lever? If you got that, you can have any answer you want. Yes, but there are some things that money cannot buy. Yeah, including charm, so don't bother saving up. And intelligence being another. Oh, no hope for some, then. You can say that again. I'm not the mug forking out for some stuck-up college, so I'm not. Well, don't let it rattle your cage. I'm just standing here trying to get a drink. And I've got a cockatoo there that won't even talk to me. Well, Dad, Dad, what? can I have a quick word, mate, over that, please? Sure. Listen, I just hope you get some return for your investment. I mean, look at my lad here. He just went round the corner, so he did. Didn't even pay a bus fare for his education, and he went to university, so he did. <laughs> yes, and I bet you're very proud of him. Tanya, my love. Yeah, with you. Yes, sir, I'm very proud of him. And I hope you can say the same thing when you top the bill up. No, I'm just going round the corner to have a word with him, OK? Yes, love. Oh, I'll have a brandy and aspirin. I've got a pain in my ear. Aww. And can you tell Laura Ashley to stop preening his rough and do some work? Hey, he's only here for the amusement. Well, he amuses me. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Andrew, what can I do for you, son? Um, it's... It's gone. It's a, it's a favour I'm asking you, Norman, and it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big favour, I know that. You know me, Reg. Yes, I believe I do, Norman. After all these years, yes, I believe I do. Well... Anything I can do, you know. And there's not many I could ask. Well, as I said, you know, if I can. Yeah, well, I don't know how to put this to you because it's... It's all gone to pieces in my hands, you see, Norman. No, no, Reg, it, it's not as bad as you think, No, honest. no, you don't know. You don't understand. See, you're young. You're fresh. You've got time. You, you can take a knock and climb back into the ring, but at my age, it's different. You're no age, Reg. You're no age at all. I mean, you've no, got... No, no, no. You've got to face up to these things. Time's running out. And it was all there, you see. It was all coming together. There was a shop and the house and Maureen and, and I blew it. There's nothing I can do for you, Reg. All I can say well, is... Well, yes, I... there is something you can do for me, Norman. I want you to keep an eye on Maureen. Um. <laughs> no, no, I don't mean spy on her, you know, but... You see, Maureen, she's very vulnerable and you're a man of the world. You know how it is, don't you? I hope so. I'm not sure whether there is, there is another man in the picture, but I, I think there might be, actually. No. No, Reg, I, I, I think you're wrong there. Eh? I should think that you're wrong. I should, I should think. Right. Well, you know I'm off to Yorkshire next week. Yeah. Well, if you would, I want you to keep an eye on her. Eh? Just, just explain things to her, Norman, will you? Just explain things to her and, and, and just tell her how I really and well and truly feel about it. Just do it for me, Norman, will you? Put my case. Because you're the only man I can trust, you know, Norman. Just do it for me, will you? Eh? Trouble, please. Do you know, I get sick on trains, you know, if I don't have out to sew. Seven <laughs> days we're going away for, Vera. Ten pair of shoes you've got in there. When the hell are you going to wear all them, well, I don't want them thinking we're rubbish. I want them to know that we can turn the style on when we have to. Mm -hmm. I just want to tell you, I hope it's not bad news. Well, ten pair of shoes. Who do you think you are? Melda Marcos? No, I'm very duff with. I'm a lot better than Melda Marcos and a lot better than Dorian Orton. Hey, it's be daddy, look. Look, you are going to be nice to him, aren't you? I mean, after all, it is a free holiday. Free holiday, me I Don't want to get the paws on her, Tommy. Hey, well, they're in for a shock. Ah, Terry's coming home. Who was? 20th of December, official release day. Oh, oh, your daddy's coming home for Christmas. Oh, oh, Jack, I'm so excited. Man. You said you'd tell him yesterday. I know. It's just... You don't know what he's like. I know exactly what he's going to say. Which is what? Well, let him throw me life away and blow me one big chance and all that. Well, I said all that and you talk me around. Tell him what you tell me. Well, that's a bit different. You're not an ex-sergeant major, are you? No. Look, I know how it feels. I had to tell my dad I was pregnant when I should have been at university. I also had to tell him I wanted the baby and I didn't want the man. That wasn't easy, you know. I know. But I did it, and they were great about it in the end. And now look at us. We're all really close. Somehow I can't see my dad being great about this. Oh, it shouldn't be like this. Like what? We want to get married. You're talking like we're going to confess to murder. You talk about me as though it was something to be ashamed of. Hey, 
Come on, don't be daft. I'm not blaming you. But think how I feel. I can't wait to tell my mum. She thinks you're a good lad and she knows I can make my own decisions. Just a minute, you mean you haven't told your lot either? No. Well, why not? I've got Dominic to think about. I'm not going to get them all worked up about something that might never happen. What do you mean, might never happen? I thought it was decided. Until you can tell your mum and dad, Andy, it's just words between you and me. Until you can deal with your parents, you're not ready to get married. Come on, please. The locker room is not the place to discuss your personal life. Yeah, all right, Curly, just cos I've got a personal now, life. Now, just a minute. You... Excuse me, Mrs Naylor. No, woman, this is silly. We've got to talk. Not in the locker room. Well, not going back to your place, if that's what you're thinking. No, that's not what I was thinking. I just wanted to say there's no need to be jumping because no one's going to find out about us. There is no us. It was a mistake, that's all. Exactly. So no one wants to brag about their mistakes, do they? No, no, of course not. Well, then, if you won't tell, I won't tell. So no one's going to find out. Oh, look, no, no look, look. I'm sorry, you stop worrying. You look that suspicious. It's going to be all right. I beg your pardon? No, no, hang on, um, wait a minute. It's all right. I, I don't need to know about your personal life. Um, I would, however, appreciate your professional expertise, if you've got the time. Hiya. Oh! Oh, isn't she beautiful? <laughs> yeah. Oh, what kind is she? She's Nikita. Japanese oh, show, Doug. You can tell she's something special. <laughs> Rita was telling me she has to have a very carefully controlled diet. Yes, this morning she had two bath towels and half a rug. <laughs> now, I know I said it was only for one night, but I was wondering, could I stay a bit longer? Well, you see, the thing is, Mitz is due to have pups any day now. Puppies? Oh, how exciting and that exciting, Rita. Well, it's certainly tied a knot in my stomach. <laughs> how have I got myself into this mess, Rita? Why didn't I listen to you in the first place? Well, you can't learn from other people's mistakes, I suppose. Only your own. She told me Robert was no good, you know. But I wouldn't listen. Now look at me. Can't even go into town because I'm scared of losing her in the traffic. Oh, well, if you want to leave her with me for a few hours, I'm sure I could manage. That's if Rita doesn't mind. Well, are you sure? She'll probably just sleep because she just walked for miles and pregnant dogs get that tired. Oh, she, she's not likely to, you know, produce, is she? Because I don't think I could cope with that. <laughs> no, no, of course not. I won't be that long anyway. <gasps> Thanks, Mavis. Thanks, Rita. See ya. Oh, bye. You didn't mind, did you? Now, to do with me, love, I shall be at cash and carry. Oh, well, I'm, I'm sure we'll manage. Yes, we'll manage. And Jenny will go into town. Well, there was already a good set here, so I thought these would be useful for when you get your flat down there. Er, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm getting a flat this year, aren't you? You're not in holes. No, I'm not in holes this year. Now, the handle on this one is a bit dodgy, so you'll have to be careful when you pick it up, but it should be all right. Should I get you a new set? Maybe when you get married, eh? Er, <laughs> <laughs> uh, might be sooner than you think. Oh, aye. One day, someday, never, eh? Can't see you settling down somehow. You know, I tried to picture you cooking for yourself while I was sorting these out for you, and I couldn't at all. Oh, I've got a kettle for you somewhere as well. Oh, I'll sort it out before you go. Have a while, yeah, Santa? Uh, yeah, ages. When do you actually go back, then? Mum. What? I'm getting married. What? I'm getting married. <laughs> oh, too? What do you mean, who to? To Amy, obviously. Well, I... Uh, it's very nice. She's a lovely girl. But it won't be till you've taken your finals, will it? So you'll be taking your time about it and you'll know what you're letting yourself in for. I'm not finishing my degree. I'm going to stay on at Better Buys. You're giving up your degree to be a shelf stacker? No, to be a trainee manager. But you can't! Shall I open up? What do you want? No, it's all right. I'm going now. I'm on my lunch hour. I've got to get back. Uh, sit down. Yeah, if you could go and open up, please. I'll be down when I've finished here. All right. Look, look, I've said what I came to say. I'm on my lunch hour. If you're old enough to get married, you're old enough to talk about it. Sit down and talk to me. Hiya. Where have you been? Shopping. Got a tap. 
Brilliant. What's up now? I've paid you my housekeeping. You haven't grasped this at all, have you, Tracy? We are in trouble. We can't afford new tops. But I've paid you what we agreed. Jill, I can do what I want with the rest. We've got nothing coming in. Nothing at all. Do you understand? How dare you go out and spend money on yourself like that? You've got hundreds of tops. You'll wear this one once and get bored with it. In the meantime, what do we eat? It's for you, actually. What? The top. I bought it for you to cheer you up. Well, do you like it? I, uh, thanks. It's lovely. Oh, God, Tracy, I'm sorry. It's all right. I quite enjoyed it, really. <laughs> hey, and I've had this brilliant idea, and this is part of it. Go on. I heard Bet talking to Rita in the cabin. The real short of staff at the Rovers. Now, why don't you ask her to give you a go? Oh, no, I couldn't do that. Why not? Well, she'd be looking for somebody younger, another Raquel, somebody for the blokes to look at. Well, they could look at you, couldn't they? <laughs> if I was worth looking at. Well, we'll make you worth looking at, then. What does your dad say? Not told him. Of course not. What does that mean? Well, I'm the easy way out, aren't I? You tell me and I tell your dad for you. I thought I'd tell you because you're my mum. I had so many dreams for you. I don't want to live your life, Mum. I want to live mine. The life of a shelf stacker? I've told you, trainee manager. There's no point in me finishing my degree, Mum. A degree isn't the key to a treasure chest these days. Look, there's thousands of people with degrees and no jobs and no prospects now. An education is an education. It stays with you. And so does the overdraft you're running up while you're getting it. But we've seen you all right, haven't we? Well, haven't we? Look, if it's the money, we'll... Mum, it's nothing to do with money. It's love. I love her. Well, she obviously didn't think anything of you, otherwise she wouldn't ask you to do it. Well, she didn't, actually. She asked me not to, if you must know. Oh, of course she did. If she thought anything about you, she'd let you finish. Two years is nothing. It's no time. She said that and all. Mum, I don't want to wait. It does, isn't it? It's all this mess between me and your dad. You're trying to punish us. But for crying out loud, Mum. I'm not going to live in a new age convoy with a dog on a piece of string. I'm getting a job with a salary and a pension and prospects now. Three quarters of the people on my course are swapped with me tomorrow. I won't let you do it, Andy. I'm not asking your permission, Mum. Well, if you think I'm telling your dad for you, you can forget it. Tell him yourself. Fine. I can I do with a hand down here now? Is everything all right? Everything's wonderful. You might as well take this lot with you. I, uh, thought you were going to get us a new set when I got married. No, I don't think so. Fine. Well, I'll go now, then, eh? And, uh, I'll let you talk it over with your boyfriend, eh? said anything to you? Well, she wouldn't say anything to me, would she? She'd say it to you. Maybe she didn't see us. There was nothing to see. I see some things haven't changed under the new management. Maureen's the blue-eyed girl. She must be a very good worker. Right, you carry on placing these jams, Mrs Naylor, and make sure you do it uh, correctly. Everything in order, Miss Fenwick? <laughs> the uh, preferential treatment that you're giving Mrs Naylor. What about it? I mean, what are you talking about? I'm not giving Mrs Naylor anything. Look, I don't know what your motives are. I haven't got any motives. But I want you to know that the rest of the staff are aware of it and it is causing resentment. I don't think expressing opinions of that sort is within your brief. I'm not expressing an opinion. I'm reporting a fact. The rest of the staff feel that whatever's good enough for Mrs Naylor is good enough for them. Whatever you do for her, you should do for all of them. Jack, before we go in, huh? I don't want to embarrass you, but you do realise that while you're here, you're our guest, don't you? Huh? And I don't want you to have to pay for a thing during your stay. I don't think I'll fear it. Um, what? I, 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 
I don't think our Vera would uh, feel any different. You know? Oh, well, in that case, I hope you won't take it the wrong way, mm. but I'd like to make a small contribution to young Tommy's upkeep. Well, that's very kind well, of you. I, I haven't offended you, have I? What? No, 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 no. Well, what, what about Vera? Well, she, she might... Uh, she might feel a bit different about it, you see. So I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll keep it between herself. Eh? Ah, <laughs> message received and understood. They're lovely shoes, Vera. Shall I hold them while you see to them? Well, I just threw them on for travelling in, you know. But I've got used to doing things with one hand. Have you got any... Uh... Flatter shoes, only this time of the year. The golden mile can sometimes seem more like ten. <laughs> oh, I brought all sorts of shoes. I mean, it's not holiday if you're not comfy. And I think we're going to be comfy here, love. Oh, you won't find a trace of the fearsome Blackpool landlady of yesteryear here. All that throwing guests out at nine in the morning and not letting them back until six. Our guests can linger until ten. And they're welcome back at four, provided they booked high tea. And Jeff and I are only too keen to babysit if you want to go out at all. That's very kind of you. Well, we'll have to see how it goes. I mean, he's not used to you, is he? But maybe in a day or two, eh? I mean, if you've got your dancing shoes with you, you can go and relive your courtship in the winter gardens and Tommy could stay the night at our place. Hey, smash it. Of course, guests do have to be back and in their rooms by 11 o'clock. That's when we lock the front door and the lounge. Yeah, but, I mean, it couldn't stay at your place because you haven't got a cot, have you? It is a travel cot, Vera. Actually, we did get a cot for him, just in case, you know. Oh, did you? Well, that says everything. It says that you're very nice grandparents. Now, I think we'd better give him a bath and put him down for a kit, eh? Oh, so, uh, we'll see you later, oh, if you don't mind. Right. 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 Towels are provided, but I must insist that they stay in the bathrooms. Otherwise, people take them down to the beach. <laughs> I'm sorry I've been so long. I've waited forever for the bus. I've taken the car, but I can't afford the petrol at the moment. Well, she hasn't been a scrap of trouble. Not to me, anyway. One or two of the customers were a bit perturbed by, though. What's she been eating? Oh, she's got something stuck in her teeth. <laughs> Lemon bonbons. You know, she's really keyed on those. She nearly mugged Emily for her quarter. So after that, every time she showed a bit of temper, out came the lemon bonbons and she was gentle as a kitten. You can't feed bonbons to a dog like this. Sorry. I, I just... weigh all her food out really carefully. She's got lemon on her teeth now. She could have choked you, stupid hey. cow. Hey! That's enough. I'm sorry, I just didn't think. It's all right, Mavis. You go on, though. I didn't mean to be rude. No, I'm, I'm sure you didn't. Are you sure, Reed? Yes, yes, you go on, though. I don't know why you keep her on. You can't just shovel toffees down an animal I like this. I said that's enough. Now, pick these magazines up and start putting them on them shelves. What? That's what Mavis was doing before you upset her. Or are you too grand for this now? I never said that. You sweep in here like the Empress of China. You hand your dog over to Mavis for the day and without so much as saying thank you. She knew enough killed her. And if she had, so what? It's not her responsibility. It's yours. Oh, Rita, I'm sorry. I know it must look after you. I know she's only a dog, but she's all I've got. I walked out on you and this place and my friends. I gave up everything for him. And that's what I've got to show for it, a dog. And I keep trying to talk to people on the street or in the shop, trying to pick up the threads and start again, but I can see they all hate me. Oh, of course they don't. Oh, they do. I don't blame them. I'm horrible. How could I be nice when I made such a mess of my life? So, you don't think there's any chance of you and Robert getting back together again? I don't know. He hasn't rung. He doesn't care. And if he doesn't care, who does? Who cares about me? I do. Probably a fool for telling you. But I do. 
Last time I wore blue eye makeup, I was pregnant with you. Well, there you go then. That was 1976. Oh. The 70s are dead trendy now. You'll have nothing to worry about when it comes to the younger punters, will you? You was there when it was all happening. Oh, I don't know if I like the idea of my youth becoming part of history. It's not history. It's just dead cool. And so's your eye makeup now. I think the perm will have to go, though. Very 1983. Sort of early share. Well, there's nothing I can do about that tonight. Uh, you wouldn't fancy coming to the Rovers with me, would you? Oh, I'd love to. Do they serve bottled lagers? Oh, you'll have lemonade and like it. Only if I can have ice in it. Oh, very sophisticated. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> I can't stop long. The pub's open, Colin's covering for me. Oh, well. Ah, well, sure, that's dead nice of Colin. I'm not here to socialise. I'm here to tell you something. Go on. Andy's getting married. What? He's going to marry Amy. The name of God. I told him I wouldn't tell you, but... <laughs> what? You mean he was, uh, he was going to keep this a secret from me, was he? No, he wanted me to tell you, but I said oh. he should tell you himself. Then I thought about it and... What are we going to do? Why didn't he tell me? I don't know. The thing is, can we stop him? Could you talk to him? Me? How can I talk to him, lovey? He's not even talking to me. Now, how long have you known about this? Oh, no time. He told me this morning. Look, I don't want to talk about you. I want to talk about Andy. He's planning on dropping out of university. Ah, uh -huh. and you want to try and dissuade him? Oh, well, we've got to do something. Hang on. I didn't think there was a we anymore, love. I thought you were your own woman and I was stuck here on my own. We are still his parents. Oh, why, well, and a great set of parents we are, aren't we? You're over there with your toy boy. And I'm sat here on my own with a son who won't even tell me he's getting married. Look, will you stop talking about us and just concentrate on Andy for one minute? You don't get it, do you? Hey? You think we can just tell him what to do? You think we're still his parents? Well, I don't think we're still his parents at all. You want to know what I think we are? I think we're a joke. You're still his father. I'm still his mother. Oh, come on, love. If I was still his father, do you think he'd have kept this from me? He'd have told me. If we could just talk about this like adults. We are still a family. No, we're not. You broke it all up, Liz. We're not a family anymore. There's no such thing as the McDonald's. And if there is, well, where are they? Do you mind telling me where they live? You killed it off, Liz. And if you don't like that, well, you can put us back together again, but nobody else can. And if you don't, well, I'm afraid Andy can just go and do what the hell he likes. Well, what's been going on? You look younger and you look a lot older. <laughs> We've been swapping fashion hints. I've been telling my mum about all the trouble you've had, you know, getting bar staffed. Oh, it's been a nightmare. Do you know the folk we've had in here? I think half of them have been laid off from Chamber of Horrors. Oh, you've uh, still not found anybody then? Am I being too fussy, do you think? A smile is a smile, after all. Is it any less welcoming because it only has one black tooth in it? <laughs> That's gross. At least I've still got all my own teeth. Right, when you get to my age and dress size, you've got to be ruthless about this. I want somebody who can pull the punters as well as the pints. They don't want the likes of you and me, kid. They want another Raquel. See, you'd be ideal if you weren't underage. Mind you, I could still be looking in a year's time. Bear us in mind, Cot. You didn't even ask her. No, I know I didn't. Come on, drink up. Why would you expect to get a job if you want? Ask for one. I said we're going home. But she said she hadn't found anyone. She didn't want me, did she? She wanted you. <laughs> Tracy, is your mother... Andy. Come here a wee minute, son. I, uh, I thought you'd be out, actually. Down the Legion or whatever. No. I, uh, I thought I'd wait here, see if you still wanted to have that wee chat you were on about this morning. Oh, that. Hmm. Was it anything important? No, 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 not really. Look up, my son. What? What's with you? What's up with me? Where would you like me to start, eh? My wife's left me. And I'm living with a son who won't even condescend to tell me he's getting married. 
She told you? Uh huh. She told me. Point is, Andy, why did she have to tell me, eh? I mean, why didn't you tell me? I don't know, Dad. Look, I don't blame you. There's nothing to do with no, you, too. No, 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 I don't care. Think about this. Every single thing you think you feel for that wee girl, I felt for your mother. I'd have died for her. I'd have killed for her. And when you two came along, the same thing. Well, just you take a look at me now, eh? None of you will even speak to me. Here's where it ends up, Andy. And this is the way it's going to end up for you, son. I had the most amazing dream last night. Oh, yeah? Yeah, you in your element. Running one of those beach bars in the Caribbean. Who knows, eh? Could happen. Not all I've still got kids in England to worry about. Yeah, well, like I said, it was just a dream. Now then, that's what I call the business, that. Eh? If a bloke did fancy a little flutter, where would a bloke put one on round here? A bloke might leave it to me if the bloke wanted to keep it quiet. A mm, bloke would. After all, I'm on holiday, aren't I? <laughs> that you are, Jack. Right, I've ringed a couple there. I've got a few spare quid. Ooh. Ready for yours now, <laughs> Vera? Oh, thanks, Shirley. I'm leaving out summer. You know, till he wakes, Jack. Right. I'll fetch you some extra toast, too. Smashing, Shirley. Oh. Dory! What's she doing here this time? She's going to see Tommy. That's why we brought him here, remember? Well, you thought she'd have waited till we'd had his breakfast. You pop back this afternoon, love. If it's not in then, there'll be carnage, I promise you. Stop, Nitsy, stop! Hey, that's a good girl. Hey, Jenny. Tracy Bower. Tracy, yeah, look at you. I hardly recognised you, you're so grown up. <laughs> Makes me sound about a hundred, doesn't it? <laughs> Got a job now. You've not? In a florist's. Fantastic. You have to tell me all about it. Your friend there is gorgeous. Well, if you're flush, I can let you have one of her pups for a few hundred pounds or so. Oh, a bargain. <laughs> Tempting, but nowhere. Uh, Jenny, could you just restrain it? Mitzi, careful of Rita's display. Come on, let's get you upstairs and clean you off. Oh, yes, with good carpets and much more interesting things to destroy up there. <laughs> it's nice to see you again, Tracy. Must have a natter sometime. Well, I haven't had my breakfast yet. I was going to grab something on the way to work, so... Oh, well, I... If, if you want to go with Tracy, Jenny, I'll give Mitzi a breakfast. OK. But no bonbons? No, absolutely not. Oh, come on, get it out of here. I usually go to Jim's cafe. Is that still there? <laughs> Nothing much changes around here, does it? <laughs> it only makes it easier if people need to find us again. Are you back for good? No. I'm not sure what I'm doing yet. Yeah, you've just had a big, big walk. Now you're going to have a big, big drink. I could just do with one of them myself. Ooh, roll on dinner time. Aye, it's all sunbeds and rabbit food now we're finally moving to Lytham. 
Has she seen our local health and beauty expert in action? Mm -hmm. You need your fat. <laughs> you better put a couple of sausages in with that egg. <laughs> hey, you'll never guess who's turned up on Rita's doorstep. Jenny Bradley. Who? A lady very partial to other people's husbands. Mm. Wish I'd known. I've had a couple I'd gladly have given them. My mum's had a string of boyfriends. It's usually pretty awful. Hi. Hello, Jenny. I've said you were back. And I've just been hearing how you own this place now. With Alma. That's great. You and Martin still going strong? Oh, yeah. He's hung on in there. Yeah, they've got another kitty now, you know. Oh, wow. That's terrific. Really terrific, Gail. What about you? Well, Jenny's got her own flat and a gorgeous dog worth a fortune. She's done all sorts of things since leaving here. <laughs> it's not all it seems. No, it never is. <laughs> what can I get you? Just coffee and toast, thanks. Tracy? Same, please. Take a seat. That the man eater? In the flesh. Seems harmless enough to me. So did her father. What do you think, Betty? Should I or shouldn't I? Should you or shouldn't you what? Keep her on. The bunters like her. Do we? We're not sure. Has she said anything about stopping on? Too shrewd. Mm -hmm. She knows we need her while Jack goes off. Play it by ear for another few days, eh? Hmm. I think we might. Mm. Mm -hmm. You would have to ask for a rum and raisin. Two scoops and all. Do you think you can't even have an ice cream without a tickle in it? It's only flavouring, Vera. Here, she's here. Try and make a good impression. I am doing. Oh, thank you very much, Doreen. Very nice. Ah, oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> Look what I found. Oh, Jack, <laughs> just what you needed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd take the little one for a stroll along the front. Come and see the donkeys with Grandma. Oh, hey, that'd be nice. Oh, I meant, um, I meant with me, Vera, on our own. All oh, right. We won't go far. It's just that I don't know when he's going to get tired, you see. I, I know he had a long lion this morning, but... I'll be guided by you, Vera. You know his routine best. He changes so much by the time we get to see him. Grandma can't keep up with how fast he's growing. It'd be raring to go for hours yet, B. That's what I mean. I don't want him wearing Dory now. I'll bring him straight back if he gets touchy. <laughs> Come on, Tommy. Right, tell that Dory enough. She loves our little Tommy, Vera. Yeah, I know. She's going to have to work out what she wants to be called. What? Well, when our Tommy starts talking. We can't both be grandmas, can we? Yes, you can, Vera. That's the trouble with the staff canteen. It's full of staff. Well, I thought staff relations were the order of the day at your place. How do you mean? Better buys, better birds, isn't it? Sugar, vice and everything nice from what I hear. Hear from whom? Well, there's Andy and his Amy and, uh, well, Randy Reg, of course. Mind you, though, Liz got the wedding present back from the post the other day. I tell you what, they're like an, uh, Seriously recommend the more mature woman if there's one on the loose again. Best man in the bride, eh? Wouldn't be the first time, would it? Leave it out, will you? I've come in here to get away from work. No, I don't know what your problem is. All those women under your control. Liz, what can you suggest to a man who is seriously, and I mean seriously, disillusioned with his job? I suggest you stop pushing the same fate on younger blokes who could do hell of a lot better. What do you mean? Andy. Yes, Andy. Oh, come on, Liz. He approached me. You didn't exactly work hard at discouraging him, did you? Well, if it's what he wants. It's not a, a bad career, after all. The only two examples I've got to go by are you and Reg Ellsworth. I'm not getting any more excited by the prospect, Curl. Steady on, Liz. Come on, the vlog's only here for his dinner. No, no. It's all right. I'll forget the food. I'll uh, drink my pint as fast as I can, and then I'll leave. Whatever you like. Well, there was no need for that. You don't know anything about it. You're not a parent. Yeah, well, let's just say that I'm not inspired by the ones that I do know. 
Excuse me. Yes, mate. Well, what's it matter what I think? Because he's your brother. So? So? So it does not even matter to you what he gets up to? Of course it doesn't matter. Why should he? Forget it. All right, all right. What I first to say, marrying Amy and working at Better Buys for the rest of his life was the best decision he's ever made. Yes, but you don't really think that, do you? No. I reckon he's mad. Mind you, I always am. You're quiet. And you're new, Ken Barlow. Ah, Ken Barlow. That explains why you're quiet. It does? Well, you'll be missing Raquel. I believe you and her had a little bit of a thing going. What we had going was purely educational. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm sure it was. I'm a keen learner myself. <laughs> she plays that bar like a finely tuned instrument. I'll give her that. But I don't know, Betty. We'll see. Do you know, I've been looking forward to that all morning. I feel as if I'm living out a shaggy dog story. Yeah, but what's the punchline? Well, you're old and grey before you get there. That's the gag. Yeah, well, just make sure there is an end to it. Don't make Jenny too comfortable. Give her a chance, Al. She's only just arrived. Yeah, but why here? Why you? Why not me? OK, why now? You've been through a bad couple of years, you know. Yes, I know I have. And you're a wealthier woman now than last time Jenny was here. Truth be known, Al, I'm enjoying a bit of familiar company. Well, that's fine, then. All I'm saying is... Be careful. Make sure that you don't need her so much she can take advantage. Alf, I'm no novice where a Bradley's concerned. No, no, I know that, but don't set yourself up for another fall, love. <laughs> I'll get that iron out, girls. We can run it over our faces before tonight. Hey, every time you laugh or smile, it's supposed to increase your lifespan. You don't die locked your first. Well, I, for one, oh, I've had it. Oh. Do you know you've been a gem, Betty, love? <laughs> we'll see you tomorrow. Ah. Oh. What about tonight? Oh, no. I'll be all right again by then. We can manage, can't we, Tanya? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'll slip them all doubles. That'll slow them down. And they can drink bottled beer if they're in that much of a hurry. <laughs> you make a good team, you two. You've been Jack for us every night this week. That can't be easy on anybody. Anyway, I'll see you tomorrow, kiddie. Bye, Bye Betty. Bye, lovey. Bye. Put your feet up, Betty. I Lord. will, though. Oh, poor thing. It might be more than one staff member you're after before time. I want to be 100% sure of my last catch before I go casting the net again. Receiving you loud and clear, Bet. Good. Then we shouldn't have any problems. Put plenty of starch in that ironing. She's just too proud to ask for any help. You shouldn't have to ask, Tracy. You're working. You should be putting something towards the housekeeping. Well, I am doing. Well, that only goes so far. Look, she's got to get out there and get herself another job. Oh, listen to you. What? Well, it's not everybody who lands on their feet the way you have. Not if they don't make the effort. Rita, maybe. Thanks. What have I created? Would you be happier if she put in the bite on you? I found it slightly more palatable. Oh, hi, Jenny. Welcome back. Hi, thanks. She's been as good as gold, Jenny. We haven't heard a peep out of her, have we, Rita? No, not that that bodes well. Thanks for keeping an eye on her, Mavis. Go on, go up to her. Well, she did seem upset about something, didn't she? She did, yeah. I mean, I won't interfere or anything. Maybe she just wants to talk about something. Someone to play mother. Yeah. Well, while I'm doing that, you play news agent. Oh. What am I supposed to do now? Do you really hate me that much? 
Do the past few years mean anything to you? Fine, fine. Keep the lot. I don't care anymore either. Jenny? You know who that was, don't you? Robert. Can I help? I went to get some money from the bank today. He's all but cleaned out our joint account. Well, can he do that? He's done it. I wanted to contribute, Rita. I wanted to give you something towards having us here. Hey, never mind about that now. I'm getting plenty out of you just being here. Men, Rita! <laughs> There's nothing new I can tell you about them, is there? <laughs> I am glad, you know, that you found someone else after my dad. I'm just sorry it couldn't have lasted longer for you. Me too. Tell me about him. Well, he wasn't anything like your father, that's for sure. I'm not just talking about the bad times, Jenny. Ted was an older man, slower. Maybe not as, as exciting as Alan could be. But kinder, better for you. It made me feel worthwhile. You still miss him? More, as time goes on. And what would he have thought about your wayward foster daughter turning up? He would have welcomed you, not made any judgment. Just accepted you, just as you are. Sounds nice. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jenny, I could help you out. You know, I'd give you something to tide you over. Alone. No, no. No, you've bailed me out enough just by letting me be here. My finances aren't your problem. No, but how are you going to live? If you're sure. I am. And now that you're flush, you can buy me a drink. <laughs> Do you know, after all this time, I still hate walking at Roby's on my own. Then don't. Give me a minute to do a repair job, and then we'll walk in together. <laughs> Barmaids here the lot. You've got nothing on hairdressers. Oh, aye. And where's the hairdresser the minute she's set the last perm? Down a local, telling it all to the barmaid. Any time you want to bring your trade my way, I'll be your ears. How about bringing some trade my way and serving folk? Sorry about the wait, love. We're one down tonight. What can I get? What about you, Curly? Here, listen, I'll get this in exchange for a bit of your crack. Oh, yeah. And how will that be construed tomorrow? Thank I'm you. Sorry, I don't get you. Well, a bit of harmless chit chat is tantamount to conspiracy in your family. Oh, listen, just forget it, but can I have a pint, please, when you're ready, love? And then I shared one of Rita's many houses with a friend of mine. Andrew. She's not still around, is she? No. She went to Mexico. Oh, wow! Who did she come in to pay for that? Nobody. She's doing it all on her own. I'd be terrified without knowing there was somebody to fall back on. We think Curly was rather hoping it would be him. Wouldn't be a bad catch these days, would he? Bloke on his own. Manager's wage. He must be raking it in. <laughs> Andy never did know a good thing when she was on to it. Who's around, is it? He's not settling. Perhaps I should go up. They'll be having a little conversation with himself. He does that, you know, before he drops off. <laughs> Lisa used to do that when she was a baby. I always wondered what was going on through her mind. It hits me in waves, you know? Like the sea outside, calm for days, and then for no real reason, it comes crashing back, but she's gone. And I'll never see her again. Sorry. It's just uh, seeing Tommy and everything. I know. <laughs> Now, that is serious. Yeah, I'll go. <laughs> Let me. Well, it'll be all right, you know, he just dropped his bottle. We did all right today, Jack. Mm -hmm. Came up trumps. Beginner's luck, love. <laughs> Must be. <laughs> <laughs>
Vera, I've got those postcards in that you were asking me about this morning. Come on. All right. Oh, now then, here you go, Jack. Oh, Jeff, lad, you're a mind reader. Well, you enjoying it? Oh, cracking, cracking. Oh. <coughs> you know, you ought to take a walk down memory lane. Go out to some clubs at night. Clubs? They're tame compared to what went on at the holiday flats in my day. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Had a few practice runs before honeymoon, did we? Surely a young lad couldn't help himself, could he? I mean, it would tee me with beautiful young dancers on tour, you know. All oh, away from yeah. home, all lost and alone. Ah, well, you had to look after them, didn't you? You know, there were one Australian dancer. Oh. Australian, oh. eh? <laughs> yeah. What did she used to drink? Black velvet, that's what it were. Classically trained. Came up here to dance in Swan Lake. I'll tell you what, Jeff. She could jump higher than flaming kangaroo herself. <laughs> well, they do say they have all the power in the tail. <laughs> There's a lot of truth in that, Jeffrey. A lot of truth. <laughs> <laughs> Vera, what's all this then? What are you two talking about? Foreigners, Vera. Tourists. We were just saying they never leave Blackpool disappointed. <laughs> Oh, aye, there's always something to write home about. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah, well, get out of these, then, and get thinking. Vera, we're only here for seven days. We'll beat the flaming post. Well, get a pen in your hand instead of a pint. Come on, get busy. Uh, listen, Andy, I've been doing a bit of thinking. Good for you. Well, I've been thinking, uh, well, I've been thinking about you, you and Paula, really, you know what I mean? Paula? Uh-huh. Just like, you know, remembering how you were with her. Seems to me it's sort of like that with you and this here, Amy. It's completely different. You think so? Well, it's just, I mean, I can remember, you know, when you were saying she was the only girl for you, yes, Paula, you know, and nobody could tell you any different. Least of all, the wee girl herself. I know how I feel, Dad. And I'm not interested in anybody else's interpretation. A conversation's all I'm after, son. Yeah, well, that takes two. Hey, come on, Andy. Sit down, will you? You want me to shop around a bit more, is that it? Try before you buy. No, I just want you to take your time, OK? Do a bit of bed up in, yeah? What am I expected to get out of that? Well, <sighs> all right, look, a bit more knowledge, OK? Try and find out who you really want. And sex will do that, will it? Well, a few different experiences might just help. Well, uh, you were hardly a man of the world, were you? I mean, you had me and Steve on the way by my age. Yes, look, the curiosity doesn't go away, you know, once you're married. It's just you're not really in a position to do anything about it, that's all, you know, once, well, once you're committed. So, chuck it all away now? Throw away someone that I really care for, for a few passing flings? I'm committed now, Dad. I've had all that superficial stuff on offer at Sheffield. And I've also had time away from this here Amy, as you call her. I didn't like it. All I'm saying is the trouble is you're too much like me when it comes down to women, Andy. Well, you've got your chance now. Get yourself out there, get a string of women. No, no, no. It's completely different. It's more complicated than that. Yeah, it is, isn't it? And that's how I know exactly who I want to be with. Same as you do. I'm sorry if your plans have been upset by the fact that my son's throwing his life away on a girl he barely knows. I keep hearing this tired old cliché. Who says he is? I say! How do you know? Because I'm his mother. Yeah, and don't I know it? It's not something I can change very easily. of this place because I like it. I'm a mother because I chose to be and I happen to like that too. Together they're fairly well what I am. They keep me going. That's who you've taken on. Yeah, well, you wanted to be married once. You know, maybe you still do. You and Jim working it out together, are you? It isn't. It didn't work. So you got rid. Tell me, are you with me because you want to be or because you feel you have to be? Because you do have a choice, you know. I mean, just tell us how it is. You know how it is. Well, actually, I'm a bit slow. I need it spelled out. After all, 
I'd hate for anyone to accuse you of chucking your life away on me. <laughs> Double eight two five. Ah, yeah. No, no, no. We're just having our breakfast. Yeah, he's here now. It's more for you. Thanks. Our rollers. <clears throat> no. Things are just the way they were. We haven't really talked about it. Well, we can't just leave it there, Jim. Look, I don't want you to drop on him like a ton of bricks. Just make him understand how stupid he's being. The least we can do is persuade him to stay on for another term. Yes, well, I don't know if you remember or not, but the last time I had hard words with Andy, he told me a few things I didn't want to hear, you know what I mean? Oh, so we'll just give up on him, do we? Have him jack in university and struggle for the rest of his life? You keep using this word, we, love. I don't know whether you've noticed or not, but it's me here on my own. Besides, I don't think he'd listen to anything I had to say in the first place. I'm relying on you, Jim. Right, I'm getting a lift with Curly, see you later. Yeah. The thing is, Ken, when you're a casual shop assistant like me, you've got no comeback. Debbie Scott's dumped the corner shop and I've been dumped along with it. You got time for a cup of tea? No, no I've just had one, thank you. But there must be some redress, surely. How about redundancy payment? Oh, you're joking. Anyway, you've got to see it from Debbie Scott's point of view. All I've lost is a job. She's lost her husband. So how are things now, financially, I mean? Oh, I'll take over till something turns up. It's not desperate. Thing is, to prevent it getting desperate, I'd like to help if you'd let me. Not your problem, Ken. No, 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 it isn't. Nor do I say it is an obligation. I want to help because I want to help. Simple <sighs> as that. I've said no. Well, at least let me resume payments for Tracy, my overheads aren't. No, right. Ken. Look, that wasn't the deal. You pay for Tracy while she was still at school. She's earning now, so you owe us nothing. I didn't say it was some kind of debt I was repaying. No, I'm sorry, Ken. I shouldn't have said that. Look, I don't want your money. I'll manage on what Tracy tips up. Don't lie to me, Deirdre. Only married couples feel the need to lie to each other. You can be too proud for your own good sometimes. That's what you came round to tell me, is it? That I'm a proud liar. I came round to offer what help I could. Look, both of us know that Tracy isn't exactly the most selfless person on this planet. She talked about it, hasn't she? Oh, well, she's young, Deirdre. She's earning money for the first time. It's only natural. But she has mentioned it, hasn't she? Well... Oh, come on, Ken. I'm the liar. You always tell the truth. Tell you how I'm ripping her off, did she? Grabbing her hard-earned brass before she's even got a chance to spend it. <sighs> it wasn't like... Goodbye, that. Ken. At least give me some credit, Deirdre. I mean, I didn't automatically accept Tracy's version. Look, you want the truth? I'm in a mess, yeah. But not that big a mess that I need any help from you. Let myself out. <laughs> Look, today is just another dot on the calendar. You've got to put it out of your mind. <laughs> it's a day I should have become Mrs. Reginald Old. Well, it wasn't to be, was it? <laughs> it's all right, love. She's uh, just come off onions. <laughs> well, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen on another day, another dot on the calendar. <laughs> but it's all the plans and the reception. Oh, my dress! <laughs> Weddings get postponed for all types of reasons. So you've got to pull yourself together. For your sake as well as mine. I'm just selfish. I'm just being selfish. That's better. Now give me a smile. Great. I'll tell you what, keep it till break time and we'll have a cry together, all right? All right. I'm all right, Norman. Oh, thank you, Norman. All right. Oh, dear. What have you said to her now? I haven't said anything. I just said when she's finished there, will she help me with it? <laughs> oh, no, it's rice. So? Uh, come on, love. I'm sorry, Dad. All right. Five minutes, she said. Come on, fear, you'll have it dark. You won't need your raincoat, Jack. It's excess baggage, is that? Like Alvira, as you mean. <laughs> Less of it, you two, or I'll tell Vera. Take a chance. If it rains, it rains. And don't worry about young Tommy here. He's well fixed. Aye, Love you, little aye. fella. All set then, Jack. Aye, as soon as Alvira gets here, love I. Oh, buttoned up, aren't you? 
Let's undo a few no, of these. Don't, don't give a word. He can't get the air if he's all wrapped up, can he, Doreen? Taking his mac and all. Oh, he's taking it in case the grass is wet, aren't you, love? <laughs> he's such a gentleman. Right, I'll leave it then. Where have you been, woman? Now, you've got everything, haven't you, Doreen? I mean, there's food and now. Stop harping on, Vera, and get going. Laddie is dying of thirst. Hey! Now, I'm no booze in you. I'm not dragging you around Blackpool half gay like. As if. Look, let him live a bit, will you, Vera? Not as though you're short of brass, eh, Jack? Now, are you sure you'll be all right, Doreen? Just go, Vera. We'll see you back here about tea time. Come on, you. See you, Jack. See you, kid. It's your birthday. Stick with Jack. He'll give you a day you'll never forget. Now enjoy yourself. You'll see. <laughs> Thank you. Trace is not like Deirdre, that's for sure. It's more like her father, what I remember of him. Ray Langton. God help her. But I suppose all young people are like that nowadays, aren't they? You can say that again. Why don't we try go and have my lunch, if that's all right? Nice. Hello, Emily. Hello, yes, you Mays. get off. Look, Emily and I are just slagging off the younger generation. Oh, do you know, I'm so hungry. I could eat a horse. <laughs> Couldn't make that a dog, could you? Rita, people who don't like animals usually don't like people. I remember that. And that includes young people. She's fair having a go, isn't she? I started all this, I'm afraid. I'm telling Rita what a time Deirdre is having with Tracy. Anyway, oh. I'll go before you start hitting each other. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. See Bye, you Emily. Bye. You're not comparing your situation with Deirdre Farnos, are you? But she's got Tracy permanently, hasn't she? Well, there's that, I suppose, yeah. And Jenny's grown up a lot since you last saw her. She's changed, Rita. She still suits herself. That doesn't change. She'll be on the move soon. Then you can relax. Mm. Look, I must eat. Right, right. see you later. Right. Are you coming out, Mavis? Uh, yeah, I'm going home for lunch. Could you mind, Mitzi, for half an hour? I'd be dead grateful if you could. Well, uh, Half an uh, hour, that's all. I'll pick her up from your house. Now, don't let her out, will you? And don't feed her. Water. She can have a drink of water. I'll see you later. Yeah, well, I've tried. Your mother's tried, and it's just all been so much wasted talk. Well, why don't you let him go for it, then? I mean, let him leave university and get married if he wants to. It's his life to mess up, Dan. Yes, well, under any other circumstances, I would have said you're right. But I'm under pressure on this one from your mother. She does not want to see Andy throw all this away, you know? Well, you're not shifting. No, not me and my own, but perhaps if you and I have a stab at it, you know what I mean? Me? I need to pull this one off, Steve. Oh, I see, yeah. Uh, brownie points for me mum, you mean? Something like that, yes. So, who's auctioning this house of yours, then? It's a branch of Weatherfield properties. If Audrey doesn't get a move on, she's gonna miss it and all. Whatever possesses you to do this house? Well, Aren't auctions a bit risky? I want a quick sale, don't I? You see, the sooner I get rid of Brasmere Drive, the sooner I get Audrey to live on. But suppose somebody bids peanuts and they get it? No, no. It don't work like that. I put a reserve price on it, you see. And I'm not being greedy, neither. Well, it's not in your nature. No, mind you, if you saw the hassle I've had from Audrey about this blooming movie to Lytham. Anyway, that's all finished with. The house is going. Not so much pulling the rug, Al. Pulling the floorboards as well, are we? Got it in one. So you know these parts pretty well, then, such as they are. Brought up round here, yeah? Bet's been here some years and all. Forever, I think. No, oh, well, I'm not surprised. I mean, it's a little gold, my missus. Mind you, it's not run as professionally as it could be. Mm. I mean... Betty's past it. And Jack's as good as useless. <laughs> don't quote me on that, though, will you? <laughs> no, don't worry. Jack's still away, is he? Ah, uh, he's uh, in Blackpool back tonight. Mm. Troops are pretty thin on the ground. Yes, Lord. Oh, hey. now, if you want a drink, you'll have to get a move on. Uh, Half a cat because Gail's just phoned. Little Sarah Louise is fretful. So I'm picking her up now from Sally's and I'm taking her back to our place. It's the auction they're doing the house today. That's what I've come to tell you. I'm not going oh. because I'll be at home looking after Sarah Louise. Oh, yes, and I'm taking the car. Bye, <sighs> Bye Audrey, love. Here's another trick, is this, you know? Another I'm... obstruction. What do you mean now? I don't know, but there's something in the wind. I can smell it. Anyway, hard luck. The house is going, Bet. Going, going, gone. I'll have another pint, please. No, I know why they call them fortune tellers, because it costs a fortune. It's only money, Vera. I mean, we've got it flaunted. You haven't got any money, I keep telling you. We're doing all right so far, aren't we? Oh, I've had a lovely day. Mind you, it'll be bread and dripping rest of the week. What are you doing? Now then, Sir Gordon. South beer when you're ready, Cocker. Hey, come on, get in, Vera. Hey, you 
Oh, 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 oh. Well, I backed it once or twice, didn't I? I've got to support it in its old age. <laughs> oh. You're mad, you are. Yeah, Do you know how much money. they cost? It's only money, Vera. Um, driver, slowly past the waxworks. The wife wants to wave to her relations. <laughs> 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 I just took her for a walk around the block. She's ever so obedient. That's not the point, Mavis. Jenny said she'd be half an hour. Well, where is she? Oh, look, Rita, don't you fall out with Jenny on my account. Did you get any dinner? Yeah, I want some soup. Well, that's not good enough. When she comes back, she's going to get a right ear bashing. No, Richard, not to use me as an excuse to fall out with Jenny. She lumbered you with that dog. I don't mind if it helps her sort out her problems. What problems? Well, I don't know, but she must have some, mustn't she, to come back here. I mean, all I'm saying is it can't be easy for her, especially after what happened. I mean, people pointing her out as Alan Bradley's daughter wherever she goes. I'm a right nagger, aren't I? Well, I didn't say that. Did I? But you, you just have a way of. Well, go on, go on. Well, of making your feelings felt. I mean, a look, a remark. Jenny won't stay around here any longer than she needs to, believe me. You were saying I've not made her feel very welcome. Well, I'll have to try a bit harder, won't I? Put my head in a bag and keep my gob shut. You and that dog won't do any work today. Oh, come on, Mitzi, I'll take you in the bath. Hiya, guess what? I've got a job. Start at the Robbers tonight. <laughs> well, thanks for looking after her, Mavis. You need feeding, don't you? I'll see you later. Come on, Mitzi. Come on. This way. Come on. <laughs> now, are you sure it's spare bottles in? I put it in, yeah. I wrapped it in his little face cloth. <laughs> Just look at him, drunken pig. He's supposed to be working tonight. Oh, leave him here. I'll post him on Red Star. Oh, don't thank me. <laughs> Vera, suitcases are in boot. Uh, look, I could run your way to Weatherfield if you'd like. It's no bother. No, it's all right, Jeff. No, you've done enough. Train will be fine. Then we can get a taxi at the other end. Well, if you're sure. But how are you going to manage Jack? Oh, don't worry about him. Short, sharp kick where he keeps his brains. I'll sort him out. <laughs> all done and dusted. I'll carry him out to the car. You know, you were happy here with us. You were no bother, were you, Doreen? We were lovely. Hey, listen, thanks for everything. We've had a lovely time. And you've been smashing, Cheryl. Oh, it was my pleasure, love. I just wish you could stay another week. <laughs> I shall miss him. There'll be other times, won't there, Vera? Yeah, of course there will. I'll tell you what, love. Why don't you and Vera take Tommy out to the car and me and Shirley will sort Jack out? Yeah. Right. Now, are you sure you can manage, Doreen? Fine. He'll be asleep in no time at all. <laughs> <sighs> Who does he remind me of? Now then, I reckon we'd best get an arm each. Well, are you going to help me or what? It's Charles Bronson, isn't it? Doesn't he have a look at Charles <laughs> Bronson? Surely, give over, will you? Now then, one, two, three, lift! Oh, oh, God. Go on, Jack. You know, I'll tell you we don't see much of these days. That fella used to keep his money in his cap. He got married. Give over. Yeah, he did, according to Phyllis. Uh, Charlie, uh, what was his name? Anyway, married quite well, apparently. A woman in Salford with property. Blimey, you'll need a bigger cap then, won't he? <laughs> hey, thought your mum was looking after Sarah. What's up? Sarah's in the car, love. I can't do anything with her. She just wants some home. Oh, go on, get your coat and get off with Audrey. I mean, she's weeping all the time. I just couldn't settle. Oh. Are you sure you can manage? Yeah, go on, get on. I think she's sitting in for something. I mean, she's not got a rash or anything, but her little forehead's so hot. Be on the safe side, Gail. Call the doctor. Yeah, I will. Thanks, ma'am. Hey, listen, I'll give you a hand in here when I've run them home. A bit of exercise will do me good. No, no, it's all right. I'll, uh, I'll call Phyllis. Thanks, Alma. I'll let you know. Yeah, you just you get up and look after your daughter. So, what's Phyllis got that I haven't? Well, I mean, she just knows her way around, Audrey. Yes, but she can't get around, Alma. She's ancient. Listen, lovey, look, I've got time on my hands. I've set that daft auction. Yes, and that's where you ought to be, too. So just get yourself down there while you've still got time. And see my house flogged from under me. No, thank you. 
OK, if you prefer Phyllis, you better phone her. Just hope she's not out jogging or something. Oh, come on, Audrey. You've got enough on your plates. Ah, but I won't have any plates left soon, will I? Or a kitchen to put them in. 122. Excuse I've got me. 122 on my right. 122 for the superior detached residence. You buying or selling? Oh, I'm selling. I remind you again that it's a freehold property, two of its five bedrooms, en suite. I thought I'd not seen you before. I just come in out the weather. Well, it makes a change from the library. 122. Is this one yours? No, no, no. Oh, I thought it might have been. 123. You're choking the life out of that brochure. Thank you. 124. I've got 124 with you, sir. 125. Freehold property, fountain view. Any more? 125. Sold at £125,000, Chetlow. It's not his real name, you know. Eh? Him and his brother are builders. Oh, they rip the guts out of that place, make it into flats. What number's yours? Uh, number five. Grass me a drive. No, I meant in there. Oh, it's last one. Listen, I think I'll, I'll, I'll just go get a bit of fresh air, you know, I'll stretch my legs a bit. Ah, well, you don't want to Number miss it. Three on your list lick, now, you ladies know. and gentlemen. Oh, well, the, uh, 15 oh, Coronation Street, Weatherfield, corner shop property with stock, fixtures and fittings, rented accommodation above, currently occupied. So who'll start me off at 30,000? I have 30,000 at the back. 32,000. 34,000. Put him down for five minutes. I'll feed him when he gets up. Jack! Come on, you lazy pig. You've got work to go to. What? Come on, get washed and changed. Come on. What? <laughs> What's this? No, what? what? Get, get off. Where did you get this? What? This. You had not when we went, and you didn't back up while we were there, so where did you get it from? Look, get ready and go to work, you just said. Where, Jack? Oh, I see. That Jeff Orton. He greased you. Fucking okay, we're on holiday, is it? Do it did. Show us a good time. Backhanded you. He offered you a bribe and you took it. Oh, no. How much, Jack? Let me be over 100 quid well, here. Yeah, how much? Know. I don't know. 100 to 100. I don't know. We just stuffed it in my pocket. I couldn't have set the lad, could I? Promised to take out on me next week, did yeah. you? Eh? Rent him out to the Hortons for the duration. No. Bye. Every man has his price, but I tell you what, he's overpaid you. She you shame me, Jack Duckworth. Shamed me! Fifty-five thousand, then? Any more bids? Any more? <coughs> Sold at 55,000 to the gentleman at the back. If you'll give your details to the clerk, sir. You've just bought a <coughs> shop, you know. Hey? Bit new at this game, are you? Next on your hymn sheet, ladies and gentlemen, five Grassmere Drive, Weatherfield. Brick built, hey, semi detached no, no. property. No, I'm not selling. Uh, 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 I, I, I've changed my mind. All right, Dad. Uh, money bags and seconds for the day. Uh, Swift off, that's all. Dad, I've uh, prepared some tea. Oh, well, thanks very much. And I'm eating at Amy's, all right. Fine. And if you're going to mention what I think you're going to mention, you can forget it. I'm buying it, aren't I? I don't mention what I like. Hello. Uh, yes, can I speak to Mrs. McDonald, please? Yes, it's Mr. McDonald. I'll be all right. I'm sleeping at Debbie's. Spending a lot of time at Debbie's, aren't you? Doesn't Mrs. Dawson mind? Does she? Oh, why don't you ask Debbie to stay here one night? Make her welcome. 
There's more room there, isn't there? I'll see you. Just a minute. What? I had your dad here this morning, offering to submit on my next pools win. What have you been telling him? It's only me dad. What's wrong with him helping out any road? I don't want it from him, Tracy. Oh, no, but you'll take it from me, won't well, you? You live here. He doesn't. Hey, what do you think I used to buy that lot? Brass buttons? Right. You want money, you can have money. Here. Don't be Here's stupid, money. Tracy. Right, that's all of it. Satisfied Tracy. now. Tracy! Tracy! Tilt the glass slightly and pull steadily. Then just straighten up to put the head on. Come here, let's have a go. I can't sack her, though, can I, Reed? I thought you'd be glad she were earning. She said she only wanted to stop temporary. Don't look like it, does it? And who was going to walk that Mitzi while she's in here? Hey, now I asked her that. She said Mavis had volunteered. I thought you'd be on my side. I wanted is my best man. Well, I will when the time comes. Of course I will. Time's here, mate. Well, listen, just do us a favour, will you? Talk to the old man. He's got a lot riding on this. Oh, yeah, I know. Mummy comes back to Daddy on condition I get rid of Amy and go back to university. Stinks, doesn't it? Shut it, cos he's here. Do you want a pint, then? Uh, no, you're all right. Just want a wee word with your brother. Well, go on. Message from your mother. She's coming over for tea tomorrow and she'd like you both to be there. Both of you? You and Amy together. Now, it's not an order, it's a request. But you'd be delighted if you'd condescend to be there. You know what I mean? Well, it could have been worse. I could have asked to see the three of you. I reckon Sarah Louise is sickening for chicken pox. Mm. Which uh, will put Gail out of action, wouldn't it, that would? Looks like you'll be stuck with Phyllis for the duration. You're hitting below the belt order. Well, you started it. Actually, I think I will nip over to Gail's and see what the doctor said. Mm. Then I'd better get home and catch up with my husband. Oh! Have you still got a home? I thought Alfred just sold it. Now who's hitting <laughs> below the belt, you tonight? Oh, how is he? You look as rough as I feel. Bad day. Oh, horrendous. Administering to Maureen. Who? Reggie's ex. All oh, right. Do, do you want a pint? Yes, please. So, what's up with her? Well, she should have got married today. So? Well, she's upset, isn't she? What about? I've just told you. Oh, about Reg slipping the news, sir. You don't like to see a fella get away with out, do they, son? I didn't sell it, you know. The house? No, well, uh, the shop came up first, you know, at the auction, like. A knockdown price, Audrey. <laughs> I made a bundle. You didn't, did you? You have, haven't you? become institutionalised. Well, how do you mean? Well, like them long-term prisoners, when they dread being released because they can't face life outside. What, you mean you think Alf can't face life outside the shop? Well, either that or he's just plain barber. Oh, no, come on, you said yourself he made a good profit on it. Well, so he reckons. No, I don't think that's why he did it. I honestly think he saw a chance to buy the shop back and he couldn't help himself. I mean, he were up at seven this morning. Pissed off seeing him in many a long while. Oh, I suppose that's something. Making lists of everybody's got a seat to death, solicitors, wholesalers. I said, what about me? I said, all them folk I'm going to have to see and explain that my husband's gone and bought his old shop back. Audrey, 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 can I, can I just say something? What? Well, I thought it was you that had gone off the idea of retirement because you didn't want to spend all your time together. Yes, but I mean, I don't want to put the clock back, do I? I don't want that drudgery of being tied to that till. Audrey, you have never been tied to any till. Mentally, mentally I was, and I will be again. 
Oh, because I married the one man in the whole history of grocery who's gone and bought his own shop back. You're not Gail Platt. You get the first one to notice. Well, you see, you're so alike. Give over. <laughs> no, I'm standing in for that. But if you'd like to tell me what you want, I'll try and get to you. All right. Well, that's £12.80 up to today, love. Thank you, love. And then could you please cancel them? A good. Newspapers, magazines, everything. Can't afford them anymore. Oh, well, that's a shame. I always think opening a newspaper in the morning is like opening the windows on the world. It's good, isn't it? She's had no special training. No, I do, because I think newspapers help to make us all feel that we're part of the same society with the same values and interests. Do you know, I just wish I'd written it all down. I could have had a boot with now. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, Mavis, but I'm opting out. OK, but... If you ever feel like opting back in again, there is no way. I will, thanks, love. Hello. Hiya. Anyway, I'll see you later. All right, Ta -da, love. Bye. Ta -da. Bye. Still separated from the husband of hers, is she? She is, yes. I mean, they still seem to be friendly, though. I don't think there's any animosity. You know, I think all that good friend stuff is pathetic. If relationships collapse, then let them collapse for good with everyone ending up hating one another. Oh, well, I suppose that's one way of looking at it. Though not a very compassionate one. Actually, Mavis, I was wondering if you mind taking Mitzi for a walk. Oh, no. Only I'm working in the Rovers. Oh, no, I don't mind. I shall enjoy it. Oh, that's great. She's using you. You do realise, yeah, don't you? She's not. I like dogs. I always have. Yeah, I could tell that. Whereas I don't think you're a doggy person at all, are you, Rita? Dog eared happen. Well, I'll bring her down now so you can take her home with you when you're finished. I'm not going to enjoy this. Well, then don't go. I'm his mother. Putting her foot down because her son's brought home the wrong girl. Well, I think he has. Yeah, well, we always do bring home the wrong girls, don't we? At least as far as our mothers are concerned. Anyway, I shouldn't be more than a couple of hours. I'll try and be back before you get busy. You look gorgeous. Take as long as you need. Hi, Bob. All right. No. Family business to attend to. <laughs> See you later. All right, yeah. Husband, you've been hard time, has he? Well, from what I can gather, they uh, take it in turns. Son's turn this week. <laughs> You'll not let me go on, will you? You only want a cup of tea and a sandwich. Ah, well, you'll have to have a ham one. Say, be putting them away. Yeah, no. Great, what's well, he doing here? Someone trying to get away from you. Oh. I don't think it was time I was calling up. Hey, do you fancy a drink when you've done? Yeah, all right. I know I'm rotten company, love, because I keep moaning on, but I think I've arrived. Oh, yes, you have. You anyway, have. listen, I need a bit of moral support. I mean, what are folks going to say when they find out? After all that palaver when he retired. I mean, presentation and so forth, mm. huh? Just when you thought it was safe to go back into your corner shop, the monster returned. Oh, come on, he's not a monster. Oh, that's a matter of opinion. No, you know, I think folks will be pleased to see him back after all the upheaval there's been in that shop. No, they won't. Because they will either say that he's greedy and he's doing it for the money, or they'll say he can't stand his wife, so he's doing it to keep away from her. They won't understand that he has a compulsion. He needs psychiatric help. I'll see you. Well, you've had Dad dusting and polishing this morning since you got up, getting ready for this big peace conference of yours. <laughs> well, I wouldn't bank on there being much peace about it, mate. Yeah, well, that's where I'm steering well clear. Where's Amy, though? I mean, I thought she was in on all this. Yeah, supposed to be. But I thought, well, I know exactly what they're going to be saying. So I didn't really think it was fair on her. Marching her in there so they can both have a go. So she's not coming? She wanted to, like, but I said, don't worry about it, I'll sort it out myself. Well, they're not going to be happy about that, are they? Well, look it. Look, she doesn't have to answer to them, Steve. If they want to have a go at someone, they can have a go at me. Two men, eh? Yeah. I hope I don't remember them. To be their age and good-looking is what they are. No, I don't. What's a miserable time in your life is that I wouldn't go through that again, not for a million pounds. <sighs> well, I'm going to tell you something to make you more miserable. What? You're not going to get a chance. Uh, glad you could make it. Of course I could make it. This is important. Yeah, I just, uh, meant... <laughs> I didn't mean anything, really. Well, everything looks in good order. 
Yeah, well, that's the way it looks. Do you want a cup of tea or something? No, we may as well wait till they get here. Yeah, sure. So what are we going to say to him? Well, I suppose the main thing to do is try and persuade him to stay on at university, you know? Is it her telling him he shouldn't? Well, that's what we're going to find out. You don't think she might be pregnant? <laughs> that's something else we're going to find out, isn't it? I could do without this. Look, I know uh, some people are going to say that we're in no position to judge, you know? You two miles down the road, me living here on my own. But we are the lad's parents, you know? Well, yeah. So, let's just forget what's going on between us or whatever, and uh, I think we should stick together in this. So do I. I wouldn't be here if I didn't. No, right. How do? Yeah, I'm all right. Hey, be your last week, is it this? Hey. Of your holidays. Back to university soon, innit? Uh, should be, yeah. Well, good luck to you. Plenty of women, though, eh? Um, quite a few does, yeah. See, when I was at school, they talked about university like it was all academic, you know, work and books and stuff. Never really interested me. They talked a bit more about, well, birds and booze. Might have got me grades higher. Probably gone to Oxford. Anyway, good luck. See ya. See ya, Daz. So... Excuse me, how long a wee minute? Where's the wee girl? She's not coming. What? She's not coming? No. <sighs> now, excuse me, Andrew, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the whole purpose of this was all of us sit around and have a nice discussion about this. Uh, why is she not coming? Because I didn't think it was a very good idea. Oh, you didn't? Yeah, that's right. She wanted to come, but I said no, all right. Oh. Thank you. Oh, Mum, she doesn't have to answer to you. It's not a matter of answering to me. I'd like to talk to her. I'd like to know why she thinks that you should leave university. Why she thinks you should throw your future away because of her. All right, well, it's just me, OK? I'm sorry. Right, well, we're wasting our time. Hey, now, we're... Liz, hang on. Well, on. no, we've already heard what he's got to say. The idea was that we all sit and talk about it together. Oh, yeah, so you could have a go at her? No, oh. not to have a go at her. Anyway... Suppose we did. What are you frightened of? Can she not speak up for herself? Oh, this is pointless. I don't even know why I came. Never mind. Yeah, well, I don't know why I did hey, either. Oh, whoa, no, just hang on. Look, the pair of you had just come through the front door. Now you want to turn around and walk out of it again? Yeah, because the person I came to see isn't even look, here. Look, maybe Andrew feels he can speak for Amy, OK? Isn't that right? Well, yeah, I suppose. Right. No, he can't. Look, come on, let's just give him a chance, OK? Let's sit down, let me make a nice cup of tea and we can discuss this like sensible human beings, OK? Instead of screaming at each other like a load of banshees, OK? You should have brought her. So you've cancelled my magazines as well? Not deliberately. It was just because I was cancelling the whole order. And you go on to me about how I should cooperate and how we should discuss everything together and then you cancel something of mine without so much as a word. If you still want your magazines, tell Rita and she'll keep them for but you. But why should I have to when they were already being delivered? Because that meant that I was paying for them and I can't afford to anymore. Look, Tracy, if you still want your magazines, you order them and you pay for them, OK? Yeah. And I'm very sorry that I didn't consult you. Now then, we're having Addock, and I'm consulting you. Do you want poached egg with it? No, Tom. Shall I tell Rita you still want your magazines? I'll get her to keep them for you. No. I was going to cancel them anyway. What? I've grown out of them. So why do you have to leave university? Because I want to. Because you want to? Yeah. Not because Amy wants you to. No, come on. She's a child who's trying to persuade me to go back. Oh, you expect us to believe that? Oh, so I'm a liar now, is that it? Well, it is a wee bit strange, you know? I mean, she's the reason you want to leave university, yet she wants you to stay at university. Yeah, she does. I told you. We're always arguing about it. So why? 
I'm leaving because I want to. See, for me, all this is dead simple. Oh, yeah? I want to be with Amy, and I can't if I go back to Sheffield, so the conclusion is I don't go back to Sheffield. Yes, but Sheffield's not a million miles away, you know. Exactly. Just because you go back doesn't mean you stop seeing her. Look, can't you understand? I don't want to be a student anymore. Not in Sheffield, not anywhere. Well, what do you want to be, then? Oh, no, I've not really sorted <laughs> that out yet. Oh, but what right. I do know is I want to be with Amy. I want us to have a home together. Which is what you two wanted, so I can't see why it's so difficult to understand. Well, yeah, but it wasn't the same for us, was it? No. Why not? Because we had you and your brother. We had children, so we had to get a home. Yeah, well, maybe it's not as different as you think. Is she pregnant? No. Well, what then? She's already got a child, a little boy. What? His, name's, a nip. his name's Dominic. He's five years old. <sighs> Oh, well. Five? It's all coming out now, isn't it, eh? So, how old's she, then? Amy's 23. And, uh, what about the father of this wee lad, eh? Well, there isn't one. Well, I mean, obviously there is one, but... She hasn't seen him for ages, hasn't seen him for years. Oh. Now I can see why you didn't want to bring her out. Oh, I knew you'd react like that. Well, how the hell do you expect us to react? I mean, now it appears you're taking on a whole family. Yeah, so? So? You're giving up your education to support a woman who's a good deal older than you and she's already got a child by somebody else? I think you're absolutely crazy. <laughs> Failed to see anything wrong in all this. How come we've only just found out about this child, eh? Now, why in the name of God didn't you mention that from the start? Because he's got nothing to do with you. Oh. But it's what's making you leave university. And not just Dominic, now. Did you reckon we wouldn't find out about this child? I mean, were you going to keep it a secret or what? Of course I wasn't. Five years old. You're not that far in front of him yourself. Oh, well, there's no point in talking to you, is there? <sighs> you know, I've got to say, Andy, I'm surprised Amy would even want this. You, 19 years old, trying to be a father to a child that's already part grown up. I know. I'm surprised at all. Yeah, well, it wasn't planned, you know. I mean, it just sort of happened. Mm. Yeah, all right, I can believe that. But now that you can see it is happening, do you really believe you've got the future together? The three of you? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, sonny boy, you have not. Oh, well, thanks, Dad. Cheers. It's the truth, Andy. I know it's painful, but you've got to listen. It's hard enough living together when you've got things in your favour, but when it's like this... You're setting yourself up for a load of misery and unhappiness, son, and think about the wee lad, will you? Cos I tell you, you're just setting him up for a dose of the same thing, so you are. And that's the truth, is it? Yeah, I'm afraid it is. Well, shall I tell you what I think the truth is? Go on, then. All you're doing is finding excuses. Excuses? Why in the name of God would we be looking for excuses? Well, weren't you pleased when I mentioned Dominic? Hey, didn't you just jump on that? And why? Because it gave you exactly the excuse you needed. We're the last people who need excuses. There's a whole world of reasons why you and Amy getting together is inviting disaster. Yeah, but there's one, isn't there? There's one real reason why you want me and Amy to split up. And nobody dares say it, so I'll say it for you, shall I? Go on. The real reason you want me and Amy to split up is because Amy's black. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, I see. That's the real reason, is it, eh? That's a terrible thing to say. Why? Because it's true. It's not true at all. It's a nasty, ugly thing to say, and me and your dad don't deserve that. Well, I think it's even nastier and uglier when it's there and nobody dares say it. But it's not there and it never has been. Look, has Amy been talking about this? I mean, is she under the impression that this is what this is all about? The colour of her skin or what? I don't even have to ask her. Oh, I see. You, you, you just know, you know. We don't say anything, but you can read our minds. Is that it? Well, yeah, I probably can. Oh. No, you probably can't. So, anyway, that's the real reason why I didn't bring Amy, all right? And it's exactly the same reason why I won't be setting foot in this place again. Andy. Hey, Liz, look, leave him, leave him away, leave him, leave him go. You all right? Yeah, I'm all right, yeah. You know, like you are when you're in love. And everybody's dead happy for you. So she lets you come out for a drink on your own, then, does she? Yeah. But she wouldn't if she thought I'd be serving you. Mm. I don't think it'd have made a lot of difference. <clears throat> well, it would have done once upon a time. 
She nearly kicked you out on account of me. Yeah, I know it's ludicrous, isn't it? Eh? Thank you. Cheers. All right. All right. How did it go? <coughs> Absolutely terrible. Do you want another? Yeah. Two pints of lager, please, Jan. Right. Oh, bet. Whatever this young gentleman's having. You'll never have any money. I don't care. They want nothing to do with it, do I have? Another half, is it, purse? No, uh, go on, then. Is it tomorrow you're going to the sea wedding? No, it is. I'm not expecting to enjoy myself. So don't carry a torch for all of do you? No, I do not. I just think it's a shame a woman of her age can't be content with her memories. She has to go throwing herself at somebody else. But with older women, you don't apply that rule as well, do you? Well, I told them about Dominic. Oh, they like that. Not a lot. And then I said they were against us because Amy's black. You don't do things by half measures, you, do you? Well... They're not racist. No. Still, it'll give them something else to think about now, I mean, as well as having this kid. I just... I just don't know why they can't see how lovely she is. I mean, that's all that matters, isn't it? There you are. Oh, gosh! Yeah, well, it's not cordon bleu, but it's what I do best. And after tonight, I figured the last thing we needed was a culinary disaster, you know? <sighs> we certainly don't. So, can I get you a drink or something? Is the whiskey allowed? It certainly is. Mind you, it'll have to be a large one. It's not an evening for half measures. Can I ask you something? Yeah, what? Were you, you know, aware of Amy's colour? Yeah, yeah, I was, yeah, I was aware. Yeah, I was. But that wasn't the reason. No. The reason I was against them getting together? No, it had nothing to do with it, nothing at all. No, it was nothing to do with it for me either. See, I better point something out to you, love. It might come as a bit of shock to you. You might not have noticed, but I'm Irish, you know. No. Ah, you see, you never spotted it. <laughs> Only the first minute I met you. Exactly. These things you just cannot avoid. But it does not make you prejudiced, does it? And I don't dislike her. She's a very nice person. It's just... Mm. We child, I know. What chance have they got? Well, we've said our piece. There's not a lot more we can do. Do you think it would have been different if we'd been together? No. No. Besides, we are together, as far as this is concerned. We're still a family. Must be. It's only a family that would carry on ranting and raving at each other the way we do, eh? Of course, I didn't know you then. So whatever Liz said, I believed her. Like what? Oh, no, no, no. No, I can't repeat that. I mean, I don't want to be the cause of you and Liz falling out, do I now? Right, cheers, now. Got to get home to the wife, have we? Mm, yeah, or she'll come chasing after me with a rolling pin. You know, like they do. Well, you'll have to catch one when I'm not working. We can have a proper chat. Yeah. Some, some out. Mm. You put a bit of a twinkle in your eye. Martin? Used to be a good friend of mine before he got married. Oh, I and how good. About as good as you can go. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know, it's funny, often friendships like that can outlast a lot of marriages. And will you have a drink, Mr. Subden? No, thank you very much. You know, I've had my ration. We've got a wedding to attend tomorrow. Yes. No, I'm just saying because you don't want to be up all hours. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Sounds as if you're under a curfew. Probably am. And why not? He controls every other aspect of my life. Oh, that summertime says I've got to do. See if Deirdre wants her old job. Oh, would well, you know, I'd get over there now if I were you. Well, she might have got another one by now. I very much doubt it. She was cancelling her papers this morning. Oh, well, I better go and ask her then. I mean, good staff are hard to find. Oh, oh. Yes, indeed. I thought they were dead set on retirement. Yes, but not together. But she won't be. Uh, did you? Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Could I ask you something on behalf of my husband? Oh, what? You haven't got another job yet, have you? No, no, I haven't. 
How would you like your old one back? What, you mean? Same shop, same boss, same overall. Oh. Uh, so you're not retiring? No. He's bought it back again, has he? Yes! Isn't it wonderful? Oh. You see, he went to the sale. Oh, really? I'm see. going out. All right, then. And we thought I'd let you know so you don't start accusing me of doing things behind your back. Well, I'm very glad you did. Just don't start asking what time I'm going to be in, because I don't know. So, got it like that, and the house was still there. So it's all worked out so well. <laughs> so, I can tell how often it can count on you, can I? Well, yes, but what happened to the retirement? Ah. Well, Alf enjoyed it so much that he's going back to work. In another year, he's going to do it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Right, I'm off. Right, see you, mate. Hey, give her me love, won't you? Just so she knows the old family ain't against her. Yeah, of course we'll. See you later, mate. He works so hard. Gets to university and then when everything's in front of him, he throws it all away. And we've done the same. It's as if any of us can't stand to be happy. Well, I could stand a lot more of this. A lot more of you being here. Oh, never mind my family, I'm neglecting my pub now. No. I reckon I'd probably survive for one night, love. If you wanted to stay here. Would you mind? Mind. That's what I've been praying for. Why didn't you wake me? I saw you just gone seven. I was going to bring you breakfast in bed. Oh, no, nothing for me, thanks. I'm late enough as it is. I should have gone back last night. I don't even know closed up or anything. Oh, God, look at the state of me. Listen, I think they'll probably have survived without you for one night. Besides, I think you look very attractive in the morning, so I do. Did Andy come back? No, he didn't. I expect he stayed the night with Amy. Uh, listen, can I get you a cup of coffee at least? Uh, no, Jim, honestly. So, I suppose I'll see you later then? Yeah, I suppose. Well, will I or will I not? We have just spent the night together, Liz. We need to talk, don't we? I'd rather just take one thing at a time, if you don't mind. Right now, I just need to get back. OK, sorry, I didn't mean to push you. No. Let's just take it gently, eh? I'll speak to you soon. Whatever you say. I hope that's the kind that melts in your mouth, not in your hand. 17 Jubilee Terrace. We were on the phone yesterday morning complaining because there were chocolate all over at football results. That's better. Probably all over at the agony column. Fellas never admit to that, do they? Earth to Mavis. Oh, I'm sorry, Rita. Oh, that's all right. I get like that myself. You know, when the tannin counts low, is it time for a brew yet? You know, I was just musing. A country's dogs say a lot about the national character, don't they? Well, I'd never give it much thought. Yeah, well, I mean, for example, take the French poodle. It's chic and well turned out, just like the French. And then there's the British bulldog. Sturdy, reliable. Then there's the Japanese Akita dog. Like Mitzi. I mean, it's inscrutable. Calm exterior, but who knows what deep thoughts are going on inside. Well, it's probably wondering when it can lollop about without half a dozen pups weighing it down. Oh, you can mock, Rita, but there's a lot in what I say. Listen, you get the tea and I believe out your line. Have you seen that, Mavis? You don't look at me. I didn't do it. Well, it, it must have been Mitzi. I, I thought she needed a lie down when she came back from a walk last night. You mean you took her into our house and gave her my best slippers to chew? Well, they need a lot of rest, Derek. I mean, haven't you noticed it's a Japanese characteristic? That's why they're good at making cars, so they don't have to walk far. I'm not having it, Mavis. Well, it must have been her hormones. I don't care what it was. She stays out of our house in future. But it won't happen again. Look at that. 
It's ruined. Oh, no. It only looks ruined. But who knows what's going on, what that slip is thinking beneath those inscrutable teeth marks. What are you burbling on about, Rita? I thought you were on my side. I am. I'm just trying to understand the situation. Otherwise, my life's intolerable. Oh, rhubarb. So how did you meet and go? You've not said a word. Not wonderful. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. Why was that, then? Oh, you know, Andy and his new girlfriend. It's a bit complicated to go into. How did the new cocktail promotion go, anyway? Oh, it was all right. Some of the uh, yuppies quite liked it. Must have been pretty complicated for you to stay out that long. What time did you get back last night? Oh, I don't remember exactly. Late. But sorry if I put you out. No, I don't mind holding the fort, you know. Especially for a family emergency. A quick phone call wouldn't have gone amiss, though, you know. Just let me know what was happening like. Yeah, it was a bit difficult. How about you, anyway? Did you try the new cocktail? Yeah, I'm an old-fashioned bitter man myself, you know. I find these uh, fancy inventions a bit rich for my liking. A bit disorientating. I prefer to know where I am. Well, that's a car washed and polished. Now, what's the next on the agenda? I don't have an agenda, thank you. No, I've got a list of things that won't do in here. Oh, there they are. Check them off. <coughs> have a look. Clean and polish car. I can take that off. That's done. Check oil and water. Yes, that's done. We're only going to the other side of town. Yes, I know, but you've got to be prepared for any eventuality. Nobody couldn't abide anybody being late, neither can I. Oh, by the way, I've uh, planned a special route to the church to avoid bottlenecks. I don't know if it meets with your approval. Mr Sugden, this is Olive Clark's wedding, not the North Africa campaign. We don't have to leave the house for another hour and a half. Now, the only thing on my agenda is to have a quiet cup of tea and then get change. Yes, well, I prepared for all that. I thought I could be cleaning my shoes while you were in the bathroom. That way it would save me disturbing you while you were out near eleven. This. Anything you say. Oh, heck, I forgot to clean the inside of the car. I best do that while I think about it. Oh, dear me. Have you any idea where the dust spanner brush is? I'm going upstairs. I'll see you later. Oh, by the way, we you camp at uh, 12.30 hours, according to the new schedule, not 12.15 hours, Mrs Bishop. Just thought I'd mention it. Away for good. How you doing, Bob? Sure's a grand day, eh? Yeah. Hi, love. You, uh, you left this at the house this morning. So, well, I just brought her in, in case you've been needing it, you know what I mean? This is not a good time, Jim. So this is how things got complicated, is it? Was there anything else? Uh, no. No, 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 I think that's just about it. Yeah, well, I've got someone else. Me notice. You can find yourself another mug. This one's had enough. Uh, listen, if uh, this is inconvenient, I can come back at another time, you know what I mean? Why don't you do that? Yeah, why not? And take her back at the same time, eh? Uh, well, I think you'll find I've probably already done that, son. Aye, well, you're welcome to it. Thanks, Jim. You are officially man and wife. All that remains is a little address. So if you'd like to sit down. One of the special joys of the ministry is to join together those who have found love in the autumn of their lives, when companionship is often most needed. Olive and Edwin will, I know, have a great deal to share in the time ahead, not least their compassion for their fellow men. Olive's years as a nurse were born of her wish to help others while Edwin was one of that rare breed during the war whose conscience prevented him from spilling the blood of his brothers. 
maligned by many at the time, Edwin was in fact following one of our Lord's most precious teachings. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. In those dark hours, he was one of the few who kept this country's spiritual conscience afloat. One of this century's unsung heroic acts. For yes, bravery in battle deserves its earthly rewards. But for people like Edwin, there are far greater treasures waiting in heaven. I'm sorry I lied to you. Why? I just couldn't handle it any other way this morning. I was going to tell you later. Aye, but instead I have to hear from Superglued, who comes round and tells everyone else at the same time. I didn't ask him to come round. Look, last night we had a major crisis. Oh, you don't expect us to believe that tripe, do you? We did. Oh, yeah, what, you needed a bit of consolation. My, my, how the violence must have played for you, eh? Here's my husband. Oh, well, that's what it comes down to, isn't it? Is he? In name. Stop playing games, Liz. Either he is or he isn't. Make up your mind or I'll make it up for you. You know, I'm not hanging around like some superannuated toy boy to be used when you feel like it. That isn't how I see you. No, well, it's not how it looks from where I'm standing. Oh, what's the point? You'll never leave him, will you? Where are you going? I'm off back to Hartlepool. There is nothing for us here. I don't want you to do this. No? All right, well, I'll give you a choice. There's a bus leaves at 5.30 this afternoon. If you don't want us to catch it, you'll be there to stop us. I have to open up this place at 5.30. Yeah, well, you'd have closed it at 11 last night, but I don't recall you being here. It's up to you, Liz. I am sick and tired of messing around. If you want us, you'll be there. <laughs> Sort of an insult. Are you sure this is the right moment, Mr. Sugden? And what qualifies you to talk about war? I'm sorry. You could have only been a kid at the time. I don't think we've been introduced. Bernard Morton, Vicar of St. Saviour's. I'm not shaking hands with a man who's just been singing the praises of a conscientious objector. Uh, I think you misunderstood me, Mr. Uh... Sugden. Ex Sergeant Sugden. All I was trying to say, Mr. Sugden, was that. Fifty years on, a certain balance needs to be redressed. There wouldn't have been any balance at all if the Germans had had their way, and you've got Nobby to thank for that. Sorry, Nobby? Mrs. Clark's first husband. Oh, Nobby. Yes, and he'd be turning in his grave if he'd heard what you've just been saying. Which regiment were you with, Mr. Sutton? The Catering Corps. So you weren't actually fighting? An army fights on its stomach, but that's got now to do with it. No, of course, we all do our bit. Wrong, yes, plenty, but not being one to spoil a special occasion, I'll hold my peace. I voice my feelings to the appropriate party. A bit of good day. Mr. Sugden, what were all that about? I'm afraid Edwin's war record didn't meet with Mr. Sugden's approval. Oh, that? Well, I don't think Percy's record always met with Nobby's approval, but he were too polite to mention it. You're not going, are you? No, uh, I'll stay. Oh, good. I'll see you later, then. Yes. You must be Mrs. Sugden. Good gracious, no. I'm Mr. Sugden's landlady, Emily Bishop. Oh, I see. Pleased to meet you. Uh, perhaps I can introduce you to some of the guests. Oh, that would be nice. May I call you Emily? Why not?
You okay? What? Yeah, I'm fine, thanks. 5.30 by my watch. Right. Well, let's do it then, shall we? Yeah, you had your tea. Do I want any? <sighs> I'm sorry if I've been a bit brisk with you lately, love. Sorry. Right. <laughs> you know, all these rows we've been having all boils down to the fact that I've been out of work. I mean, when you're worried about money all the time, things just get blown up out of all proportion. So what are you saying? Now you've got your job back, you're going to stop going on at me? What I'm saying is, now that I'm not worried about money anymore, let's stop rowing about it, eh? I know, I know I'm not entirely blameless, but... Well, let's just try and be a bit more sensitive to what the other one wants, OK? Yeah, OK. Is that a deal? Yeah. Well, I was going to have poached egg on toast for my tea, but I think I'll have a takeaway after that. Are you sure you're not hungry? Um, I might be able to force a prawn curry down my throat. Oh, you pig! <laughs> Mavis? Oh, Mavis, I thought we agreed that mutt stays out of the house. Oh, Derek, please. I've just had a very unnerving experience. Unnerving? Why? What happened? Well, I know you'll think I'm silly, but I could swear somebody's been following me. Oh, no. Who? I couldn't actually see anyone, but I could hear footsteps, and every time I turned round, they stopped. Well, there's nobody there now. Are you sure you weren't imagining oh, it? Derek, I'm serious. They got so close at one point I had to break into a trot. Well, look, you wait here. I'll go outside and check. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, if there was anyone, they're not there now. Are you sure? Positive. The street's deserted. Oh, you don't think I'm being silly, do you? No. Of course not. Oh, do you know, I, I got so scared I nearly banged on Rita's door. <laughs> well, I'd have looked very foolish if I had, wouldn't I? No need to tell her, or anyone else for that matter. It's all over now. Oh, yes. So, I'll stand at the gate and watch. You can walk Mitzi down the street and drop her off at Rita's, and then we'll both be happy. All right, Jim. Got a piece of news that might interest you. Oh, I. Yeah, got back from work. Our Collins left a note. It's gone back home. What, the Hartlepool? Aye. Oh, well. Yeah, brought a smile on my face as well, I can tell you. Is it gone for good then, or what? Well, I don't know. I hope so. Well, that is interesting news. Cheers, does he? Clears the decks for both of us now, then, eh? Mm. Are we still friends? No, it wasn't me who slammed the door on an offer of help. I'm sorry. Things have been a bit fraught lately. Anyway, at least the pressure's off now. Alf Roberts has given me my old job back. Oh, that is good news. That's really good. Oh, at least that should help to improve things between you and Tracy. Oh, I hope you're right. Well, she knows she's got to get on with you in the end, so what other cards can she play?
You pick your moments. <laughs> uh, look, listen, I've come here to apologise. At lunchtime, I realised that was pushing me luck a wee bit, you know. And what's this you're doing now? Your man's away, isn't he? I spoke to Desi and the Rovers. So, what difference does it make? Well, he was the one who was standing between us, Liz, wasn't he? Jim, we split up long before Colin came along. Our problems don't go away just because he has. Yeah, but, uh, what about last night, eh? Last night was last night. It doesn't mean we go rushing back together again. And it doesn't mean you can come round here at closing expecting to stop the night. Hey, no, come on. That's not why I'm here, love. No? I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound so hard. I'm so very confused. I don't know where we go from here. Jim, I need time, not pressure. As far as I'm concerned, we have no claim on each other apart from the boys. Let's just leave it like that, shall we? Bishop? It's only me, Mr. Sugden. Sorry if I've woken you. No, oh, I've not been asleep. I've been waiting for you to come in. <laughs> You've not been at that wedding till this time, have you? Yes, it, it went on rather longer than I expected. You have to be a bit firmer, you know. <sighs> you can't let yourself get roped into doing these things you don't want to. Oh, but I did want to. Hey? <laughs> Are you all right, Mr. Bishop? Perfectly. I've had a lovely time. Most of it was Bernard. Who? Bernard Morton, the vicar. Him that preached that sermon? Yes, he's a delightful man. Anyway, I won't keep you up. I must get off to bed myself. Good night, Mr. Sugden. Pleasant dreams. <laughs> <laughs>